many happy returns of the day, young lady. <laughs> Thank you. Andy sent me some money. Uh, yeah, he did. Send her. I'm oh. telling her. Will he be at my party this He will. Then. Yes, I should think so. And don't forget to say thank you. I won't. Right, come on, school. Do we have to go today? Yes, you do. <laughs> Kelly, Chalk didn't go on earth. Well, that's because her birthday was on a Saturday now. Come on. <laughs> hey, don't forget your card. Don't forget it now. Come on, we've got five minutes. Come on, chop, chop, chop. Bye. Bye. See you later. See ya. Oh. Yeah, I never had an uncle who gave me that sort of money on oh, my birthday. Well, she hadn't. Oh, well, he can afford it. Hardly knows her. He's still family. Still trying to get used to that and all. <laughs> right, now, is there anything else they don't like? Uh, hmm? The kids to eat. Uh, no, 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 no. What is wrong with you? <sighs> Me, yeah. Uh... <laughs> You've hardly said two words since you got up. Is it because of this party? I think I'm being a bit forward. Forward? Well, I mean, it is a family do, and I know I'm not exactly family, but... As Gelvin says... No, no, honest. Look, no. what you're doing is smashing. Look, I'm chuffed to bits that you're taking so much trouble, I really am. I never thought I'd see the day when we would have them all under this roof again, enjoying themselves. Happy now. Hey, and don't you be late. I'll have a list of jobs as long as you're on when you get back tonight. This job I'm going to do is fix that landing light. I'm telling you, it were Ivy. Yeah, so how come Don and Josie never saw her? Well, I don't know. Happen you to be psychopathetic or something? Be on the same wavelength? Oh, you don't think she would try to tell me something? Like what? Well, I don't know, do I? Vera, she's dead. I know, she's dead. But only in the body, not in the spirits. <sighs> do you think she was trying to warn me? Warn you? Well, yeah, that something's going to happen. Oh, how would she know that? Well, they see more than we do, don't they? Oh, right, right. Um, next time you see her, she might tell you. While well, you're talking to us, see if you can get a couple of winners for me next week, will you? Morning, Andre. Hi, Dad. Got the limo today, then, son, eh? Well, it would be the limo every day, mate, if I could afford it, but I can't. How's work? Oh, it's dead on, you know, as long as it lasts. Well, jump in then, I'll give you a lift. No, no, you're all right. I'm way over to the betting shop. I've got a bit of a fancy for this afternoon, so I do. Ah. So you're not blacking the place then? No, don't worry. I'll keep my head as long as I see Des Barnes. Which won't be today. What does that mean? Well, he's still in Wigan, isn't he? Right, well, don't let me stop you. Go on, get your bet on. All right. See you later. Yeah, right. See you later. Oh, Jack, oh, thank you. I'd always fancy doing that. What? Making coffee? Oh, I'm doing something with my hands. I want to go to college for it. Be my own boss. But my dad told me I'd get a proper job. He does got some sense, lad. I still dream about being my own boss, like. One day, have my own van with my name on the side. Ashley Peacock, high class butcher. Want to learn business properly. What, from Fred Elliott? Oh, yeah. He's teaching me all my nose. He doesn't pay me much, but I'm getting plenty of experience. Ashley! What the picking I come up here you for? Get on down there and start on that mince. You're working for Elliot's the butchers here. And see, don't encourage him, understand? He can get the picture, Fred. Well, where's that mate of yours? Uh, I'm expecting him in any time now, lad. If this is your idea of trying to put one over on me, I'm stretching the job out, then charging me a double, well, you can think again. I say, you can think again. We agreed on the price, and that's what we're sticking to. Not a penny more. And if you're not finished on time, I'll sue you. Hiya. Come to give us a hand, have you? Give you a hand? Sarah Louise's party. Oh, don't look so worried. I didn't think yet. <laughs> no, I just wanted a word. Oh, come on in. Uh, no, it's all right. Uh, well, it's about last night. Last night? Yeah. yeah what happened to me? I, I just wondered if uh, you'd ever had an out-of-this-world experience upstairs, you know, like... Upstairs? Well, that's where it happened to me. Mind you, I suppose it could happen anywhere. Vera, do you think you ought to be talking to me about this? What? 
Well, I mean, what you and Jack get up to has got nothing to do with me or anybody else. Ah, Jack, what's he got to do with it? Well, I assumed he was the one you had this experience with. Ah, Jack, he wasn't even here. Uh, you've lost me. I'm sorry, I thought when you said upstairs, you meant, well, you know. <laughs> Chance would be a fine thing. No, not up our stairs, up your stairs. Here? Yeah, well, that's where it happened. That's where I saw it. Uh, I have his ghost. What? Now then, Mrs. T, what can I tickle your taste buds with? Oh, so you've decided to show your face after all, have oh, you? Oh, don't start, Fred. Ashley! A thousand parts, my love. Finish serving, Mrs. Tompkins. See? Sorry, Willie. Go away, Ben Jim. Oh, don't start! Don't start! I've every piggy right to start! You come here, you and your oppo, you beg me for the job, beg me for it. And what thanks do I get? I say, what thanks do I get? You turn up and it suits you. Oh, how your horses, Frederick. Look, have you never been kept up all night with dodgy guts, eh, thinking you're dying? You're lucky I'm here at all, so you are. Aye, but well, you shouldn't be, Jim, not working in a field shop, cock. Do you know I never thought of that? No, uh, no, 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 hang on. Up here, you're not actually in contact with food. Not while you're up here. So, I take it I can start with my work, eh? So what actually gave you a bad gut, Jim? Oh, I don't know, dodgy takeaway or something. Well, at least it wasn't one of them bits of my pies. Oh, hey, oh, pies! Oh, now you're talking. Oh, what pie? I never thought of that. Pies, yes, ha-ha! <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, you're doing a grand job. Grand job. Carry on with the good work, lads. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll, 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 I'll get Ashley to brew up uh, when he's free. Ah, good. Anyway, Jim, look, lad, if you don't feel up to it. Oh, behave yourself. That's for his benefit. No, I've been trying to get hold of Liz. Her mother says she's out, you know. So? So? So somebody else is out at the same time? Give us your mobile, will you? Ah, come on, Jimmy. You know it's only for work purposes, that. Oh, fine. You'd sooner I went downstairs and used the call box outside, is that it? There you go. Thank you. Hello, Skinners? Hello? Thanks, Willie. That's all I needed to know. Right, we can't stand around here all day doing nothing. Vera, what? Yes, Vera. Why didn't you tell me what she'd seen? Thought she'd seen. What, and put the idea into your head that the place is haunted? By Ivy. Ivy's dead and buried. Oh, yeah, but it didn't stop her causing all the trouble over the will, did it? It didn't stop her nearly splitting us all. Look, Ivy's gone. End of story. Is it? Is that what you really believe? So what you're saying is that you believe in ghosts, and all? No, what I'm saying is I thought we were rid of her. That's for sure now. <laughs> Come on, Vera. It's not your fault. That was you to knock that. Donald said no. It's not that. It's the thought that I've is trapped in that house. Well, maybe if they left a couple of windows open for us. Or... What for? So she can get out. Well, it don't work like that, does it? I don't mean trapped because she can't get out. I'm about trapped because she has to stay there because her soul can't find any peace. Right, I see. Well, did you see out last time you were around? Has Josie seen that? No. Who may I have then? Happens she's gone already. You must be very proud of your Stephen. Oh, of course I am, Betty. Do you know, I just wish I could see a <clears> bit <throat> more of him, though. Yeah, but I mean, he's got his life and you've got yours. Something we've all got to come to terms with, isn't it? I mean, just be thankful that they're happy. Yeah, I suppose so. I go and might as well be in Canada for all I see of him. I know he's doing all right, and if I ever needed him, well, it would be like a shot. You're right. I mean, you have them all to yourself when you're bringing them up, don't you? So, we can't expect to hang on to them forever. 
now, better. It's a very competitive business. We need to manufacture at the lowest possible price, but as close to the point of sale as possible. So you're looking to expand your distribution network as well as your manufacturing? Yeah. There's no way our present suppliers can meet the demand we're expecting to generate. But I shouldn't be boring you with my problems. Oh, you're not. You're not, honestly. I don't think you said what field you're in. Oh, well, what ends he in? <laughs> I work more in an entrepreneurial role at the moment, you know, setting up deals, bringing interesting parties together. But that doesn't mean to say if the chance to get back into production came along, I wouldn't consider it. Yeah, any particular line? Rag trade. That's my 40. Really? Been in it all my life. We don't often see you in here these days. It's not often I do my own running about. <laughs> Maxine off. Mm, yeah, if I'd have sent her, I'd have been surprised to see her back before tea time. Oh, well, it's the same, yeah. I mean, give him an inch and I mean, she's a partner. Hey, <laughs> well, I'm really glad that somebody finds it amusing. Hey? She is driving me up the wall, the way that she keeps playing me. I'm just glad to get out there for five minutes. Maxine! Who else? It's not that. I've got enough on as is. I don't need all that. Well, if she's that bad, why'd you keep her on? Oof, I know what I'd do. It's not as easy as that, though, is it? I mean, she did me a favour by helping me out when Denise first took off. If I got rid, I'd only be doing myself a thicken. I'd only have to find someone else. They could be just as bad. Well, I mean, it can't make it any easier. The two of you living under the same room. Exactly. Mm. See you later. Bye. Hi there. A uh, couple of ham-bam cakes, please, girls. One with double mustard, one without. Oh. Hello, Sally. Hello, Bill. You only your own there? Yeah, I'm having a quiet five minutes before I go and pick the kids up. They're at a party. Huh? So are you still hard at it then? Yeah. And I can't tell you how good it feels, even though we aren't working for Fred Elliott. Well, his money's as good as anybody else's. You're right there. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think come. <sighs> oh, Bill, I didn't mean. I know you didn't. I was gonna pay you anyway. It's a little bit more off what I owe you. And I can't tell you how good I feel about that. There we go, my love. Oh, cheers. So, what, what did you get? Uh, who? Put Sarah Louise for her birthday. Oh, what did she get, Betty? She's got even more to come on Saturday as well when she has a party for her school pals. Oh, good luck to her. Mm. Queen has two birthdays. Why shouldn't your Sarah Louise? Hey, quite right, Betty. Yeah. Hey, all right. What are you doing in here? Probably be up to your armpits in fairy cakes and jellies. No, I'm not stopping. Hey, Jack. Yes, Tom, why is that pint? No, no, I don't want to drink. I want a word. About what? Your Vera. She's been out to see Josie this morning, putting wind up her. I, I, I know, but what can I do? I mean, she still swears she saw Ivy. <coughs> yep. She swears she did she what? She saw <laughs> Ivy's ghost <laughs> at the top of their land. <laughs> Look, no. if anyone wants to believe that, that's all right. But when she starts causing bother for other folk, <laughs> and it's beyond a joke, isn't oh, it? Oh, come on, Don, you're not telling me that Josie fell for it. She don't believe the place is flipping haunted. I don't believe I'm hearing this. No, well, of course you don't. But it hadn't done much for atmosphere around our house. We thought we got rid of Ivy for good. Now Vera keeps bringing it all up no, again. Don, lad, I'm, I'm sorry, but there's nothing I can do about it. You know what she's like? You're like plating folk trying to shut her up. Oh, give us a pint, right. <laughs> Why <laughs> 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 aren't you going to introduce me? Oh, why? He's not in the market for your prize sausages, your award-winning pies, and any, any of the other offal that you're peddling that shop of yours. Well, ignore that last bit. He's got contacts, hasn't he? And them contacts might have requirements. Is he, uh, is he a member of the fraternity? Oh. The, the Brotherhood, you know. Oh, your square peg thing, you square mean? Square deal. It's, look, keep your voice down. He's from Canada. You don't just find square dealers from round here, Audrey. It's international. We encircle the globe. Have you given him a sign? Well, no. I'm surprised at you, Alf. How can we afford him due respect if we don't know if he's one of us or not? Is there a problem? Yeah, no, 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 not at all. Only we've not been formally introduced. Oh, sit down, Fred. Oh, now what's he up to? Fred Elliott. Stephen Reid. <laughs> oh, come on, sit down, the pair of you. Aye, come on, Fred. Oh, Fred, sit down. It's obvious he's not. Not what? It would appear you are not uh... Disciple of the dire. He means you're not a square dealer, I take it. Shut, Shut up, Audrey. Audrey. Sorry to disappoint you, but uh, no. Uh. There, you see. All he had to do was ask. Thanks, love. But it's that lad I feel sorry for. 
No chance, does he? Not with a mother as feckless as Tricia. She cares about him. She just doesn't think that's all. Well, let's hope she's learned a lesson now. Mm, she hasn't been able to do enough for him since she came back. She's bought him practically anything he's wanted, even though she can't afford it. That's not what the lad needs, is it? No. I mean, surely he needs love and, and he needs care. And if the mother's got, well, no responsibility, he doesn't stand a chance, does he? You can give them all the love in the world. It's still no guarantee they'll turn out right. All you can do is hope they will and try not to take it too much to heart when they chuck it all back in your face again. Anyway, I'll see you, love. Yeah, bye, dear. Hi, Percy. Hello. Uh, Mrs. Grimes off here with you, then? No, she's gone to the Rovers for a lunch, Mr. Sugden. Oh, well, I'll catch her up down there. No, yeah. but uh, I said I'd have a talk to her about security, you know. I've had one or two thoughts that just might help to ease her mind, because she's a bit concerned, especially about being left on her own. She's not being left on her own. She's got me living with her. Yes, but when you go to join your husband, she won't have them, will she? You know, I thought she was being sincere till Phyllis Pierce uh, got into the act and made a joke out of it. I'm sorry, Mr. Sutton. I've got no idea what you're on about. When she proposed to me. What? <laughs> yes. Oh, I thought you were supposed to be at dawn. We're on our way now. Stephen wants to ask you something. Me? Audrey's been telling me about your uh, catering consultancy. Oh, oh shit. Yes, how you have transformed the fortunes of some of the top restaurants in the Northwest with your expert advice. Oh, there you hang on. Now, you seem to know exactly what the clients are looking for and the best way of delivering the goods, and that's just what I need. Well, I mean, I offered a few suggestions, came up with one or two sample menus. Oh, talk about modest. Honestly, now do you see why she needs me behind her? I know how heavily committed you must be, but uh, Audrey said, as a special favour. Oh, look, I'm, I'm sorry, Steve. Well, would you let him finish, please, Alman? Now, come on. It's not the law mayor's banquet we're talking about. I'm arranging a presentation for some potential suppliers around a buffet lunch next week. Now, um, Carrie's working on a guest list, so she can give you an idea of numbers. What, look, there are plenty of other catering companies. Well, right, we can't afford to take any risks. Now, it's really important we impress these people. It'll certainly be worth your while financially, and uh, you'll be doing me a personal favor. There you go. <laughs> Very much respect, I'm sure. What are you having, Martin? Oh, I'll have the same again, please, Don. Hey, on, can man. I have a bit? Uh, no, you can't. I'll do you shandy, all right? Well, I suppose it'll have to be. No, it's my present. Thank you, Brenda Dow. Great pleasure, love. Yeah, give us a hand with these. I certainly will. I can I have one? No. Hey, I don't know where your mother is. She's supposed to be here to help you. Well, you know me, ma'am. Mm. Look at oh, hey, that's just what you wanted, isn't it? There yeah. you go. Cheers. All the best. Right, yeah, cheers. Thanks. So long we've got to stop. Hey, hey, now don't you start. It's your sister's birthday. I'm not asking too much, are we? Enough lemonade in that yourself, there. Hey, cheers, Grandad. Hey, it's quite an opportunity. Hey, 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 It's my fault. I had some business to attend to. And this is for the birthday girl. Hey. You've already given us some money. Well, that's not the same as presents, is it? Well, you shouldn't have, you know. Well, what's the point of having nephews and nieces if you can't spoil them? Uh -huh. Here you go, guys. Oh, yes, right? Oh, oh, what's it like to be popular? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, how would I know? Unless <laughs> oh, uh, Stephen's got any more surprises up his sleeve, come on, let's tuck in. Josie, sure, really? I've come to town, love. Oh, I was glad you had the chance. I tell you, I never thought I'd see you this day. We'd all be round here, just one big happy family. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I, I must have left a window open or something. Come on, tuck in. Right. Oh, okay, you can have it. Come on, out with it. Hmm? I've had a face fit to turn the milk all afternoon. You've noticed? What's up with you? You were all right this morning. It was before I saw Percy Sugden. Percy Sugden? What's he done to upset you? Why didn't you say something? About what? Proposing to him. Oh, that. I didn't see much point, seeing as nothing come of it. And if something had come of it, when would you have told me? You'd have sent me a postcard, would you, from your honeymoon? Just what's got into you? <sighs> I've been treated like a rubbing rag by the pair of you. This wretch down in Lower Stuff has left me with all this worry, and now you've decided to walk out on me. No, I've not. He's refused me. And what if he hadn't? 
and you'd have wed him and gone to live with him? Well, I thought you'd want to see me settled, so you'd no longer have to worry about me. And where would that leave me? On my own, with my own miserable life? Now, you listen to me. If Percy Sugden had decided to accept my proposal, do you honestly think I'd have been out of your life before closing time? Don't talk rubbish. I know what a mess you're in. I know what you're going through. Give me credit for some of it. You've been a good daughter to me, our Maureen, and I'll not forget it. I'm not leaving you up the creek without a paddle. Not like some I could mention. So you can get that thought right out of your head. I'm sorry. Well, don't be. You've as much right to say what you think as I have. But if you think I'm going soft in my old age, you couldn't be more wrong. And if you want to spend the rest of your life dancing to the tune of that pillock that you married, then that's your business. But just you think on. I've got a life and all. Right, who's ready for the refill? I thought Thanks. you'd never ask. Oh, yeah. yeah, go on then. Hey, you've had enough, you. Yeah, but it's only Shandy. Right, Don. Yeah, next one will be for now, certain. You yeah. see what you've been missing all these years, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, let's hope it won't be so long next time. Eh? Well, it's not just up to me. Planes fly both ways, you right, know. Come on! Here comes the cake! Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Hang on. Well, I can't hear you! Can't hear what? Happy birthday, Happy birthday to you! you. Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Selu! Happy birthday to you! Why did you do that? It wasn't me, I didn't blow them out. It was Nick! No, it wasn't. Oh, what's your problem? We can always light them again. Yeah, well, who done it? Hey, you never know. It might have been a ghost in. <laughs> 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 It must be Josie. Don't you think you've caused enough trouble? Well, she's took Ivy's place, and not she? That's why she can't rest in peace. Josie took Ivy's place long before Ivy just it. And she wasn't bothered enough to do anything about it then, was she? Well, don't you worry about it when I go, cos I won't be coming back to haunt you and your fancy piece. She's welcome to you. Cos you want much cock first time round, will you? Give us a clue when you're going, will you? Cheers. All right, mate. Look, if she's as useless as you reckon, then uh, why did you take her on in the first place? Because she wasn't like this then, was she? No. No. But you weren't the boss when she came to work with you, were you, for a start? Yes, I was. Denise had done a run, I remember. But you thought she was coming back. And when she did, she made you manager, give you a bit of responsibility, which you seem to have made a fair job of. What are you getting at? Well, you and Maxine aren't, um pigging it in the same trough anymore, are you? Exactly. You've grown up, she hasn't. And I'll second that. That I should do it. Why? What's your problem? Well, the problem is that Audrey has given him entirely the wrong idea about me. I don't think I'm up to anything like this. Well, why not? You handled the other jobs okay? Yeah, well, that was different. Hey, you've changed your tune, haven't you? I mean, you were dead set against me doing anything like this before. Because I thought you were wasting your time. What? Because I wanted a career of my own. No, messing around with piddling little pub menus. This is different. You're talking about. Corporate hospitality with a company that's just beginning to get to grips with this country. Of course. I mean, if you don't think you're up to it, oh, then... Oh, no, hey, hang on. Look, you go for this. You make a success of this. And who knows what it would lead to. Morning. Good time. Oh. Wicked. I've had 20 minutes sleep. Mm. I'm supposed to be impressed by that. You're supposed to be jealous. Yeah, well, you're supposed to be at work in 10 minutes. Oh, I'm knackered. Am I supposed to be sympathetic? You're supposed to ask me where I've been. Yeah, well, I'll probably faint with excitement. Six and a half minutes to buy a paper. Oh, well, I mean, we all know time's money, don't we? Yeah, listen, I was thinking. Why don't you get your hair done? Oh, what's wrong with it? Well, nothing. I just thought all women like to get their hair done. Well, there must be something wrong with it or you wouldn't have said anything. Oh, it's just a thought, that's all. Come on, Razor, keep up! <coughs> it's like a mother duck with all the ducklings. <coughs> that's Barlow's, isn't it? Yes, Daniel. Well, watch out. It could be a cuckoo. It's not very nice. It's not nice at all. So who wants nice? 
I only had it cut ten days ago. Not at work today? Not feeling too good today. Mm. You look a bit peaky. No, I'm taking an hour or two off. You do right. Um, black coffee, please. Of course. And uh, fried egg and bacon sandwich, please. I'll be over there. Hey, Mike's parking the car, but before he comes in, be honest. What's wrong with my hair? It's beautiful. No, I said be honest. Well, if I look like you and I... What, am I, Ajo? Oh. Thank you, thank you very much, girl. Yes, all right, yes. That is honest. <laughs> Is, uh, is she not going into work today, then? Mm. Well, she's poor. So I'm making her a bacon egg sandwich. Ah. <laughs> uh, will you be uh, seeing your brother at all today? I haven't arranged to. No, it's just that Mike's on about me talking to him, catering for some do of his, but I think that's that. I mean, what do you think? Has he offered it, you? No, he just mentioned that he might need someone, you know, someone to... Set up this uh, doing's doing. Oh, well, don't ask me. Seems nice, your brother. He is nice. But I've got enough on, haven't I? I think I'll tell him no. Right. What do you think? What do you think? No, I think I should. Do you want a sausage with it? Oh, uh, have you got an appointment? No. Oh, look, I'm sorry, then I'm on my own. Okay, thanks. Maxine, yeah. pick up the phone. Pick up the phone. I'm gonna kill you. <sighs> really sorry about that. You're all right, lovely. Anyway, Fiona, we were all packed into that bulky little house. I don't know what Stephen must have thought. I expected coat. Oh, yes, yes, he always copes. Mind you, he's used to international hotels, you see. Mind you, he'd never complain. Mm. Must have the common touch, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He's not common, not for a minute. He's Canadian. Mm. Anyway, there we all were, like slaves in a gala. <laughs> Josie brings the birthday cake through and the candles go out. Well, Fiona, you should have heard it. Talk about fuss about nothing. And then Martin, he's so daft, he said, whoever blew the candles out must have been a ghost. <sighs> Tastes of what, eh? Oof. I mean, in that very house, Fiona, where... Ooh. Oh, dear. Anyway, where's Maxine? In bed, with earplugs in. Oh. Well, it's nice that you can take turns, isn't it? I mean, there's something to be said for not being busy. Hiya. Hiya. Oh, yeah, I'll do us a favour. Take these back for the kids. They didn't get here at the party and they won't be in our house. As long as you promise me. What? That I haven't cast a cloak oh, over don't. a don't. <laughs> You've heard about the haunted house, have you, Alma? What? Uh, no more visitations. <laughs> if I see it, I'll chuck some at it. What? Like a crucifix? Anything but that. <laughs> From what I've heard about Ivy, if you showed her a crucifix, she'd sooner eat it than run. <laughs> How are you getting on with Stephen? Oh, I've decided not to go for it. Oh, do me a favour. That's why you set up AB Catering, so you wouldn't be stuck in a greasy spoon all your life. I thought you thought that was all I was ever fit for. Girl, I'll ask you. Haven't always said that she's worth more than this? I remember you saying she cooked a great chip oh. and she should stick to what she's good at. Do you want me to phone Stephen? Why, what for? Set up a proper meeting so you can do what women are best at. Gentle persuasion. You know, I've told you, I've, I've decided against it. Ah, but I know you want to do it. I know that you want me to do it, but strange enough, Mike, that is not the same thing. Yeah, the week you. Well, what about it? Take him there, let him see what sort of operation you can organise. I'll drive you there, then leave you alone at a quiet little table for two. Oh, I am so slow. What do you mean? Well, that's why you wanted me to get my hair done, so I'd look good for Stephen across a candlelit table. So what's wrong with that? Uh, hey, Gail, Gail, what do you think of this? I mean, he's not my husband. I mean, he's certainly not my business manager. He's my pimp. Well, I'm drained, absolutely drained. How have you been? Did you know that traffic was murder? I've been driving for five hours and shattered. Well, now you know how I feel. What? I've had three hours sat here, dull as ditch water. I know, I shouldn't have left you on your own. Well, at least we haven't been burgled this weekend. Thank God. No thanks to you. I know, I'm a terrible person, but I do happen to have a husband, Mother, and I can't pretend I haven't even for you. 
I wouldn't expect you to. Thank you. I mean, what am I? An old bag in a wheelchair. That's all I am. You're not being fair. You know you're not. You are important to me. But I just can't be in two places at once. And we all know which place is most important. Oh, hello, Maureen. You're back. What are you doing here? Well, just helping Maud out for a couple of hours. We've had a laugh or two, haven't we, Maud? So you haven't been on your own? Well, I haven't been on my own, no. Oh. But no thanks to you. Here. What's that? Kippers. Oak smoked, fresh from Lowestoft. A man they don't get stuck in your throat. Oak smoked my foot. I guess it's a smouldering car tyre. You. What's wrong? What the hell do you think is wrong? I've been stuck here on my own all morning. You know I've had no sleep. Yeah, and whose fault's that? Oh, give me a break. Maxine! Look, OK, I'm sorry, but it's not the end of the world, is it? What have you come here for? To work? What do you think? I'm a smell your breath. What? I'm not having you breathing alcohol all over the customers. That's disgusting. You've been drinking all night. I have not. Anyway, I've had my breakfast. Have you cleaned your teeth? Of course I've cleaned my teeth. You let me down one more time and that is it. You are out, OK? Yeah, then you'll have to manage on your own the whole time, won't you? Yeah, well, I'll easily find somebody else. <laughs> Why don't you, then? What did you just say? Nothing. Oh, uh, you can't fit me in for an appointment this afternoon, could you? Oh, no, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, of course we could, yeah. Well, you could. All oh, right. Hi. I had a feeling you were just going to come through the door. How are you, Jim? I'm good. How's your mother? Well, she'll think twice about moving again. Uh, I'll put the kettle on. What about you, Jim? Nice to see you. Of course it is. Fine. What? Oh, nothing at all. Don't worry your head. No, I've just got the message, that's all. Jim, don't. I've just this minute walked through the door. Don't start again. Yeah, you've been away for a week and you come back and you're just like a cold shower. I'm tired, that's all. Well, you don't have to put the kettle on. At least we'll go for a drink or something. OK. Yeah, well, don't put yourself out now. I said OK. Yes. Yes, you did. I'm sorry. I apologise. Right. Let's go for that drink. Yeah, good. You never know your luck. Des Barnes might be there. Vera, you haven't met, have you? This is my very successful son, Stephen. Vera. Oh, oh pleased to meet you, love. I like your pub. Oh, so what are pubs like in Canada, then? Well, they're not exactly pubs. No, they're more them mounty bars, aren't they? They say the paradise. So how long are you here for? Uh, not long enough. Oh, so we'll be seeing more of you, then? Possibly. They say you're on business. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Not just to see your mother. Oh, well... Yeah, well, both, of course. No, uh, sure, happy coincidence. <laughs> uh, but you've never been round here before. And not exactly to this neck of the woods, no. No, but you have been to England. Well, it seems a while since we've seen your Terry Vera. You see, um, at liberty these days. Right, what can I get you? Old bits of things. So what you stood there for then, eh? Folk want to get to this bar. This place is a madhouse. There's no one here. Yes. Can't sack someone that you share a bedroom with. Well, you don't want to sack her, do you? I told her to come straight in. She just ignored me. I mean, I'm supposed to be the boss, I'm supposed to be the manager, and I just can't... What's the word? Controller? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose it is. How do you control someone that you share a bedroom with? Uh, look, Liz, uh, I don't want to, uh, like, stir in and up, you know what I mean? But, uh, well, you know, you'd been away and, uh, and you, you came in and, uh, 
Go on. Well, no, no, I mean, like I say, look, I don't, I don't want to start anything up, you know? Talk to me. Tell me. I don't know how to say it, all right? Well, try. All right. You'd been away, you came back, you came in, and... And I gave you a peck on the cheek. Yeah, OK, yeah. But you wanted more than that. Oh, I don't know what I wanted. Look, all I'm saying is this, this business with theirs, all right? I mean, that's the very least of what I could have expected. I mean, that's, that there's what I'm saying, eh? So, you wanted more than a peck on the cheek. Go on. I dare you. Say it. You wanted me to put my arms round you and kiss you. Yeah, all right, maybe. Sometimes I'm not in the mood, Jim. Simple as that. And that's true of everybody. But if that's what you wanted, why didn't you put your arms round me and kiss me? This is a stupid conversation. Oh, no, it's not, actually. Because it's always got to be me, hasn't it? We've been married long enough. I wouldn't have screamed and run. <laughs> oh, no, I'll your horses now. No, 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 I'm not in the mood. You know what I mean? Phyllis? Hello, love. Have I got the wrong day? What's the matter? Well, the door's shut, and I'm sure I made an appointment. Shut? Yeah, I keep trying to open it. I'm gonna kill her. You got your keys? No, I've left them inside. I mean, I'm going to kill her. Oh, does that make me locked out? Look, I'm really sorry about this, Phyllis. I shan't be long. Your place of mine. Keys! Where are they? Oh. Come on, salon keys. I've had it with you, Maxine. Well, there was no one but Tina. There I was think. a customer banging on the door. Oh. What time is it? It's nearly two. Oh, it's only had half an hour. <sighs> Come on, let's just get to work now. Oh, just give me time to wake up. My time <gasps> work now, or you're sacked. Oh, then I'm sacked. Okay, you're sacked. So, was the pub busy? Oh, your old mate and his wife, plus the usual deadheads. The owner? Yep. Her and Maxine have been scrapping, so I've had earache all dinner. And I'll get earache all night. What about you? Now we're home. Sally want him. Got the kids out, I suppose. Saved you getting here, eh? Hey, me and Sally are not like that. <laughs> You're lucky. Hi, everyone. Is your daddy? Where? Oh, yeah. Where have you been? I've been on the red wreck. Yeah, Ooh. Daniel's been whinging again. Poor kid. I've been trying to amuse him. Oh, so you've been hanging about, do you think? Cos he's been kicking up a fuss. We've got him again this evening as well. Oh, you're joking. Ken, Ken's got a parents' evening. It's not a problem, Ken. Well, yeah, it is a problem, Sam. Well, yes, it is, but what the heck? We're helping Ken out. Sam, aren't we? I don't want to spend the whole evening looking after somebody else's kid. We're going to have to, aren't you, Kevin? So does that mean I can't have a flaming pint? Yeah, you can have a flaming pint when I've finished at the shop, like always. I'm not going to stay on you. What do you mean? Well, you're shattered. I bet you're in bed for half past nine again. Yeah, probably. Right, we're going to go home and cook you a tea. Oh, we know to live, don't we, Rosie? No way right for you, then, is the mate? <laughs> oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That was Stephen. <laughs> Can I get you something? Well, I really feel I should apologise to you. I've been here a while now, but um, there's been so much going on in my life. I haven't really made time to get to know you. That is for us to get to know each other, I know. Well, let's do something about it. How are you fixed tonight? Sounds great. OK. Um... Hello. Oh, hi, Stephen. Hi, Alma. You look nice. No, I don't. Uh, look, this is, uh, this is uh, completely Mike's idea, but... Um, so don't blame me. But uh, what are you doing tonight? Oh, uh, tonight is a... It's OK. No, well, only might suggested uh, that um, I took you out to dinner. Well, I'm in business. I mean, I mean, totally business. Only the uh, the wheat sheaf, which is my uh, catering business. Well, I, I run it. Mm -hmm. well, I, no, well, I I set it up. Well, well, we thought. Well, no, he thought that it might be a good idea if I took you there to see uh, the sort of thing I do with a with a view to um... my presentation next week. Uh, exactly. Mm. Kevin, this is a surprise. Can I come in? Is Daniel all right? 
Yeah, he's fine. He's oh, fine. Ooh, he's not got me worried there. Well, there's nothing like that, Ken. Thank God. Uh, come through. Actually, uh, I'm just about to go out, but uh, take a seat. Can I get you something? Uh, no, thanks. Look, it's Sally, Ken. Oh, yeah? I've told you, she's just being pulled out. Yeah. She's got two kids of her own to look after. The hours she puts in the shop, she's got a home to run. She's knackered, Ken. She's got to bed at half past nine every night. She's just no life. Yeah, I know. She's ratty and irritable and... Well, he's Daniel. He cries, doesn't he? Does he? <laughs> yeah, he does. Well, I suppose he's a bit unsettled. Look, are you saying you want me to come for him now? <sighs> no, no, not now. He's asleep. But it's going on too long, Ken. You're taking advantage of her. And Sally won't tell you herself. She's too soft for her own good. So I'm telling you, Sally can't take any more. Right. Look, I'm sorry, Ken, but Sally comes first. No, of course, I'd feel exactly the same. And don't worry, I'll sort something out. Thanks, Kevin. Right, then, I'll leave you to it. Thanks, Mike. Are you sure you won't join us? No, no, this is our side of things. She did all this, you know. Set the whole lot up. She's a very clever woman. So don't you be fooled. I'm sure. Right, it's uh, quarter to eight. Pick up half ten, OK? Have a good time. I'm sure we will. <laughs> Here. A bottle of your best champagne over there. It goes on my bill, OK? OK. I'm a bit embarrassed, really. <laughs> Why? Well, I think uh, Mike's sort of overselling me a bit. I mean, I was their catering uh, consultant, uh, but uh, I don't really have anything to do with him now. But it's a big thing to set this kind of place up. Oh, well. <laughs> but I can understand your embarrassment. My mother's been overselling me ever since I arrived at Weatherfield. Oh, but you deserve it. I mean, you are in. Incredibly successful. <laughs> no, Alma, really. Oh, Stephen, you are. I mean, representing your company on the other side of the world. I mean, that's incredible. Cog in a wheel. Wow. Pretty big wheel. I'm no Donald Trump, whatever my mother says. Well, I'm no Delia Smith. <laughs> oh, do you know, Mike would kill me if you could hear me. I'm supposed to be giving you the hard sell. No, what I mean, Stephen, is I am up to this job. Uh, but I'm no tycoon, not by any stretch of the imagination. Well, we're both in the same situation. It's my mother's pride that makes her talk about me the way she does, and it's Mike's pride that makes him oversell you. Not that I'm sure he does. It's my guess that you're just as good as he says you are. Thanks. You're back at work, then? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vera asked me in. That's good to see you. I didn't expect roses. Do you have problems at dinner time? A bit, yeah. Thought so. Because of me. You told him about me, didn't you? Yeah. Des, do me a favour. What, drink in the corner? Drink somewhere else, just for tonight, please. This is my local, Liz. Please, Des. It won't solve your problem. No, no. But at least it won't make it any worse. Please, before he comes in. Des. Thanks. Some would say you owe me. What are you doing here? Two minutes? Yeah, well, I wish you wouldn't. Anything can happen in two minutes. Such as? Well, Rosie could fall down the stairs, anything. Well, my dad's not going to let that happen, is he? Bill's there? Yes. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Hey, and I've got some good news as well. What? Ken don't need you anymore. Well, when did he say that? Well, I bumped into him earlier on. Really? Yeah, so? You'll get your life back. Hey, it's not just Daniel. I'll still have my hands full. Yeah, but at least you won't have one what's whinging all the time, will you? Well, what's going to happen to him then? I don't know. Didn't say. Well, is Glennis Phelps going to be childminding him? Well, what did Ken say? I don't know. He just said he's, uh, he's made arrangements or he'll make arrangements. He'll make arrangements? Yeah. Well, as from when? I don't know. Now, I suppose. But he hasn't already? No. So why doesn't he want me, then? Oh, huh? I not say. This is you, this, isn't it? What is? You've told him not to bring him, haven't you? Well, look at yourself. You're getting shredded. 
I mean, you're knackered. It's just work from the minute you get up to the minute you drop. That is despicable, Kevin. Ken's absolutely stuck. Yeah, well, that's not our fault, is it? You can't solve these problems for him. Let him sort his own life out. Well, you're going to go and have to tell him you've changed your mind. Because it's going to be very embarrassing when I tell him I've changed it for you. Thanks. No, it's very hard to judge. There's a deal of interest. A lot of smiles, a lot of handshakes, but nothing on paper. This uh, presentation is very important, Alma. Right. Which is when and if we do the deals. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great meal. So, shall I put you something down on paper? Would you? Sure. Mm. I really like that uh, starter we had with the king prawns. I mean, I liked it all, but uh, for the presentation. Oh I... no, no, no! I think I think I know what you need. So, shall I um, set you out a proposal? Great, thanks. Yeah, great. I'm sorry. I mean, fine. So you see, I'm just a glorified salesman. Oh, I can tell you more than that. No. Well, I'm just a cook then. Well, judging from tonight, you're a culinary witch. Wow, well, what do I say to that? It's been very nice. Yeah. It's been great. Yes, it's been great, I guess. Uh, no, I mean, I know. Definitely great. Oh, hello, Mike. So then, have we got a deal? Oh, Mike, please. That's me, you see, Steve. The vulgar commercial instinct. Straight to the bone. <laughs> but tell me the truth. Has my wife got you where she wants you, eh? <laughs> it's about to be shipped to the former Soviet Union. Maybe this is a way of to, to wean the Russians uh, away from their vodka and uh, onto um, more acceptable alcohol levels, but uh, certainly I think most of us would struggle to drink a 10%, really can't nine, concentrate nine, 10 with that beer. One. Behind me, a packed warehouse with goods ready to be exported to places like France. Is that better? Yeah. Yeah, thanks. You do realise it makes it impossible for us to live together. Now you've sacked me. Yeah, yeah, I do. So? So? Ah, this is the life. Yeah, no, for you. Running a bit late, aren't we? Took a booking for this morning. 8.30, you seem to remember. At least I think that was the last thing I did before I was sacked. What shall I do today? Oh, I might go downstairs and have a leisurely breakfast. Though I'll have to start watching my pennies now I've been sacked. Thought I should get some sort of payout, some redundancy. Something for unfair dismissal, at least. Oh, I don't know. See, I think that only applies to staff after a full year of employment. Which isn't you. I'll check into it for you. Well, I should have some holiday, Owen. So I'll check when I've got time. Have a nice day. It's not that Kevin doesn't understand, Ken. It's just that, well, it's not the most straightforward of situations and he's a bit worried about us. Cos if I have got Daniel and Denise does turn up... All hell could break loose, I know. So... Look, you can't take him today. Yes, of oh. course I can. I said I would. Till the end of the week and then after that... I'll sort something out. You've been great, Sally, you really have. I don't know what I would have done. Oh. Hey, there's loads of agencies you could try. In fact, I did do you a list. Uh, they cost a little bit more than going private, but then their people do have to come recommended. And they screen everybody before taking them on. So I'm sure you'll find somebody that you and Daniel both like. Well, if I'd been thinking clearly, I would have thought to open the telephone book myself, wouldn't I? Well, it doesn't hurt me to do some other thinking for you. Kevin can't get cross about that, can he? Uh, I wonder what it's like having someone there to rely on. He quit cynically. Well, in a few years' time, Daniel will be able to tell you. Little madam, not pulling her weight. Piona had to sack her at the worst possible time. Hey, that Denise has up and gone. So has that Flossie now. Is she still seeing your Desmond? No, he came to his senses on that one. Rumour has it she's sniffing round that Andy MacDonald. 
I don't know if anything will come of that or not. There oh, she is. I've got it. Right, all clean and washed. Tell me my future. What's wrong? Now, I see a dark man. Hmm, dark. Or it could be a blonde, I'm not sure. It could be both. Bit of a revolving door, as far as men are concerned, this Anne. Yeah, well, I'm young, aren't I? I'm playing the field a bit. What about my career? Mm. Very murky. Seems you could be a success, but... But what? But you're your own worst enemy. Make enemies of those who try to help you. Seems you don't know when you're well off. Forget your friends. Yeah, only when they sack me for no good reason. There's always a good reason for being sacked. You want to tread more carefully. You want to consider your attitudes more carefully. Mm -hmm. Do you know, I don't know if I should resent you seeing more of my brother than me or not. <laughs> hey, she always looks the part, doesn't she? <laughs> and where are you off to? Oh, a uh, business meeting. <laughs> Give me your hand. There's no room for jiggery poker in business, Maud. You ask my husband. Business meeting, you say? Mm -hmm. Assignation. <laughs> oh, hi. Oh, hi. Are we ready? Oh. Ready for what? A day out. Do Tour around the town hall and then lunch at that lovely hotel where our Stephen's operating out of. Town hall? Yeah. yeah, that's where the do is. We thought we'd take you with us, introduce you to a few people, you know, make things easy, open a few doors for you. I, I, I can't swan around with my entourage in tow all day. I mean, this, this is business. I've got a contract to go after. I mean, it's going to take me the whole day. Well, oh. oh. you can tell who she's married to. <laughs> uh. No, I saw her as clear as I'm seeing me and you standing here now. Did she say anything? She just smiled. Oh. It was a lovely smile, but she looked troubled. Oh, I can't explain it. Perhaps she's not at rest. You know, trying to make contact. So you believe me? So I certainly believe in the afterlife. Yeah, well, I know Ivy did. I mean, I know she was a Catholic, but she went to see a spiritualist one time. That's it, then. She's shown herself to you, Vera. She's chosen you. Maybe she'd have a word with my mother. Why? Cos she... She tells fortunes, doesn't she? Yes, she does. Right, well, I'll have a word with her. Cos half of them round here, you know, they think I'm off my head. Well, I'll have a word with you if you like. Will you? Yeah. Oh, I'd really appreciate that. I would. Hi, Vera. Hi, All right. Hello. Right, you picked out what you want. Oh, Sarah, I said fruit. I have an apple and an apple. An apple and an apple. And you want a banana. <laughs> right, there you go, pal. There you go. Thanks for keeping an eye on her. Thank That's you. all right. Listen, what? I'll have those, you have that. Right, OK. <laughs> right, well, come on. All right. School. Have a go good on. day at school. Chop, chop. Bye. Bye. See ya. Bye. See ya. So you're all right, lovey. You're managing. Oh, sure. Bound to get any job I like now I've got a prison record. Well, I'd like to help you out. It's just uh, that... It's just having a son as a jailbird's fine. For a member of staff, no way. Look, it's not that. Me and our Jack's been skint all his lives. It's just that... Well, we don't think we can afford to take anybody on just now. Hey, I tell you what. I think I know where somebody might have a job going. Oh, yeah? Who? If I have to spend another night in on my own, I'll go crazy. So how about it? Yeah, great. Hey, I've got just the place. How about the hourglass on Albert Road? Oh, I don't know it. No, you won't. It's new. I've applied for a job there, so we could go check it out. Oh, yeah, incognito. <laughs> oh, shh, or else yeah, she'll come want to on. have a Hiya. Hi, Hi, <laughs> hey, see, you're smiling. Oh, just the man I was after. Oh, see oh, ya. Oh, hi, oh, Trisha. Um, I've been meaning to come and see you, but I've had so much going on myself. So I've been hearing, yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to say how sorry I was, you know. It must have seemed as if I was the one who dropped you in it. Oh, no, don't worry. They'd have got me anyway. Anyway, it wasn't life for it. No, but, I mean, a week in jail all over a television licence, it can't have been a very pleasant experience. Well, I've had better. Hey, and thanks for keeping an eye out for Jamie. Anyway, enough of my problems. Now, I hear you've got a son and nobody to look after him all day while you're at work. Well, don't worry, all your problems are over. Cos I'm available and I can start today. Um, well, I've got him sorted today. Oh, shall we save from tomorrow then? Yeah, well, I, I do appreciate your offer, but uh, it'd be a full-time job. Yeah, yeah, I'm on for that. And uh, officially, I'd need someone to look after Daniel who's, uh, well, a registered childminder. Well, I'm a mother. I mean, you don't get much more official than that, do you? 
No, 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 I, I don't suppose you do. But legally, these days, I mean, if anything were to happen... Legally? Oh, yeah, that'd be right, wouldn't it? You couldn't just turn a blind eye, could you? Not for the sake of your son, not for me. I've just spent a week in the nick thanks to you pointing your moral finger. I've had my son taken into care. Have you any idea how that feels? Have you? Well, you will. Because the father never gets custody in the end. Never. I'm uh, looking for Stephen Reed. Is this the right room? Yes, it is. Come in, Mrs. Baldwin. Thanks. Oh, Alma. <laughs> Kerry Meyer. How do you do? Oh, Audrey said he wasn't on his own. Uh, Audrey, that's Stephen's mother. She's uh, she's my friend. Uh, and she's very curious about you. <laughs> so I believe. <laughs> oh, please take a seat if you can find somewhere. I'll get you a cup of coffee. Thank you. So, um... Is Stephen delayed then? Uh, no, he's not joining us. Oh. Well, I mean, you're seeing me, if that's okay. Oh, yes, right. Yeah. We're sharing the load. We've got so many people to see. Yeah, I'm sure he must have. <sighs> Stephen's out at some golf club or other. Uh, he doesn't normally delegate according to gender, but when it came to the catering, he thought we girls might like to handle it between <gasps> us. <laughs> he says he'll be around for any more sampling to be done. Oh, right. Thing is, I wouldn't have a clue. So, you tell me, I'll tell him, and we'll all be happy. Oh, you mean I'm definitely doing it? Oh, we hope so. Stephen told me you were the one he wanted. Oh, good, good. Well, I've, um, I've got a couple of ideas for menus, and... Oh, I thought it might be a good idea if the serving staff dressed in uh, the gear that you're promoting. Brilliant, fantastic thoughts. <sighs> Thanks a lot, Mrs. Carey. Uh, sorry you had to wait. Okay. Uh, oh, hi. It's you. I thought you were my next client. If she doesn't come soon, she's going to put me behind all day. Oh, what? No, Maxine? I sacked her, remember? Oh, but you didn't mean to, yes, though. Yes, I did. Well, I didn't, I didn't. If she'd apologised, everything would have been all right, but, well, she didn't, so it's not. Atmosphere around at the flat must be summer. Yeah, well, I took her out of there and all, if I could. Oh, you um, could move in with me. What, you and your parents? Yeah, no. very cosy. We could get a place together. <sighs> what would that solve, eh? Your problems with Maxine, the ones at home, anyway. Yeah, and create a whole lot more in my experience. I can't make a move without being compared to him, can I? Always checking if I've got enough money when we go out. Yeah, always quizzing me about my ex-girlfriends. Tony! If you think that living with me would be anything like living with Steve McDonald, well, we might as well call it quits right now. I'm not like him. I'm nothing like him. I know you're not! I don't think you do! Doing? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you, Mrs. Clark. It's just, um, well, the postman put this letter for Don through Desi's door and I was just bringing it over. Oh, thanks, th thank you. Uh, uh, Andy, you, you didn't see anybody at my window when you when you were coming across. You didn't see anybody upstairs, uh, did you? No. Why? Hey, you don't think you've got an intruder, do you? No, no. Uh, no, um, oh, I've just been spending too much time on my own. I'm, I'm imagining things. <laughs> well, I could take a look if you like. No, I'm just being stupid. I, I think I'll just take myself out for a bit, though. Uh, uh, thanks, thanks. Thanks for the letter. OK. I'll hang on to those numbers you gave me, but I haven't called any yet. I had another thought today. Weatherfield College. They do a course <laughs> in childcare. Oh, are you thinking of enrolling? 
<laughs> no, 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 not me, but I advise some of my students to do so in the past. Girls would be qualified by now, so uh, I'm in the college instead. Ah, and you've got someone. Well, yeah, there's one I uh, remember from a couple of years back, Kelly Thompson. Hey, and you like her? Well, she's a sensible girl, took my advice after all. So I'm interviewing her on Friday. Well, it's much better if you can get somebody you already know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trisha Armstrong volunteered her services today. <laughs> How did you get out of that one? Very badly. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what does Deirdre get up to at these here dudes? What do you mean, what does she get up to? Well, I mean, does she, uh, well, does she chat the man up or, like, does the man chat her up or what goes on, you know? Well, it's a long time since we've been out, but I don't think she's going to be ready for anything like that again yet. Look... We're just gonna have a meal and a few drinks. God knows she deserves it. So this here is purely for her benefit then, eh? Mainly, yeah. Mm. Only, I mean, I could ask Willie along, you know what I mean? Make up a foursome. Nice idea, but not this time, if you don't mind. Yes, well, I wasn't like a pairing them up, you know. Yeah, well, if she is ready to meet somebody, we might cramp her style, might we? That'll be her. Hi, Deirdre. Uh, you go on in and say hello to Jim. I'll just get me coat. Oh. Hello, Jim. Hello, Deirdre. I'll tell you what, you're looking dead nice, so you are. Oh, thank you. Girls' night only tonight, I believe, I. Well, yeah, but, I, I mean, you're welcome to oh, join us. no, not at all. I wouldn't even think about it. Hi, it's good night on the telly tonight. Ah, <laughs> don't tell me. For the first time in months, I haven't even given it a glance. Right, I'm ready. Great. See you later, Jim. All right, cheerio. See you. See you. People at the town hall seemed happy enough. It's a great venue for us. Well, at least it seems feasible on paper. Is there anything we haven't considered? Your fee! <laughs> oh, you should have said. Oh, um, let's see, Stephen's written something down here, but I'm not sure. Oh, no, that's to get receipts. Okay. Hi. How'd you get along without me? Are my ears burning for a reason? <laughs> Did I mention how arrogant he can be? <laughs> <laughs> Alma's run rings around them at the town hall. We haven't got a thing to worry about. What'd I tell you? Well, look, if that's all, I'll, um, I'll leave you to it. Oh, don't go on my account. I'm taking the rest of the night off. Well, what am I going to do alone in a big city? I don't know. Buy this lady a well-earned drink. Oh. <laughs> nice to meet you, Alma. And you, Carrie. <laughs> and make them doubles. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, I followed this guy around a golf course for miles today, and in the end, he wasn't the least bit interested in our gear. Oh, well, you can't win them all. <sighs> she certainly enjoys working with you, doesn't she, Carrie? She's just saying that. No, 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 I can tell. <laughs> Ooh, I'm going to get the third degree from Audrey tomorrow. She's certainly very intrigued with her. You tell me. So did you uh, use the Robert's name in the town hall? Oh, well, no, I... Um, Tried to avoid it? No, it wasn't necessary. They were, they were very nice. Audrey wanted to come with me. <laughs> I thought I was seeing you, and she thought that... She was going to chaperone. <laughs> no, well, she thought she thought she was going to get a posh meal out of it. <laughs> yeah, and get a better look at what I'm doing. <laughs> nice uh, lady, your friend, but... But, well, she does like to be in on things. Precisely. OK, we're going to have that drink? Oh, no, look, don't worry, not if you're tired. Well, come on, if people are talking about us, let's do it justice. Was tasty. Seems like a good atmosphere. Yeah, I can see you working here. Managing it, Deirdre, managing it. What have we got here? Um, this is Deirdre, this is Liz, and this is... Um... Um, how? Right, he's on a stag night with his friends. Oh. So who's the lucky fella, then? Ah, uh, not 
me, that's for sure. Come and join us. You should see his friends. I mean, some of them gorgeous, and I mean gorgeous. Oh, thanks. We might in a minute. Yeah, well, Don't leave it too long. These blogs are going fast. <laughs> Did he say his name? Mal. Taking their time. I mean, she went off early enough this morning. No, I'd be more worried if she came back after five minutes. No, she's cracked it. Take it from me. Oh, well, down to him, of course. Oh, of course. Look, I want to get off. Off it. You've got a new pint in front of yeah. you there. Now stop complaining. Right, I've got another one. No, I'm way on, see you. Right then. What about down here? How are we doing? Oh, I ought to get home, really. He's done working late. He's got a fair to Gatwick, but he should be back soon. Well, he'll find you in here, won't he? Give me that, let me fill it up. Oh, thanks. I'd have to get into the house and see what I could feel, if I could sense a presence. Mm. Well, she'd never agree. Mind you, it's not her house. Well, I could call on them casual-like. Oh, you don't even know them. I'm an old woman. We get lost on a regular basis. We rely on kindly folk to invite us in for a warming cuppa. Well, her name's Anne. We met at Curly and Raquel's and I was set up. Yeah, but it worked. Well, I think so, yeah. Just not really sure about my next move now. Don't ask me, mate. I wouldn't know. Well, you're doing all right, aren't you? <sighs> hey? I mean, between you and me, pal, Fiona's onto a much better thing with you than she ever was with our kid. Yeah. Tell her that. Oh, oh, the high flyers return. What you gonna have? <laughs> Scott sounds great, thanks. That's my boy. How'd it go then? Uh, just later. Yeah, but are we in or out? We're in. Just oh, go to the bar. Good girl, good girl. Vera? Sorry, Captain. We got carried away, didn't we, Alma? Yes, well, we had uh, we had a lot to get through. Did you mention our name? Oh, yes, it, it made all the difference. Ah, told you it would. Anyway, we'll just have this and then we'll make a move. Huh? Actually, Audrey, all this coming and going's really uh, worn me out. I think I might just uh, check into the hotel. Oh. You know, that way after uh, being with a client all day, I can just fall into bed. Not with a client, I hope. <laughs> Everybody needs their privacy. You won't be offended, will you? Yeah. No, I understand. I mean, whatever suits you best. Still awake. Clubs are quiet tonight. You haven't missed out. What have you been doing? Nothing. I'm crying. No. I've been watching a sad film, all right? Tony been over? No, he hasn't. You've been crying over me? You? V. What's wrong? Nothing! Me and Tony have broken up. What? Why? We had this fight. What about? Well, it doesn't matter. God, that's all we need. Well, you can say that again. I've been a bit of a pain lately. Not much of a friend. Would it help if I said I'm sorry? If you meant it. Yeah, I do. I'm sorry too, then. What, sorry about sacking me? Yeah, I guess so. So, we'll call the last three days sick leave. Sick in Ed. <laughs> That's better. Come on, let's give Tony a right slagging. I think I need to have a good cry first. Come here. Better find off. I'll drop you off at your hotel. See if that's where you want to go. Mars, fine. Hi, Lou. Hi, Lou. See you tomorrow. Yeah, bye. see you. Bye. <laughs> Felt that put me man's nose out of joint. Hey, you must be joking. All right, then. Okay, let's say I go away somewhere and the kids are away somewhere. And then you decide you're going to stay at Alpha and Audrey. How many nights are you going to stay there? Eh? Night. Mm. Whole night. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Sarah! 
What are you doing out here? Where's Nicky? In bed. Yes, but she's where you should be. I'm waiting for Grandma Ivy. <sighs> Grandma Ivy died, sweetheart. I know, but I saw her up there in the bedroom window. No, that would have been Josie. No, it wasn't. She was downstairs. Grandma Ivy was upstairs. She waved to me. <sighs> come on. All right, come on, let's get inside. <laughs> Me. She lost her husband a bit back, and uh, the other one's married. What about you? Me? Married? Oh, no, you must be joking. No, I've got a young son, though. Oh, a little angel he is. No, but apart from that, I'm single, free and easy. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Thanks, guys. I think we'll sit this one out. Drink. <laughs> hey, who said it was hard to get fellas at our age? Oh, uh, sorry, did you want to carry on? How do you... Well, you know, if you're up for it. Oh, with Melody's maids, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> She was. Hey, she couldn't have been Sarah, and you know it. So come on, <laughs> come get on. in his car and let's get going. We're going to be late. OK. Stephen, I don't want you feeling you have to employ Alma just because she's a friend of mine. Uh, well, I don't. She seems a very capable lady. Oh, she is. But, I mean, she is self-taught, you know. Well, most of the successful people I know fall into that category. Mm. Now, listen, uh, you want me back for, what, 6 o'clock? Oh, yes, the photograph. You two and all have it. Six o'clock in your best suit with your medal on. I know. Oh, See you then. Yeah. Bye, Al. Have a good day. Do you know, I had best ring Gail and remind her. Oh, hey, hey. How much is this photographer going to cost? Oh, Al. Well, that's impossible to say. I mean, it depends how many copies we want. Well, I just hope that Stephen has a big success with his business and makes a fortune, because I'll tell you something for nothing. Him stopping with us has cost us one. Oh, shh. Now stop it. He'll hear it. Right, I'm way on. Oh, well, well. What have we here, eh? I've got an interview, I told you. What interview's that, then? To manage that wine bar down Albert Road. Jim, I told you. Ah, oh, the one you went to last night? Yeah. Oh, well, rather you than me. I'm surprised you know it. Well, I mean, I don't know it. I know of it. You know, these places have reputation, so that I... What time's your interview? We have to be there for 11. Well, you'll be there in plenty of time, then. Is that something else I've done wrong? No, not at all. I'm just commenting. Yeah, well, instead of just commenting, do you think you might say good luck? Or I hope you get the job? Oh, well, good luck. I hope you get the job. Mind you, dressed like that, you'll probably get anything you want. She's got it into her head that she saw Ivy at your upstairs window. Now, we've told her that she can't have done, but, uh... Well, I can't help thinking that she's heard someone talking. Yeah, really, you mean? Yeah. I shall have to have a word with that lady. Mm. And we'll try and talk some sense into Sarah Lou. Don't know who's got the most difficult job. Mm. <laughs> Keep putting in a word for you. <laughs> I said to him this morning, I said, Alma is a wonderful caterer. You won't find better. Oh, thank you, Audrey. <laughs> right, I'd better be going. Now, you won't forget tonight. Six o'clock. Yes, and it is supposed to be a formal portrait, Gail. Please don't worry, ma'am. We'll wash our hands and faces. Oh, <laughs> I know. It's just that when I want to give Stephen a nice memento to take back with him. See you later. Bye, Alma. Bye. See you, ma'am. Uh, what sort of nice memento? Oh, family portrait. She's got a photographer coming round. Oh. Listen, uh, you're not planning to do on special lunch time, are you, Willie? No. Good. I've got my sandwiches here. Well, I wouldn't mind taking a van for ten minutes in a town, you know? Yeah. Yeah, why not, Sarah? You notice, sir, uh, I've not asked you what for. 
Yeah, because you know damn well why what for, don't you, eh? Because I want to keep an eye on my wife, don't I? You're torturing yourself, Jim, you know that, don't you? Yeah, well, I dare say I am. Except I do know how to stop, all right? Are you ready for this or what? I am, yeah. I'm not used to you. I can, uh, can I have a word with your missus. You don't like anything, anything you like from my missus, and you'll find me a very understander fellow. Well, that, that's. Don't want to like a word with you, Vera. Yeah. Mark, will you please stop spreading these daft tales about Ivy's ghost? Daft tales? Is that all it is, is it? Don't start, Vera. It's him that started. Look, Sarah Louise says now that she, she saw Ivy standing at the bedroom window. Give. She has. Stop. Of course she hasn't. No, that's what she's saying. She's a kid, Vera. She'll say anything she thinks people want her to say. Which is why I'm asking you, can we have an end to it? Yeah, well, that's assuming they're not true. Mm, it's definitely assuming none of it's true. Well, that's where we disagree, isn't it? Hey, excuse me, Fiona hasn't been in, has she? No, that, not that I've noticed. Mind you, don't take my word for it. I see things and I'm not supposed to say out. Bye. We're not right busy, are we? That's because I didn't book anybody in because I didn't know whether I was on my own or not. Oh, you shouldn't go sacking people then, should you? Mm. Hi. What are you doing here? Uh, trying to get away before anyone spots me. So you're not back for good then? No, uh, I just wanted to see how you were getting on and pick up a few things from over at road. So you're really doing it, eh? Giving up Ken and little Daniel and your home and everything just to go off with Brian, the accountant? Well, I wouldn't put it quite like that, but yes, I am. Aren't you mad? Maybe, but that's not what I came here to talk about. And anyway, it's none of your business. Listen, all I want to know, are you happy stopping on here and running this place? Oh, yeah, yeah, I suppose so. I, I just think that maybe... Oh, no. Hi. Look, I'm really far too busy to talk. You mean you won't talk to me? No, I mean, will you just please go? Yeah, fine. OK. Right, um, shall we nip upstairs, yeah. sort this one out? Yeah. On. She really is busy, honest. Um, you couldn't pick the worst time if you tried. Come in, come in. Thank you, sir. Oh, you got here all right, then? Yes, sir. It was like you said, down Rosamond Street and turn left. Good, good. Uh, only one thing, Kelly, uh, we're not at school now, so if you take the job, it's either Ken or Mr Barlow, whichever you like. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Mr Barlow, I think. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you, sir. Mr Barlow. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Right, I'll, uh, I'll show you around in a minute, and you'll be meeting Daniel. Sally will bring him along. She's a neighbour that's been looking after him. Oh, I can't wait to see him. Yeah. Only first, uh, I think it's only fair that I fill you in on what's happened. Well... Uh... A couple of weeks ago, Daniel's mother left. Oh, no. And there's uh, no question of her coming back. That's over. But it leaves me needing someone I can trust. Somebody who knows what she's doing to look after Daniel while I'm earning a living. Yes, sir. I'll take a pint of your butter, please. So, have you got any interviews going on today? Interviews? Yeah. Well, the manager's post. Not as far as I know. Hang on. Sorry, sir. Whatever else is going on here today, there's nobody being interviewed. Don't worry about it. Must have got my wires crossed, eh? Well, he's been very good. It's better than either of my two. Mind you, I suppose other people's are always better than your own, aren't they? Hey, Daniel, this is Kelly, so say hello. Hello, Daniel. He's not going to, so... <laughs> uh, do you want to take him? Yeah. There you okay. go. Kelly's just finished her B-Tech in nursery nursing. Oh, oh, have you? Well, you know a lot more than me. I've just had to make it up as I've gone along. Sure, I don't. Well, generally, I put him down for a little sleep after he's had his dinner. <laughs> 
And he usually sleeps for, well, an hour, an hour and a half sometimes. And what about his eating? Oh, I'll just give him anything, just mash it up a little bit. <laughs> I shouldn't be saying this in front of you, should I? You're probably thinking, why have I left my child with this woman? Yes, I'm just thinking how grateful I am. Oh, well, it was a pleasure. But you really want something more permanent, something that's going to give him oh, a bit yeah. more of a routine. Well, that's the idea. Yeah. Right, I'd better go, cos Kevin's waiting for his tea, Oh, so. sorry, sorry, I wasn't thinking. Yeah, off you go. Um, and do you want to drop him off later, when him and Kelly have had a bit more time to get acquainted? Yeah, OK. All right. See you. Bye, okay. Kelly. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so you can phone me any time you like. What would have Brian answers? Well, then you ask for me. I'm sure you can manage that. Still think you're mad. And I'm sure there's plenty would agree with you. Hey. You all right, Max? Yeah. I sacked her a couple of days ago. What's she doing here, then? <laughs> because she can't cope without me. Uh, I felt sorry for her. Yeah, and she fell out with a boyfriend. Oh, oh don't say you're turning out as daft as me. Uh, no, I think I've got a long way to go yet. Well, if I've done now tells for you, at least let me serve as a warning. Anyway, we know what we're doing with this business. Yeah. Right. It's fine. So all I have to do is sneak across the road and get away again without being noticed. Well, what if Ken asks me? I mean, what if he realises that someone's been in the house and he asks me if I've seen you? Then you tell him, yeah. It'll be too late then. Hey, uh... He is still teaching. Oh, yeah, as far yeah, as I know. Yeah. And where's Daniel? Sally's. Yeah, Sally Webster. She's looking after him. In her house? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. Coast should be clear, then. <laughs> Yeah, during term time, I'd want you here, say, uh, 8 o'clock? We're all up at 7 anyway. All right. I don't know, I'm usually back home by 5, so... Who on earth? <gasps> you scared me to death. What are you doing here? What are you? I thought you'd be at school. Uh, look, I'm sorry if I picked a... An awkward time. I just came to co collect a... Hi, Dan. Kelly might be working here, helping to look after him. This is uh, Daniel's mother. Hello. Can I hold him? Dandy. Just for a minute, that's all. Just hold him. Just for a minute? Yes. Well, she has been. He was just here to meet Kelly. I wouldn't have come if there was the slightest chance. Here, Kelly, can you take it? Of course. Go Look, on. just what is it? Uh, uh, what I said, nothing else. Just uh, collect uh, some clothes. Yeah, well, help yourself. <laughs> How is he? He's fine. Sally's been very good. Everybody has. Oh, yes, all sympathising with the abandoned husband. They were mostly sympathising with Daniel, not me. Yeah. Poor kid. Left by his mother, what kind of a monster can she be? And just what do you expect them to say, that what you did was a wonderful thing? Even I'm not saying that. So where are they, these things that you want upstairs? Yeah. And there's a suitcase that's mine. Yeah, well, go on, take it, take it, take whatever you want. I use them all by the same thing, do you? No, no, help yourself. Good night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to check up. Here, Liz got on to her interview, you know what I mean, down the wine bar. Hmm? After all, it's only really natural a husband would be interested in it, eh? 
I still think you're checking up on it. Oh, well, that's because you're an exceptionally <laughs> clever man, William Soares. I'll tell you what. What? I'll give you a ten to one that she doesn't get the job, eh? Now, you won't get better odds than that ten to one against, eh? Let me tell you. Look, I don't care what odds you're giving, yeah? I don't want to be involved in it, lad. Well, well, well. It's not fascinating now. She's not there, hmm? My wife's not at home. What do you make of that? Well, she's probably still at this interview at November. Oh, the interview? Oh, I forgot to tell you, there's no such thing as an interview. Oh, no. No, you see, I went down to said wine bar to wish her luck like any decent husband would, you know what I mean? Oh, I'm sorry, sir. There's no interviews here. Not at all. So what about the juice in that, eh? We have a non-existent interview that's going on far longer than it was meant to. Hmm? I can't wait to hear what she's got to say about that, can you? I'm very, very sorry. It's the last thing I expected her turning up like this. If I had expected it, I wouldn't have brought you around. No, but in a way, I'm glad I've seen her. Then I won't be imagining her. So it hasn't put you off the job? No. I think she's coming now. Got everything you want? Would you like to check the bag? No. Oh, please shut the door, please, so I don't have to sit. Thank you. Yeah. I shall be back. Little bird has been telling me about you. Didn't you look across the stream see Granny Ivy at bedroom window? I don't know now. Look, it's all right. You can tell me. Never mind what your mum and dad says. You did, didn't you, eh? Yeah. And what did she do? Did she start waving to you? Yeah, I think she did. Well, she would love, because she loves you, doesn't she? Yeah. Hey, well, listen. If you see her again, don't tell anybody else. Just come straight to me. And that'll be our little secret, won't it, eh? <laughs> oh, he's back. Hi, Tone. Oh, now. Looks like I picked another bad time, have I? No, it's not that. It's just uh, she doesn't like being disturbed when she's cutting. What? As you can see. We just, uh... No, we couldn't just, uh, I am working, but can you not see that? Yeah. Yeah, I can, yeah. Oh, OK, forget it. Oh, and then... Don't worry. I shan't be bothering you again. Look, you could see her tonight. She's going over to the Rovers after work. Yeah? Yeah, she is. Stephen, love, now you sit next oh, to me on the sofa. Oh, come on. Oh, Listen, Al should sit there. I'll stand here with Gail and Mike. doesn't mind, do you? No, no, I'll stand in the garden if you like. <laughs> Alf, sit down. No, don't you dare, Alf. Gail, oh, you sit down. No, I'm perfectly all right where yeah. I am, thank you. I'm nearly ready, folks. Oh, yes, right. Yeah, You're right are. down there, kids. Listen. Yeah. yeah! This picture's for me, right? So yes. I want you and your husband in the middle. Alf, oh. just sit down, please. Come on, Alf. Now, I'm just please doing as I'm told, Audrey, right, so mine. shout at him. Not me. Oh. Don't shout at that, Alf. I know that. So. Are we all in position now, then? Yes. Yes? Yeah. Right. Well, I'm not sure I am, but then who's interested in my opinion? Nobody, ma'am. That won't stop you, though, will it? <laughs> Mummy, what love? Right, then. Everyone look at the camera. Bill Duckworth said, if I see Grandma right. Ravi again, on, I've everyone. got to tell her. Look this her. way. What? Come on, we're supposed to be smiling. Did you know about this? Lovely. This way. No. This way, you two. This well, way. When did you see her? That's this afternoon. Oh, can't we talk about this later? Are we all ready, then? Yes. 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 Sorry. Oh, no, no. Say, I just on. wanted to be right. Mm. Well, when did you see her? I mean, did she come to the house? When I was coming. Come on, keep looking. Home from school. Oh, you see, Alf. Well, you're so big and huge. Nobody's going to notice, Stephen. Just breathe in. 
<clears throat> Hi. Hi. Before you ask, Andy's coming for his tea. Well, he's very welcome. How did the interview go? Well, we should hear in about a week, but uh, to be honest, I don't hold out much hope. A couple of the others were a lot more experienced than me. Who are they? One guy even knew the chap who were doing the interviewing. Ah, well, I shouldn't worry your head about it. There'll be plenty more interviews where that came from. Yeah, well, I'll keep on looking. It's all I can do. So, uh, this here interview, this was at the wine bar you were at last night? Yeah. yeah. What's it called? The Hourglass. The Hourglass, that's right. The Hourglass on Albert Road. I just wanted to make sure we were talking about the same place, you know? Yeah, that's it. Why, anyway? Mind you, interviews weren't held there. They were in the Checkers Hotel. Hi, hey, hey. Hi, Andy. Hiya. Sorry, where were the interviews held? The Checkers Hotel. You know, that big one at Bolton Road. Hi, Dad. Mm-hmm. What interviews are these, then? Uh, to manage a wine bar. I don't think I've got it, though. So, what were you going to say? Nothing. I'll go and get changed. Don't tell me my dad's in a funny mood. Well, he is. So, is everybody now happy? Look, yes. Never mind all that. Just get on with it. Actually, I wonder if it would be better if Nicky was stood oh. at the back. Oh. Nicky, go oh. stand around the back. Oh, you sign Nick. from see your grandma. <laughs> right. <laughs> We're all ready then. Yep. Carry on. Right. Smile, everybody. And. Oh, oh, who's no. that? I don't know. Well, oh, I better go and see. <sighs> now, nobody else move. No, we won't. Uh, We're going to be here all week. Hey, what's this about Ivy's ghost? Oh. Uh, nothing. No, there's no such things as ghosts. Is no. There? No, no. Only in stories. Yeah. Very silly stories at that. Yeah, very silly stories, they are. You'll never guess who it is. Oh! oh <laughs> it's you she wants, actually, Stephen. Me? Uh, yeah, I just wondered if you could manage another trip to the Wheat Chief. Only uh, they changed the menus there over the weekend. Yeah, but could we talk about this after, please, Alma? Oh, sorry, sorry, Can't sorry. Yeah, that. come on. See, we're already looking older than when we started. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, up Some of us are getting nice. bigger. <laughs> right. Everybody smile. Lovely. Hold it. I'll have that drink now, please. Right, here. Oh, hi, Fiona. Thank you, top up. Look, I'm going to have to get off, all right? And all do right. some work. Okay, well, nice to see you, Andrew, you know? Yeah. And are you sure you're all right? I mean, there's nothing bothering you. Oh, forget yourself, I'm sure I'm fine. Help this man the plant. It's just. Well, it's this man, your labour son, you know what I mean? I'm finding it very tough, do not you? It's getting to me. <laughs> I'll see you later on. Here you'll be here for something. Yeah. Oh, I thought I was looking at an early night. Hey, don't let me stop you. I was hoping somebody would. Uh -huh. Two pints, is it, lads? Certainly. Yeah. Well? All right, so we won't move in together. What, and you think that makes everything all right, do you? Well, why not? Because you still think that the reason I said no is to do with Steve. Well, no, I mean, forget that as well. No, I can't forget it. And if I ever think that that's what you believe, then we're finished for good, right? So, I mean, I do get a second chance. Last chance. Cheers, mate. All right, cheers, Jackal. <laughs> so, why am I listening, Molly? Uh, you know, I reckon I'd call her lying to me, you know? What, over this wine bar, Jim? Yeah. Well, I said to myself, I'd have it out there, you know? So I went home. Start a dead casual, like, you know, and then she lets me know that the interviews were a completely different place. Well, that's it. She's away, home free, you know what I mean? Had my thing on her at all. Well, I'm very pleased to hear it. I know, well, you see, it got me thinking then, so it did. Was I so completely wrong, right? Eh? Or is she a damn sight more clever than I give her credit for? You uh, must find it a bit odd, me dragging you back here again. I was glad of an excuse. <laughs> Last thing I needed was another family get together. Wow, that's what you're here for. Well, one of the reasons. And something I've already had in abundance. I think Audrey was the only one who wanted tonight's session. Oh, dear. The way Audrey looked at me, she'll never forgive me. Oh, well, never mind. But, um, there is just one thing I want to say. Mike didn't put me up to this. No? Not because I know that he does want to do business with you and he's quite capable of doing anything that might help. But he hasn't. In fact, he, um, he doesn't even know that I'm here. 
You mean I'm out with a married woman without her husband's knowledge? Yes. Well, we better get our alibis together so we're telling the same story. We're here to sample the menu. Yes. We better have a look at it then, hey? So if you have any problems, or if Denise should try to get in touch, I want you to call me straight away. I will. Good. Morning. Oh, morning. Uh, this is Kelly Thompson. She'll be looking after Daniel. Uh, Mrs Bishop and uh, Mr Sugden, my next-door neighbours. Oh, Hello. How do you do? Hello. Hello. It's nice to see you. And I'm sure they won't mind you calling if uh, if you need anything. Any time. We'll drop in anyway. Thanks. Try not to make it this afternoon because I'm cleaning the cage out of Randy. My budget again. I'm sure we could still accommodate you in an emergency. Thank you. But I'm thinking about the kid who had only been catching germs. Any time. There's usually one of us in. Thank you. Come along, Mr. Sugden. Bye. Okay, bye. Bye bye. Bye. Well, see you later, Daniel. Sarah! Hey, you've not seen no Elsie Granny Ivy, have you? Bruce, Mum, Dad said there's no such thing as ghosts. It's not ghosts, it's spirits. Look, there's no need to be frightened, you know, because they can't harm little children. Why? Well, because they've got guardian angels watching over them, haven't they? Like a nativity play. Yeah. Have they got wings? Well, they will have, yeah. How can I can't see it then? Because they're invisible. Like Grandma Ivy's spirit? Yeah, that's it. But we saw Grandma Ivy. Look, just keep your eyes open in case you see her again, all right? Eh? Come on, school. You know, I must be mad, allowing my wife to go out with strange men. Oh, encouraging her to go out with strange men. Right, well, now we've got the thing stitched up your end. We can look at it from my side, can't we? You know, you could do worse than invite him round here. Hey, oh, hey, come on, hang on. In fact, tonight will be all right. Mike, I am not inviting him round here. Why not? Well, I don't know, because it's... Well, it's immoral, isn't it? It's, it's a pretext. That's how business is done. Context, right? One deal leads to another. That's how it's done. I mean, there's nothing immoral about it. But this has been my project. I mean, now you want to spoil it all by cashing in on my success. Spoil it? Chasing a deal that could net us a fortune, I tell you. If I pull this off, it could lead to the big time. Oh, well, I'm sure it'd be better than anything I could do. Hmm. Well, it'd be more long-term. I mean, this thing you're doing on Friday is just a one-off. No, if I can get a contract out of this guy, we'd be dealing with him for years. Then you couldn't complain about him coming, could you, eh? Do you mean that uh, any catering that he might want in the future... Would... ..would be down to you, providing everything goes all right on Friday? You see, it's not just me I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about you as well. So, um, if I invite him, do you promise no monkey business? Monkey business? Promise. Thieves' honour. Nothing stronger. All right. You win. I generally do. So, did Maureen go down to see Reg this weekend? Yes, you were worn out, poor love. Is the lower stuff nice? It's somewhere I've never been. It used to be before he went there. It's an anagram of foot welts, you know. Really? It was in yesterday's crossword. Well, she does a lot of training round the shops on a Saturday while Reg is working. It's quite apt, really. <laughs> would you like a coffee, Mrs Grimes? Oh, tea would be very nice, mm. thank you. Milk and no sugar. Right. Excuse me one minute. Maxie, what are you up to? Nothing. So what's with this Little Miss Dynamic act all of a sudden? You told me to pull my socks up. Why are you not complaining, are you? No. Well, we've got to keep a tight ship. We want to keep this waist working. Tight ship. I'll get it. <sighs> Hello. Oh, she's with a customer. Are you going to change the name of the salon now Denise has gone? Can I take well, a that's the point. You could make it an anagram of your name. OK. Mm. Tell her. Yeah, well, as long as it's not foot welts. Well, right. Let me see, what could it be? I'm a dab and at anagrams, mm -hmm. you know. Somebody called John Welch. Really? He said, 
Could you meet him here tonight at seven, or if not, ring him on this number? I wonder what he wants. Mm. Secret admirer. Tight ship, Maxine. The customer's waiting for a tea. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three times in one week. Oh, I know. You think people will start talking? Mm. Well, it's Valentine's Day on Wednesday. Hey, don't you give me ideas. Mm. Don't know how I'm going to manage on Friday, though. I mean, my mum will be at the launch. Could ask Phyllis. Oh, well, actually, Gail, I was going to ask you if you'd mind helping out on Friday. What about this place? Oh, close it for the day. You'll still make more money. What about the customers? Let them start. Oh, you're ruthless, you, when you get going. It's dog-eat-dog -dog out there. Oh, well, I'll <laughs> think about it. Hi! Oh, hi! hi. Hey, I've got these photographs back oh, from Friday. Oh, a look. Actually, they're quite good, look. Oh! Well, that's <laughs> not so brilliant. <laughs> I think that's where Nama must have come in and distracted everybody. Oh, I'm so sorry, Audrey. So, and so then awesome. sweeping Stephen away like that, Anna said. You know, you're oh. saying more of him than me. So I'm going to have to start booking an appointment soon if it goes on. You're not seeing him tonight, are you? Uh, two BLTs, please, oh. Anna. Uh, uh, all right. Oh, oh love. I so <laughs> I know. How quaint. Quaint? What do you mean, quaint? Well, I didn't think they did official family photos anymore. Yeah, well, there are some dynasties, Steve, that stick to the old values. <sighs> Who's that? What that? Oh, that's my son, Stephen. Have you not met him? No, no, I've not been around. Oh, well, he works for this Canadian sportswear firm and uh, they're thinking of expanding business over here, so he's come over to try and find someone to make the stuff. Really? Mm, trainers, sweatshirts, I mean, all sorts like that. It's going to be really big business, whoever gets the contract. What's it called? Quebec, as in Quebec. Yeah. Oh, I get it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's quaint, isn't it, what these multi-million dollar companies will come up with? <laughs> Very. Hello again. Well, hi. Everything all right? Yeah. I could pop by later, if you like, to give you a hand. No, I'm fine, honestly. Are you sure? Oh, nearly time for his dinner. Oh, what's he having? Bit of fish mashed up with vegetables. Well, I'm just going to better buys. I could get you some of those jars, if you like. They're specially prepared. They must have lots of nourishment in them. Lots of sugar yeah. as well. Fresh food's much better and cheaper. Sorry. You must think I'm interfering. No! I just thought, on your first day, and if it's your first job... I've had training. I'm not as experienced as you, obviously, but how many children did you have? Well, I did work with children a lot, but uh, I must confess I, I never had any, actually. There you are. Thank you. Oh, hello, Mrs. Clough. Morning. Oh, not another funeral, is it? I'll have a pound box of them plain chocolates, please. Oh, blimey, they've all come back to haunt me now. Well, who else has been? Well, haven't you heard? Vera saw Ivy's ghost in number five. Really? Thinks she saw. She could be right, Rita, because I think I saw her as well. When? Last night, half past eleven. She was in your front garden, looking through the window. In our front garden? Well, that's where the factory was, wasn't it? Oh, yes, of course. And I said, Ivy, why aren't you at rest? And she said to me, I'll never be at rest until you give me the bonus you gave the factory cat. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you find it amusing. <laughs> Mocking the dead. I can't help it. I got used to it taking the rise out of you all those years. <laughs> Where have you been? Window shopping. Did you get my note? Eh? About the wine bar in Berry. They want 50 T-shirts for next weekend. <sighs> Steve, we have to get orders. We have to make a fresh start and put that court case behind us. Well, I think about yourself, that. You know Audrey's son's come over from Canada? He's looking for somebody to make his sportswear. So...? Well, I think we should go for it. Sportswear? You know, like Nike or Adidas. Yeah, and I can just see us winning an order to make football boots. <sighs> Steve, have you just been daydreaming all day? No, you don't get it. I've just been going around the sports shops looking at labels. Trainers made under licence in Taiwan, tracksuits in Portugal, polo shirts, Romania, but all for the same company. What are you trying to say? Well, you don't just pitch for everything. You take one little niche and you churn that out. 
And they put all the glitz on it and everything in the marketing. We can make sweatshirts as good as anyone. Oh, yeah, and where are we going to churn sweatshirts out? Well, we'd need new premises. We have to take a leap at some point, Vicky. I suggest I uh, suss this guy out, see what he's looking for. Hmm. Okay. There's no harm in that, I suppose. We agreed then. Agreed. Oh, coming up, love. Makes wristbands as well. I think he's worth a look. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna see Alma Baldwin tonight. Again? Yeah, this time it's with her husband. I've uh, been wondering when he was gonna make his pitch. Do you want me there? Well, that might be a good idea. Um, why don't you drop around about seven, and I'll try and get the business side done before dinner. Let me give you the address. Tracked you down at last. Hey, Ma. Oh. Fine, I forgot those photos from Friday night. Oh, yeah? What are they like? Well, I think they're quite good, actually. <sighs> oh, is that Mike and Alma's address? Yeah, we're seeing them tonight. Oh, I was going to ask you over to supper tonight. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I've hardly seen anything of you since you moved into that hotel. Oh, hello, Ida Love. Yeah, I've brought you these. Oh, you shouldn't have. Well, you sounded if you wanted cheering up on four. Hey, I hear there's been a visitation. Well, that's why I asked you round. Anyway, never mind about that now. Let me get you something to eat. Not about a sandwich on the house. Sandwiches? Is that all you've got? Get your hot pot. Two mineral waters and uh, gin and tonic. OK, love. I can uh, recommend the food. <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm not hungry. I believe we're in the same line of business. Is that so? Yeah, uh, I could uh, help you out if you're interested. In what way? Well, sweatshirts, polo shirts. I'm Steve McDonald, by the way. Carrie Meyer. Uh, look, I'm busy right now, but... Um... Well, well, we'll uh, later on, then, if you want to uh, name a time. <laughs> OK. Uh, how about 5.30 this afternoon? Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be good, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll meet you in here, unless you want to go somewhere more exciting. Here will be fine. Right, I look forward to it. Thank you. Hey, Anna, I do love. Hey, what about this ghost? Oh, I saw her at the top of, uh, you know, Dan Brennan's landing, as sure as I'm sitting there now. What was she doing? She was just stood there, smiling. But she looked troubled, you know, as if something were bothering her. Are you sure you hadn't imagined this? No! Well, you said you were run down, and it can play very funny tricks, can stress. Listen, have you ever known me talk about ghosts before? No, this is what I'm saying. It's not like you. Perhaps get somebody in for a few hours a bit of extra help. I don't need any extra help. I just want to put Ivy's soul to rest. I'll get somebody in who can do it. But don't you go worrying yourself to death over it. I don't want to be coming down here to another funeral in a hurry. And another thing, this hot pot could do a lively up. Have you got no red cabbage? Hey, hello. How's young Kelly going on? Oh, fine. Just popped in to see her, asked if she needed any help, and no. Hmm? Sounds good. Yeah, I think Ken's landed on his feet there. She's keen and she's sensible. And young. Yeah, that's it. She won't conk out every afternoon like some of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody deserves her, Ken does. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, Rita. Anyway, see ya. See you, love. Oh, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh, well, that's Ooh, Kevin's second. <laughs> eh? Well, for Valentine's Day. She's not bought one for her yet, though. I'm surprised you don't keep a list. You can tick them off as they come in here. Well, I do. I keep a sort of mental register. You oh. see, that's Alma buying for Mike oh. and Mr. Sutton buying for Phyllis. I'm doing no such thing. I'm seeking out a birthday card for an old army pal. What a wicked price they are, too. £1.50 for a piece of card. You can buy books for less than that at the sales. Uh, Percy, there are some cheaper ones on the right. Anyway, how do you know Alma isn't buying one for somebody else? Ah, because in that case she'd buy two. She'd still send Mike one. Ah, but I'd only buy one here, maybe, so buy the other one elsewhere. Otherwise, tongues might wag. If you ask me, this should ban St Valentine's Day. It puts wrong ideas into people's heads. How? 
Making out that love's a bed of roses. Never to get married and find out what it's really like. It ends in tears. It's about sacrifice, not this tripe. Well, then, it's very fitting, because St Valentine was a martyr. Well, in that case, people should go to church and put their £1.50 in the collection box. I'll write me pal a letter this year and I'll bid you good day. Good day. Bye. <laughs> Well, at least Alma doesn't fall into that category. You've got a very solid marriage, haven't you? Uh, well, it'll all end in tears if Mike doesn't buy me a Valentine, Mavis. <laughs> Don't worry. If he hasn't got you one by tomorrow, I'm sure old eagle eyes will have spotted it. We'll give you a ring and let you know. <laughs> I can't stop for long. I've got someone coming round at seven. Oh, who? An attractive hunk that I once had a relationship with. Well, a working relationship. Do you remember that competition that I told you about? He was the one who got me to do that. What does he want? I don't know. I think there's another competition coming up, so it's probably about that. Don't worry, I don't fancy him. Mm. I hope Ken knows what he's doing. That girl looks very young. She looks capable enough to me. Well, with respect, Mr Sugden, I'm not sure you're best placed to make judgement about who's capable of looking after children. I don't see why. I was brought up with our Tilly. She was only a few years older than me. And young people can do all sorts if they put their minds to it. They're not stretched enough. You'll give her a week or two. She'll soon find her feet. So you don't actually make sweatshirts? No, like I say, we're just about to move into manufacturing. How big are your premises? About 2,000 square feet, but we're looking at bigger places. And you've been going for two years? Well, average life of a print shop round here is two months. Look, I know what you're thinking. I've no experience. I had no experience of printing when I started. But I'm one of the best now. I'll give you my client list. I'll vouch for me. And you've got capital to buy a new plant. No problem, yeah. I'll give you my bank statement. Well, if you're so dynamic, how come you haven't expanded already? Well, because moving into an overcrowded market before you're ready is suicidal. I'm just waiting for the right opening. I'm pretty sure this is it. You know, we like things done to strict specifications. You don't just go off and do what you like. Sure. Well, you'll uh, have to fill me in on that. But uh, with your know-how and my talent, I don't see how we can fail. Ah, oh, evening. I'd like a word, please, Mira. Oh, ah, what about? I think you know what about. Look, I saw it. I don't care what you saw. You'll stop putting ideas into Sarah's head. I mean, Ivy was a grandma. It's upsetting her to think that she's not at peace. Ah, all this claptrap about guardian angels. Look, it's not claptrap. You'll I mean, say no more, all right? Oh, all right. I mean, she's your daughter. Thank you. You don't trouble with people round here, don't you? There's too many like her and that Ida Clough. Septics. Oh, listen, I hope well, you don't I mind. Don't I asked Carrie to come round before dinner. <clears throat> I've got to just touch base with her before she uh, goes out tonight. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. She can stay if she likes. Oh, no, she's got plans. That's all right. Thank you. Bye. I'm sorry about that, Stephen. It's all right. I like to see a man busy. <laughs> um, what line of the rag trade are you in exactly? No, I was hoping we could talk about that. Get us a drink, Manila. As a matter of fact, I haven't done very much in that line this last couple of years. The last place I had a sold a few years ago. Why is that? And an offer I couldn't refuse. Developer, seller's market, I decided to get out. I've been doing it for about uh, 20 years. I fancied a change. How long ago did you sell? Oh, be about uh, 89. And you've done nothing since? Oh, uh, I've kept my hand in. Thanks for that. Cheers. Cheers. So, uh, you think you'd be interested in doing something for us? Well, I'd like to know more about it, but uh, yeah, I think we can do some business. And you, you don't think you'd be out of touch after seven years? Oh, no way. Fashions change. The way they're put together doesn't. Well, uh, come along to the launch on Friday. And uh, in the meantime, you might like to put some thoughts down on paper. What sort of thoughts do you want? Oh, you know, the usual. Uh, 
kind of capacity you could cope with, uh, projections for the next five years, um, cash flow sensitivities, balance sheets, P&Ls, profit and loss accounts? Yeah, sure. <laughs> no problem. No problem at all. All right, Maxine, you've made your point. You can go now. One look and then you go. Why? What are you planning? Hello, Jim. Hi. Uh, this is Maxine, my assistant. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Right. She was just leaving, weren't you, Maxine? The manageress, eh? Oh, yes, rule with a rod of iron, I do. Yo, Denise has left then. Yeah. Here's Kerry. Oh, yeah. Hi, oh, hi, I'm nice Kerry to Meyer. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Hope he hasn't been boring you too much. Oh, yeah. oh no, we coped. Mm. Um, can I get you a drink? Oh, yes, please, I'll have a white wine. Please, sit down. Oh, thanks. How was the meeting? Oh, very interesting. Oh, this by competition, is it? Oh, some of it. You're not the only interested party. I'd be very worried if I was. I'll tell you, there's some smart operators around here. Yeah, so we're learning. Am I allowed to know who it is, or is it a trade secret, eh? Oh, no, I don't think so. His name's Steve McDonald. Has an outfit called Done to a T. Oh, uh, yeah, him. Our pars have crossed now and then. A yeah, bright guy. Knows the market. Yeah, well, made the best man win. Cheers. So how did you know that she'd left, then? She rang over the weekend. Really? She didn't tell me all the details. Oh. I thought she wanted to keep it quiet. Well, she, she rang me for another reason, actually. Oh? Yeah. She, uh, she offered to sell me the business. She what? Well, you know that she did it once before, only I wasn't interested because of Marianne, my ex. She'd have wanted a cut. The two-faced cow! It was only Friday. She asked me if I could run the place full time. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't realise that. <sighs> the thing is, Fiona, um, me and Marianne are back together. There's no problem about buying a business anymore. So what are you going to do? I've already done it, I'm afraid. <laughs> I've said, yeah. This is just the kind of start we need. And you'd both be working here? That's the idea, yeah. Marianne's a hairdresser. So what happens to me? Well, we'd have to talk about that, but it's unlikely that we'd want a full-time assistant. So it's... Thanks for holding the fort, Fiona. Here's your cards. I can talk to Marianne. Oh, um... God, it just doesn't take much, does it, eh? What? The laid-back John we used to know and love, everybody's friend, wouldn't touch the rat race with a barge pole. Give him the back street hairdressers. Look, I feel bad enough about this, believe me. That's why I came round. You're not bad enough to keep me on! I don't know what else I can do. I have to put my marriage first. If we want somebody part-time... Yeah, you'll give me first refusal. Well, thanks a bunch. You know where you can stick your charity, don't you? I'm sorry, Fee. I thought Denise would... Oh, and you can give her my love as well. She must need it the way she keeps going round and wrecking people's lives. Bye, John. And I hope you're very happy. Bit late, isn't it? Uh, I was just uh, thinking of getting one for Baz. You know the technician in the lab. A bloke. Yeah. It's a gag, Steve. I'm going to pull his leg. Well, many a true word spoken in jest, brother. <laughs> Not my type. More yours. Uh. Hey, what about your card? Oh, we'll uh, we'll leave it. Eh? I'll play hard to get instead. <laughs> See you later. See you.
Early start for you, this, isn't it? Couldn't you sleep? I couldn't actually, no, Rita. Uh, excitement. Hey, no bedroom secret. I'll go on before Mavis comes back. Business expansion with a bit of luck. I'll soon be moving on. T-shirt's not doing well? Ooh, great, yeah, but it's not good enough, is it? The real money's in manufacturing. Oh, you tell that to Mike Baldwin. They knocked his factory down. Yeah, well, he's a uh, small town, isn't he? Always was. Always will be. Thanks, Lou. There See you. you. Oh, you'd think she'd smile more often, wouldn't you? Somebody as pretty as that. Oh! Like seeing that hairdresser. I've seen her in the shop just now. She looked right through me. Hey, talking of looking right through things, um, you haven't seen anything of the um, lingering presence, have you? Norris Cole? Oh, no, Rita, no. I have not seen Ivy in our front garden. Mm. Bet this is what it was like in Hitler's bunker. Waiting for the end. Yeah, but it could be a new beginning for you, couldn't it? If John decides to keep you on. I thought you said I stood no chance. No, I said I got the impression they didn't want me. It's more going for you, though, isn't there? <laughs> what like? Well, he knows how good I am. He might not want the competition. He knows I've got a temper and all, and he won't want that. Yeah? you still not said what's going for me. Well, you're cheap. Thanks. No, I mean, you don't get as much wages as I do. If you got paid by the insult, you could retire. Oh, don't suck. Hello. See, I'm not afraid, Betsy. I just feel responsible. You see, I were her best friend, so it's only natural she'd choose me. To do what? Well, to put her out of her misery, cos she's not happy. I know she's not happy, especially now she's moved in. Josie, look, why doesn't Ivy show herself to a scare out of number five? Look, it don't work like that, does it? That's nasty. It's against the rules. I say, I've got to know what she wants, what she wants to say to me. But I can't do that in here, can I? How about bingo? What? Well, you and Ivy used to go a lot. I mean, I was thinking, well, perhaps she's still going. Do you think she does? I do think if I started going again, but she'd get in touch. Well, uh, on second thoughts, no, no, probably not. I mean, it's against the rules, isn't it? And it is gambling, isn't it, bingo? Yeah, that's right, love. You see, neither of us all rest, so... Well, we've had a conversation, I know that. And you see, Ivy's close. I know she is. It's like tuning into a radio, yeah. picking program out you want, you know, you want to mm. listen to, and then it slips off onto something else. Oh, I just wish we could get onto the same wavelength. A good aerial. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. Do you know? It's a waste of time telling our Jack, mm. and that Don Brennan thinks I've gone off my head. <laughs> Oh, it's done me good to have a chat, yeah. Betty. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for listening. My pleasure, love. So, this is the finalised menu, huh? Looks good, Alma. Well, we can't send them away hungry, can we? No, this is terrific. I can't tell you what I help you, Ben. You're really taking the pressure off. I just wish I had you with me in New York last year. Oh, well, that would have been nice. Yeah, it would have been. As it ended up, it was a disaster. Rude waiters, inedible food. Not this time. I'm a success before I started, thanks to you. Oh, I wish I had your confidence. Hey, sit down. Come on, my sister won't mind for a minute. Now, what's with the uh, self-deprecation? Is this uh, something British or peculiar to you? Well, which answer would you like best? I mean, I'm here to please. <laughs> you see, where I come from, people wear their egos on their sleeves. If you've got something going for you, you might as well show it. What, in business, you mean? In life, in anything. Oh, well, I suppose it all boils down to feelings, doesn't it? And... Well, me, I think I'm a bit afraid of showing my feelings. I'm even afraid of my feelings sometimes. I'm coming on too strong. Life is too short, Alma. Go for it. Hey, look, here's my. What do you want, this? So, uh, what's going on here? Uh, we're discussing Alma's future, aren't we? Alma? Yes, just the uh, k back. Do, uh, do, do, do you want to keep that? Yeah, thanks. Uh, come on, you're buying your mother a drink. I'm sorry, look, I'm just saying nothing, aren't it? Oh, no, no, it's okay, we're finished, aren't we? Yeah, listen, thanks for this, and uh, I'll keep in touch. Yeah. Gail, bye. Oh, bye, Stephen. Bye, Mum. Nice talking to you. Hello, love. Bye. Hello. And how's Daniel this morning? Were you looking for Mr. Barlow this morning? You know, when you looked in the front window. 
Look, looked in. Oh, no, I wasn't looking in. Well, well, I may just have glanced in in passing. Uh, sorry if I, I gave the impression that no, I No, I just uh, thought you wanted him for something, that's all. Oh, only to wave, you know, say, say hello, Ken and um, Mr. Barlow. Well, we've been friends for many years. Oh, that explains it then. Yes. See ya. Yes, yes, goodbye. <laughs> Kevin can spare you on the van for a couple of hours, surely. I'm on my dinner. Why can't we go now? Because I'm busy. I'm not on my dinner. I'll see you at half past three. It's no, look. It's not up to Kevin, it's up to Baldwin. And if he finds me missing, he'll go spare. Well, tell him you want time off then. And he'll want to know where I'm going. Well, where am I going? I'll tell you at half past three. See Baldwin. Well, like I said, premises, labour, no problem. And I've been at the counter all morning preparing those figures you wanted. They're in there. Do you mind if he reads it some other time, Mike? He's with his mother. Oh, sorry. I mean, if I'm in the way, then... Uh... Uh, not at all. And uh, I'll read it later, promise me. Right. More drinks. Uh, no, we're OK, honestly. Right, well, uh, if you want me, Stephen, I'll be over there. Thanks again. <sighs> Bums rush, if ever, all. You should know. You've had enough in your time. Uh, usual, please, Betty, when you've got a minute. Go on, then. Whatever he wants. Right, love. No, not for me, Betty. I'm off. Oh. Very generous of you, but I've got people to see, you know. All right, I'll give you a bit of advice instead. It's too big for you. Well, let me guess. Uh, my car. No, no, my head. You know what I'm talking about. Do I? The rag trade. So whatever Carrie Meyer said, forget it. All right, so that's what you're talking about. Well, if they're mentioning my name in high places, they must be taking me seriously, mustn't they? Seriously? A T-shirt, Dorber. I made quite an impression, actually, Mike. I reckon I could clinch it with Stephen now, but, well, you know, I didn't want to intrude when he's with his family. I think I'm as desperate as you are. See ya. On second thoughts, Mother, I don't think you are the right person. When I said to give Vera help, I meant advice. I think you should call in a proper spiritualist. I'm a spiritualist. You read teacups for fun. It's not the same thing. Look, I just want to get through to her. Uh, well, now you're talking wavelengths. A volt or two either way, and you and Ivy could keep missing each other. Please, Mother. No, that's how it is. Have you had any dreams about Ivy? She'll be having nightmares before you've finished. I keep seeing her lips moving, but I can't, I can't hear what she's saying. Ectoplasm. What? That's what they use to manifest. Difficult to talk through. Oh, Vera, I know you need help, but my advice would be to call in an expert. And we've left Deirdre in that shop. But Ivy's my responsibility. Don't you see that? I can't turn me back on her, can I? Vera, are you doing after what? Oh, yeah, I'm coming, Betty. You see, now I've dumped my problems onto you. I'm Look, I'm sorry. I am not go, you know, there might be something in the library, a book I could read. Good luck, Vera. Ectoplasm. Uh, G and T, please, and a mineral water. Ice again, or is it too cold for you? Oh yes, please. It's a little bit warmer here than it is at home. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get these. It's the least I can do for batting in. Thanks, if you insist. You'll uh, have to forgive Mum. She's feeling a little bit left out. <laughs> no problem. She tells me you ran a tight ship when you had the place across the street. Firm but fair. Ask anyone that worked for me, they'll tell you that. Um, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, not now. Sound busy. That's sharp talk. It can keep. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, what do you want? Um, I wondered if I could have like, a couple of hours off this afternoon. A couple of hours off before? I'm not sure. You, you see, this friend of mine wants to live somewhere and I'm... Well, you want a couple of hours off, but you don't know what for. Um, no. Well, perhaps I could tell you afterwards, you know, when I've been. Sounds intriguing. Yeah, very intriguing. <laughs> All right, off you go. Only because you're good at what you do. All right, well, thanks, Mr Baldwin. And I'll come in early tomorrow and make the time up. Yeah, you do that. How much, Betty? 2 39 Mike. Take one yourself. Oh, darling. Oh, sorry. <laughs> thanks, mate. That's OK. Firm but fair. No good wielding the stick, is it? Counterproductive. Yeah, Creature in torment, Maureen. I can't ignore it. Vera's not in torment. She's just upset. I meant her at number five. Torment. I can feel it. Mother, I'm warning you. Don't interfere. I wouldn't be interfering, would I? Not as such. I'm the link, that's all. The medium. The sort of junction box between Vera and her friend. They need me, our Maureen, and I'll not deny them. Where are you going? Out. 
Yeah, I can see that. Where? Right, you've got uh, Mrs Shrewsbury at quarter past four. Nothing till five. I'll be back about half past, all right? You're going for an interview, aren't you? For another job? Oh, great, you made it. Yeah, just. And what are you? A moral support in case you don't get it? Get what? Yes, Maxine, I am going for an interview, actually, but I'm going to be the one who's asking the questions, all right? Talk about rats deserting a sinking ship. Oh, is it an interview? I'll tell you in the van. Yeah, you can tell me which way to park the wheels and all. <laughs> I don't care how many miles have separated you, you can still tell your brother and sister. <laughs> it's not so much miles as years. He's got your nature too. Affable, easygoing, warm-hearted. Mike, you don't have to flatter me. I've told Alma I'll help you tomorrow. I'm just saying I like steam when we get on. That matters in business. I suppose. I can't see it matters. Hey, there's another thing you've got in common. You say what you mean, you mean what you say. See you, girl. Bye, Alma. Bye. Uh, look, I'm sorry to keep mothering, but I just wanted to make sure everything went smoothly tomorrow. Yeah, OK, thank you very much. Town hall again. They must think I'm new and rush it the way I keep checking on everything. What have you done to your husband? Why? What's up with him? He likes me all of a sudden. <laughs> What's happening to me, Betty? This morning, I found myself peeping through Ken's front window. Did you see anything? No. But Ken's child mind, I saw me. It's all very embarrassing. Have you thought of telling Ken, you know, that you're not very happy with the... Uh, what's his name? Kelly? Yeah. Well, what do I say? That, that I think she's too young and inexperienced to cope with Daniel? That, in my opinion, he's made a bad decision, taken in haste? Well, be a start. Daniel crying a lot, is he? No. Oh, perhaps that's what's worrying me. We don't hear anything. How about the other side, you know, Don and Josie? No screams or, or bumps in the night? No. Why? <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> Might get a bit lively later on, you know. Vera's got the Ghostbusters coming in. <laughs> Look, Josie, I know we haven't always seen eye to eye. But I'm asking, I'm begging, just let Maud do her stuff. Hocus pocus. I tell you, Don won't wear it. Folk always mock what they don't understand. I am in no mood to mock. This has been a very upsetting business. But Don won't find out, will he? Is it work you said? Vera, if Ivy is walking around, it's all in your head. Don and me, we haven't felt or seen a thing. Psychic shutdown. What? Closed her out for reasons best known to yourself. Once that door slams, there's no opening it. Good. Well, where does that leave me, eh? My door's still open. If Josie doesn't want us, I see no point in stopping. No, look, I've asked you and I've begged you. Now I'm pleading. Uh, that, Vera, I were running a bath. It won't take a minute if she's adjacent. Adjacent? Ivy. Close and nearby are words that we use, the living. With spirits, it's adjacent. It's when their world is running parallel to ours. And it won't take long, you say? No. Well, depends if I've... Adjacent, yeah. Well, hurry up. I'm having a bath. Thanks, love. Would you mind not using any electrical appliances until I've finished? It disturbs the energy field, you see. Right, dear, get the props out. Now, when you've lit them, draw the curtains. Right. Are you sure you know what you're doing? You know, no wonder you didn't tell me where we were going. If you had, I wouldn't have brought you. Look, I've got things to say, OK? If you want to bottle out, just oh, go. No, 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 I've come this far. I was expecting the meter man. Can I come in? Depends who sent you. Ken? No. Well, you can come in then. You're a cow, Denise. Show yourself, damn it. Say something at least. I haven't got time to waste here. I've got a shop to run. Don't shout at her. You've got to shout, love. Need her to lose her temper, you see. Manifest herself. Your dear friend Vera's as brassed off with you as I am. Sat here like two ducks in a desert, and for what? I've always heard you had plenty to say for yourself. What a joke. 
Stop, Stuart. I've shot him. Yeah, I still don't Shh. think you should... Shh. Something's happening. Ooh. Can you hear it? Yeah. We're making contact. Oh, what are you doing? Uh, hey, sir, more done. She's just trying to make contact. You... Ouch! Come on, the pair of you. Have you seen what they're doing yeah, well, here? We didn't. Uh, they said it wouldn't take very long. <laughs> a few more seconds and I'd have had her. This yeah. is my house, not a flaming crypt. Look at it, candles. I didn't expect you back. No, that's obvious, isn't it? Come on, Vera, will you make out? Yeah, well, I'm not surprised she won't talk to you, Don Brennan. I mean, she's frightened of you. I've brought her so far. And I reckon she'll turn up before the night's out. Well, if she does, I'll send her around to see you, OK? Now, shift! Yeah, well, you'll regret this. Hey, well and all. After all I've said. I mean, after all I've said. And here you go again, eh? On the move without telling anybody. Yes, me and Brian are moving. Another eye, you didn't miss me. Oh, well, it's a better look that I found you in then, isn't it? Dead fortunate. You led me on, Denise. You went behind my back. There I was thinking that I was doing a really good job and then he turns up. Look, you just swap bosses. Instead of me, you get John Welsh. Made that clear to him, did you? Eh? You flogging the lease on the condition that it keeps me? Well, we didn't go into detail, but I assumed... Yeah, exactly. You assumed, and you assumed wrong. Because he doesn't want me. What? It's just like everything that you do, isn't it? You don't think. No, correction, you do think, but only about yourself. But it's a successful shop. It, he'd be a fool to change anything. Why not? You did. Don't get personal. Well, it's hardly surprising, is it, eh? You can dump your kid, you can dump Ken, you can certainly dump me. Sorry, I can't make you a cup of tea, love. The kettle's packed. It's OK. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Well, if you must know, I wasn't dumping Daniel. I was protecting him. I've made a mess of my life. I've messed a few other lives along the way. And they hate me for it. If Danny was to come with me, some of that hate might have rubbed off. If Danny's with Ken, it won't. Sad, I'm sorry. Yeah. So am I. Right, what do we do now? We go. Come on, Tony. Can you find the money? For the lease, can you find it? Well, I hadn't really thought about it. No, no, no. You just came to slag me off. Well, you've done that in spades. Now I'm telling you, you find the cash. Four and a half thousand quid. You can't do that, Fee. Oh, shut up. What if I can? About John? I'll just tell him that you got there first, so he hates me too. <laughs> Join the queue. I'm waiting for that. How do I contact you? Through my solicitor, Rob Talbot. He's in the book. But you'll have to be quick. Why quick? Uh, by the weekend? Whew. Look, I can't stall John any longer, love. Okay. Okay. Better get busy then, eh? I'll see you. Or will I? You might. If Ivy's in Mavis's garden, she could be in yours, couldn't she? No. Derek's the only paranormal I ever see, Rita. Thought about painting his windows, did I tell you? What colour? Black. So when he gets up in the morning, he still thinks it's night time. You aren't locking up. I'll be doing him a favour. and go back to bed and have a lie-in. 
You will be seeing ghosts if Derek pops his clogs before you. He'll haunt you somewhat rotten. Mm, think of the fun I'll have if I go before him. Ghosts, it's all I wash. Aye. Oh, That's why you've stopped patrolling the ginnel, is it? What? Well, your home watch. It's what people are saying. Back gate of number five's out of bounds. See you, Reed. See you. Whoever told you that doesn't know Percy's sugged in. Only saying what I've heard. Thank you. What is the point of me trying to play it down if you keep on encouraging her? Hey, look, switch it off, will you? Look, Vera was beside herself. Not to let her try would have been cruel. And how cruel is it to me, eh? Coming home to find Maud Grimes holding a flipping seon. Well, it might have worked. Worked? They call her Maud the Fraud, you know that, don't you? I am talking about Vera. Get her off our backs. Look at it. It's black magic, is that? Look, what are you doing? That's Vera's stuff. She can fish for a mint bin if you want to. Uh, uh, now, uh, watch it. Don't do anything stupid, you heard what Maud said. You'll regret it. The mood I'm in. If any ghost comes near me, I'll... Just watch me. Don! About, for? Oh, what? You want to be more careful? You might have brought me torch. I'm still doing it, yes. Have you got that? And if you hear the daft rumours, don't believe them. I think you're taking it all too seriously, Vera. There was a suggestion that Ivy was haunting our front garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, folk always mock things they don't understand. Maud Graham said that. I think come the spring I'll give Ivy a watering can. She can sprinkle our borders. Oh, it's not funny, Derek. <laughs> no, it's not. And if you come in here to laugh at me, oh, I'll... Yeah, let's not fall right over something that might not... Well, I suppose it, it might exist if one stretches one's imagination. <laughs> Look, it's not my imagination. And don't worry about Ivy being in your garden, cos there's someone shining in your garden if I had a choice. <laughs> Fine romance, this is. It's good for me a fortune. What? Well, I'm paying my corner, aren't I? Don't tell them at work, you know, that I don't see much of you. You're behind that bar so much, I sometimes forget you've got legs. So? Not seeing your legs tonight, have I? I'm McDonald. What? Just trying it for size. Don't panic. I'm not proposing. Well, who's panicking? I didn't know where to put myself. You calling her a cow and her talking rubbish just to get rid of you. She meant it. Yeah, of course she meant it. She knows you're not a waste of time, that's why. But it was still a waste of journey, if you ask me. So you don't want to work for me, then? Oh, stop dreaming, Fee. You can't afford it. I could get a loan. Oh, and who's going to fix a loan up for you by weekend? <laughs> All right, maybe you're right. Maybe it was just her way of getting rid of me. I know I'm right. Yeah, well, I'm not going to go that easy. I want to own that shop. You're not serious. Why not? <laughs> I mean, come on, look on the bright side. I'm only four and a half grand short. <laughs> I'm going to go for it. I am. Oi. Cheers, mate. Yeah, if that's a bill, I'm out of the queue. <laughs> Oh, nice one. Letter from the bank. Oh, they think she'd have a thousand pounds for a holiday in the Caribbean. Hey, never mind the holiday. I know, I know, I know. Rent money. I've not forgotten. Well, neither have I. Right. See ya. See ya. Would it be all right if I take him to the city farm? Oh, please do. It's not a proper one. It's run by hippies. But they've got a sheep and some rabbits. Yeah, right. Fine, fine. It's ever so good. I take our Billy. Ducks and all? Uh, nah, ducks, very special subject. Go on. Tell Kelly what noise ducks make. Come on, can you remember? Quack, 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 quack. No? Oh. No. I think he needs a bit of extra tuition from Percy Sugden. Should have sent him round. <laughs> Only joking. <laughs> Bye. See you tea time. See you. Might go to the bank if I can get myself an appointment. Hmm, what makes you think they'll lend you the money? Well, young, I'm charming. I'm responsible. I've looked after the place for a year. Why shouldn't they give it to me? Oh, put it like that. How can they refuse? Mm. I've got a name for the shop if they do lend you the money. Cut and dried. Get it? Yeah, I do. But I think I'll probably just call it the owners. Mm. Boring. <laughs> yeah, well, it's better than Denise's, isn't it? Or John's. You won't let the 
steam a boil dry, will uh, you? I have worked here before, you know. And anyway, if anything goes wrong, I can always ring you at the town hall. I'll, I'll manage. <laughs> <laughs> and Phyllis will be along to give you a hand. Oh, great. Well, that's the end of my problems. Hey, are you ready? Hey, you look great. What oh, do you think so? Yeah. yeah, tell her, girls, you won't listen to me. You don't think Steve will think I'm trying to upstage everybody, do you? No, of course he won't. Be looking at the waitresses, won't he? Oh, again, are you sure you don't mind? <laughs> It'll be a laugh. <laughs> anyway, give me a chance to see my stepbrother as other people see him, Mr. Successful. <laughs> On the other hand, what? It'll give people a chance to see me as I really am. A clumsy skivvy dropping things all over the oh, place. Oh, girl, come on, he's not like that. I mean, he knows you're my business partner. Oh. You do me a favour. Hey, what do you mean? You, you won't be dropping things all over the place, will you? No, Mrs. Baldwin. <gasps> yeah, four o'clock be fine. Anyway, Denise says that if I can raise the money, she'll accept my offer. Gazumping, they used to call it. I don't care. I just... I just don't see why he should get preferential treatment. I quite agree. You go for it, young lady. I would, in your shoes. Anyway, good luck with it. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. What did I say that for? What? About John. I mean, what if she tells him? She doesn't know him. Yeah. Of course she does. She used to work here. Oh, she won't bump into him. I still wish I kept my mouth shut. Well, she's not going to say anything, is she? She was on your side. She made that quite clear. Yeah, she seemed to be. Right, I better go and phone the bank. Good luck. <laughs> Oi, who said you could come in here? Free country. Don't get political. What are you reading? A train timetable? I don't read fiction. Oh, good. Very good. Oh, the secret of the Titanic. You can borrow it when I finish. No, no, the ending. Hits an iceberg and sinks. Mm, one theory. Oh, dear, oh, dear. All right. Yeah. Who's your pal, then? Oh, he's one of my tenants. A bit of a nutcase, but he's quite harmless. Oh, yeah? On the rock and roll? Neighbours, no, hotel kitchen somewhere. He's all right to keep an eye on him. Hotel oh, kitchen. Come on, you two. I thought you were in a hurry. Are, Come on. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it, Brad. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, hey, we're just about to send out a search party. Oh, now I'm here. What do you want me to do? Uh, sit yourself down, Phyllis. I'll make you a cup of coffee before you start. Oh, Tar, that's a good idea. <laughs> well, have a nice day, now. Bye, 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 bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Next Wednesday? <sighs> yeah. Then when I told them I watched four and a half thousand pounds by tomorrow morning, they stopped listening. Well, did you tell them you've been running this place since last year? Of course I did. And it's still a going concern? I told them. Then they had a look at me overdraft and said I didn't have a very good track record of money management. Well, <sighs> Rita seems to think you can make a go of it. Yeah, well, she was just saying that there, no, wasn't she? No, she wasn't. She was dead enthusiastic. She said uh, she'd give you a reference. I don't need a reference, though. I need the money. Well, there you go. Rita? Mm. I hardly know her. Did you enjoy your tea cake, Percy, love? I've had fresh, yes. <laughs> Old mess with And now quicker service and all. Oh, give it a rest, will you, Percy? We're trying to work as fast as we can. Now, if you were a gentleman, you'd have been back to me to the table to sit with you. I thought you were here working anyway. You're too late. I've got an appointment with the optician. Oh, the optician, he'll know. You'll know what? Love is blind. Are you having another cup of... Now then, Phyllis. Desmond, where have you been hiding? Give us a home. I've seen a lot now. She's like a flipping rabbit. Hey, hey I'm going to take my tea break now. What are you having? Uh, two teas and a bacon sandwich, Mark. Yeah, all right, Des. Uh, uh, Mike tells me you worked in the kitchen. Imperial. Four star. Oh, four star. So you know how to grill bacon, then? Nope. All this. This one? Oh, yes, I like that one. Better give it a bit of a press, though. Right, then we'll go and get changed. Are you sure this won't seem a bit too pushy, like we're overhyping ourselves a bit? Well, will Mike Baldwin be pushing himself? Of mm. course he will. But will he have samples of his work? Flare jeans, denim caftans, if the moths haven't got to them first. Hello. Hiya. Uh, if this is a social call, I'm afraid we're off to a meeting at the town hall. Oh, taking up politics, are we? You've certainly got the form. You what? I've just been satirical. Um, <clears throat> what it is, I was wondering how you're um, fixed for a bit of a loan. Well, how come you never wonder about asking anybody else? Like? Mum and Dad. Oh, well, I did think about asking them, which is why I'm asking you. Well, at the moment, things are a bit tight, but our fortunes may change in the next 24 hours. If so, I'll let you know. 
Ah, it's all right, mate. Don't worry about it. I get the picture. Sorry? I don't apologise. I'm the one that should be sorry for even asking. Hi. So, this is where the action is. Uh, I just wanted to return these in case I don't see you at the town hall. I've had a look at your profit and loss accounts. And? Oh, you seem to be running a tight little ship. Is this one of yours? Yes. Oh, terrific. Very nice work. That was last time? Okay, because I couldn't hear it out the back, but, um... If it's high From the firm also, we've got to keep this brightness fashion. down because the, the snow comes on and it's going gonna, it's gonna to blind the, slopes, the audience. The so if we can Don't mind me, I'm just his mother. Stephen, love, we could have borrowed your thingy, your mobile. Isn't there a phone out there? Yeah, but it's a bit too public. Ram leader for 20 years in North America. Ta Quebec is pleased to announce his country. So, um, how's it going? Whatever the uh, whatever I should have got here earlier. I'm not uh, properly prepared. Oh, you'll be fine. I know you will. How do you know? I just do. You've got that confident manner. You put people at their ease. That's half the battle. Hope you're right. <laughs> Thanks anyway. What did you say, Alf? Fish it! No, you're not. Listen, I want you here. I want you in your best suit and on your best behaviour and wearing your OBE. Well, why'd you think to give Stephen some moral support? Oh, did it? Stephen, did you tell Alfie he needn't turn up? Yeah, I, I really don't think it's his cup of tea. I mean, I, I'm not sure it's yours either. Oh, sweetheart, listen. Do you know, I don't think you understand. I mean, maybe you don't have old bees in Canada, but in this country, they, well, they mean everything. Honestly, I think you would be very silly if you didn't have him here. Don't worry, he'll come. Alfie! Oh, he's rung off. Oh, God. Do you know, I won't let him forget this. Anything I can do before I go and get changed? Um, that's... Oh, uh, look, someone's left a jacket there. Can you, can you pick it up? No, no, that's mine. Leave that there. I'm uh, keeping myself a nice seat at the front. Oh, I, uh, I thought you were going to keep me company at the back. Yes, well, won't you be busy organising all your caterers? Oh, no, the organising's done. It's in their hands now. Well, you can sit at the front with me, then. Well, um... You know, I thought if it dragged on a bit, we could uh, help ourselves to a couple of glasses of champagne. Oh! Right. <laughs> How's your love life? Oh, on the back burner. Oh, get away. There must be someone. Never mind me. What about yours? Never mind changing the subject. Who is it? Only you, Phyllis. Oh, you old charmer. <laughs> Don't mind me. Just seeing to your condiment. How are you for Pepper? What's up with him? Is he trying to do me out of my job? Uh, Roy, give yourself a breather, eh? <laughs> oh, I like to keep myself busy. Aye, so I see. <laughs> so, uh, what is it you're doing in this hotel? Oh, I'm on breakfast. Uh, I do the fried bread. Aye. Only, shall I tell you something? I don't fry it. Oh, you little monkey. <laughs> I grill it under the griller. Oh, yeah? Has uh, no one noticed? I've been paid compliments. I thought if you put bread under the grill, that toast in it. You put <laughs> fat on it first, stupid, with a paintbrush. Of course, yeah, with a paintbrush. Oh, yeah, see, you learn something every day, don't you? <laughs> yep. Right, right, you're taking on new stuff. Yeah. No, I'm just having a tea break. All oh, right. Uh, listen, I think that was a bit of a hint, so uh, cheers, pal, and uh, get yourself another tea. Give us a fried egg sandwich, will you? Right, fried egg sandwich. You have a visitor last night, Don? Yes, I flaming did, two of them. Vera and Maud. Turning into a peep show, our house. But our pal knows the secret of things that go bump in the night. What's that? Uh, take the notice. Fella, he's got a ghost in his house. Well, Vera Duckworth thinks I have. I don't. Oh, it won't be a ghost. There'll be a simple explanation. Yeah, well, I wish you'd tell her that. Right. But uh, I'll have to stay the night. <laughs> what? Uh, you know about these things, here? Oh, certainly. I, and I've always found there's a rational explanation. But uh, I live in hope. How about tonight? Sounds like enough you can't refuse, Don. Uh, do it better, mate. Uh, thanks, Des. <laughs> That's it, Ta. Thanks very much, love. Come on, Daniel. Shall we see those animals? Oh, now I've placed you. It's Daniel, isn't it? Ken's Daniel. Yeah. Well, and Denise's, of course. Don't, I 
thought I'd seen you going into Ken's house. This is Mavis. She lives across the road. The house with the twitching curtains. Rita. Not to mention the glint in binoculars. Oh, take no notice of her. I'm the childminder. Oh, that's lovely. What do you mean, lovely? We're a letdown, more like. She thought she'd unearthed a scandal of the century. <laughs> oh, no such thing. Very <laughs> lovely, it is. Oh, we're just going to the park. Oh, we are. Hang on a minute and we'll come with you. Ah. Just get these. Thank have you. you met Kelly? She used to be in Ken's class at school, didn't you? Oh, she was telling me some right stories. <laughs> what about that one about the shaving floor? <laughs> oh, you haven't. Go on, tell him or else I'm going to. You will not. <laughs> All right, see you, Ethan. See you. Bye. I think Ken will rue the day. Why do you say that? Well, she's hardly the soul of discretion, is she? Oh, come on, Mavis. You used to have a sense of humour. What do you mean, used to? Do you remember when we all went to Mallorca? You had a sense of humour then. Mallorca? Okay. That was years ago. Before I was married. Well, you said it, not me. Yes, love? Um, I was just wondering if I could have a word. With me? Of course you can. What's it about? It's just about what we were talking about this morning. Hey, I'm, I'm going to take my lunch mm -hmm. now. Uh, belong on the coat. OK. The bag. <laughs> See you later. Right. Do you know, I can't remember what I did say. Um, about me buying the lease. That's right, yes. Yes, I think it's a very good idea. Did you want me to write a reference for you for the bank? Well, I've already phoned the bank, you see, and they say there's not really enough time to get it all sorted out because Denise is in a hurry. You're not asking me for the money? Well, that depends. On what? Well, on, on whether you think I'm a good investment or not. You are asking me for the money. Well, it'd be more of a loan, wouldn't it? I mean, I'd be paying interest and everything. Listen, lady, it'll be nothing of the sort. What have I said? What have you said? <laughs> Can I not make an innocent word of encouragement without it being taken as an offer of money? What do people round here take me for? Some silly old biddy with more money than sense. Look, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. I mean, look, it's just a misunderstanding. Uh, forget that I asked you. Yeah, well, that's easy to say, isn't it? It's too late now, cos now I'm cast as the guilty party. Look, I didn't mean to offend you. Well, you should have thought of that before you came in here. If the bank won't lend you the money, I'm damned if I know why I should. Or anyone else come to that? Management to the shop floor of every one of our suppliers. Now, since Quebec has committed itself to Europe, we know that success depends on maintaining that quality. If you can guarantee the quality, the delivery, and the price, we'll have a deal. And Quebec will guarantee the sales. Quebec into Europe means one thing, success. Well, thank you. Not that my beloved husband will notice. Oh, Mr. Holt was home this weekend, then, is he? Yes, tonight. Oh, so, brother, his income for is loaded. Oh, well, I'll leave you to it. Oh, Good luck. Bye bye. Bye then. See you later. Well, did you like the flat then? No. You can go on your dinner now. Oh, it's all right. I'll stay in. Maxine! Uh, can you do that later? Well, is he going to lend you the money or what? I think he will. He's got a kind face. See you then. Bye. Bit forward. Yeah, tactless as well. All you need. So, why didn't you come to me before going to the bank? Well, it's a lot of money, isn't it? I mean, I don't even know if you've got it, do I? I thought you said Friday was supposed to be the busiest day of the week. Start without a doubt. So I've heard. And there is nowhere better for skiing in the Swiss Alps. Well, I have to take your word for it. No, thanks. Actually, it would be a great shop window for Quebec. Stephen and I may be going out later on in the year. We could put some feelers out for you. Why not? Good idea. By the way, Carrie was very impressed earlier. She came over to our place to give it the once-over. 
Uh, we tend to cater for the younger area of the market, uh, much the same as Quebec does. We feel it's our strong point. I mean, if we don't know our own age group, then who else does? Well, I take your point. Couldn't agree more. Listen, uh, don't rush off. I'd like to catch up with you later. Right. Well, I like him. I think he's very nice. Yeah, and I think he's a man that goes by his instincts as well. Is that good or bad? It's good for us. Not so good for Mike Baldwin, though. I'm not sure about her. Carrie, she's in the back. What was all that? Young Vicky knows her way around the Alps. If you believe everything she tells you. Well, why shouldn't I? Because to read their company profile, you'd think they were running a multinational. I called in at their premises this morning. And by the way, that big order Steve was trying to impress us with? He wasn't on his own. He went to Mike Baldwin. Yeah, you see, he's very disappointed not to be here. But you know, when you've been ex-mayor, not just the once, but twice, you're in such demand. Committees, conferences, the lot. Oh, drinks, yeah, over here, Lord, please. Be with you in a minute, ma'am. Oh, <laughs> did you hear that, ma'am? They treat you like royalty, these waitresses, don't they? <laughs> I didn't think it was funny, I'd throttle the woman. <laughs> oh, lovely. Stephen, Stephen, love it. My son, come and meet these lovely people. I have been talking about your stepfather, the ex-mayor of Weatherfield, OBE. Uh, <laughs> Mrs Roberts, could I just uh, pick your brains for a minute? Oh, excuse me, my daughter's business partner, dear. What is it? Nothing. I was just trying to rescue you from those terrible people. Oh. I was quite enjoying myself, actually. Mm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, if you don't make your way through to the Duxbury Suite, oh. uh, luncheon is ready to be Lovely. served. Thank you. Oh. I thought you'd be cooking your husband a meal. Well, I would, but he's just phoned he's not coming back till tomorrow night now. Oh, hardly worth coming at all. Well, thank you, Emily. Oh, no, I didn't mean... Oh, why does everybody take everything I say the wrong way? Yeah, right. Well, it, no, it's just something to keep on the right side of the child mind, you know, like uh, fruit juice. You don't sell chocolate, do you? Chocolate? We're not a supermarket, you know. No, I've got sandwiches. No, uh, I'll have a, a couple of orange juices, only keep the tops on. All right. Okay. Well. Oh, hi. I went to go see Denise yesterday. Really? Yeah. She's on the move. She didn't say where, but I figure out of the area. Just thought you might want to know. Oh. Oh, thanks for telling me. Well, well. Hey, Ella. Hey, why can't come and sit with you? Because you'll distract him. Honest. Did he say that? No, I did. Just stay there, will you? You know what? You'd be better off working for someone else. Smart seller, middle of Manchester. Well, what's wrong around here? Oh, good tippers, are they? Well, not really. Any of these your customers? Yeah. Yeah, there's Mrs. Holsworth over there, mm -hmm. uh, Mrs. Duckworth. You did her in? Yeah, I know, it's per se. What? Do I give you a good haircut or not? Sometimes. Well, so much for the reference. Thank you, Mr. Sugden. I'm just telling the truth. You're cheap, I'll give you that. Oh, oh listen, um, before you ask, I still haven't got that money for you yet. Well, what beer give you a few extra shifts? Well, it's not as easy as that, is it? I've got a couple of essays to write by Monday. Well, you'd best get on with them, then. I'm going for a drink. Right. See you. See you later. Oi! Fried bread! You fancy a pint? Who? Me? I never thought you could be so heartless, Don Brennan. No wonder she run after that nunnery. I resent that, Vera. I don't care, it's true. There you go. That's her there. I don't want to disappoint you. I'm quite happy to stay the night. You are? <laughs> you see, 99.9% .9 of sightings are negative. It's the other 0.3 that interests me. What time do you want me to come round? Uh, look, uh, let's leave it for tonight. Uh, if we need your help, we'll, we'll get in touch. The offer's there. You'll not be the first satisfied customer. <laughs> Where did you find him? Makes <laughs> great fried bread, though, don't you, Don? Oh, I'm glad you think he's funny, Daz. 
Right, what you gonna have? Let me get these, Mike. Mum, what do you have? Oh, right. oh, so you are talking to me then? Of course I am. Yeah. Yes, well, I got the impression that you thought I was in the way. Nonsense, you've been a tower of strength. Oh. Uh, yeah. Okay. I'll be there in half an hour. Sorry, gotta go. Okay. Come on. <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, nice club. Yeah, it's all right. At least people know who you are. My local's full of underage kids playing machines and smoking dope. At least you got a life here. Look, don't pretend that you're jealous because I don't believe you. Okay, so I'm on good money. But do you think I really want to sit up after night with some internet anorak who's pressed the wrong key? I'm just saying people are friendly around here. So why should I move to some posh salon in the middle of Manchester then? I don't know. But it was your idea, not mine. OK, I'll give you a year. Pay me back in a year. Do you think you can do it? I will do my best. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, Lee. Thanks. I've got a good name for it. Hasn't everybody? Oh, listen. Curl up and die. No. I've already thought of a name for it. Hair by Fiona Middleton. <laughs> you know what? We've become a laughing stock. Uh, well, don't blame me. I don't. I blame Vera. But it's going to stop. And I tell you, I'm not having him stopping the night. I don't fancy him in the house. Yeah, just leave it with me. I'll sort this out. Is the jury still out? Well, it's not been an easy decision, Mike. There have been a lot of competitive tenders, but if you're sure you can deliver what you've promised... Yes, I can, I can. Congratulations. Oh. What do you mean, I've got it? You got it. Hey, that's great, Alma. <laughs> we are in. Fair, oh. another round, please. All right, look. Listen, uh, I appreciate all the support you give me while I've been here. Cheers, Mother. Oh, sweetheart. And uh, I'll be honest, it's been a big day, but there's a certain person who's helped me through it. And uh, I'm sure Mike won't mind me thanking her. This guy's a lucky man. Alma, I think you're wonderful. Sorry. Not at all, not at all. I knocked before. You must have been out the back. Ah, yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, Father Baines, is it? It is indeed. Big arm. Yeah, well, better come in then. Oh, so you found him then? Thank you and God bless you, my daughter. Right, you. If I saved myself, I think I could have had a vocation, either for the altar or the stage. No, we're not doing this for laughs. It's the only way to be done with this nonsense. Well, I thought it was strictly suppliers and retailers. Oh, you're miffed, are you, because I'll be there? Of course not. Why, then? Nothing. You don't think I should be there? Now, did I say that? She said it. Good job you haven't got a picture of him in his school cap, or I should be showing everybody that. Yeah, well, I'm not likely to have a picture of him in his school cap, am I? Anyway, you're going. Uh, so, what are you wearing? Ooh, little black dress and a matching gag, in case I embarrass anyone. Omnibus, minibus, minibus, omnibus, and a turn now. Omnibus, minibus, minibus, omnibus, trolleybus, and a turn now. Pro Giorgio Armani et Semper, et Semper Armani Vobisco. Yeah. How long have you been lapsed? It's years since the day, Martin. When I was an altar boy, I was all we knew. That's right, it's the only language for talking to a ghost. Tempest fugit in minibus. <coughs> Nintendo in omnibus. Armani at Semper. 
Hello. Hiya. We're in here, love. Right, are you uh, coming into town then? No, I'll leave it. Well, I thought you wanted to go down to that wine bar, see if they've made the mind up about the job. Well, I'll give it a miss. Hey, I uh, don't suppose you found 50 quid in the street and paid your rent, did you? No, I didn't. <sighs> Tell you what, Don Brennan's got some priest or something out there blessing his house. Oh, I wish somebody would come and bless my house. I could do with some luck. <laughs> Never mind, Don Brennan. There's 50 quid. Square yourself up. Oh, Mum, I don't want this. Look, I'd sooner you owed it to me than to Des, OK? OK. I owe you 50 quid, right? Oh, and, uh, Thanks. Andy, don't mention it to your dad. I mean it. OK. See you later. See you. Bye. See you, love. Is it not chuck him out on street? Mm, well, that's not the point, is it? Oh, well, what's 50 quid between friends these days? Yeah, but uh, what if your husband happens to think you're a bit more than friends? And what if your husband happens to be right? Well, you and Des? You know. No. But we could have. It was the way we were heading. So we both said, you know, it's going to be a right mess, is this? So that's why I left the job. And Des made it look like you were giving me my cards. Oh, well, you did right, the pair of you. I mean, living on the other side of the street. Yeah, well, it never got to anything. Well, hardly anything. Trouble is, Jim knows that's why I left the job. Oh, how does he? Because some idiot told him. Oh, for pity's sake, who? Me. Oh. I thought he'd know if I told him that there were, like, no future to it, nothing for him to worry about. But, of course, he won't be rational about it. Well, jealousy isn't very rational. Very logical, though. Is it? Well, you convince somebody's leaving you, you get jealous, right? Go moody, start behaving peculiar, don't believe anything they say. Even spying on them. So very soon, they will be thinking about leaving you, won't they? So you were right all along. Funny logic, but logic. Oh, Liz. Hello, Vera. Uh, is everything all right? Because I saw a priest coming and I thought, you know, you might be having a bit of trouble. Uh, is it still here? So do you want me to come back later, you know, when you're finished doing your, uh, bits and bobs? Uh, look, uh, just step in. Uh, father, uh, this is Mrs Duckworth, Father, uh, a very good friend of Ivy's that I told you about. A pleasure to meet you, Mrs Duckworth. It's good to meet any friend of the departed on these occasions. Yeah, well, we were next door machinists, you know, for years. So you could say that I was a friend of the departed. Well, let us hope, Mrs. Duckworth, we can now truly call her the departed. Let us hope. How do you mean, Father? Uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't uh, say it to anyone, is there, Father? Well, there's no theological reason, uh, Mr. Brennan, and no, it's up to you. Do you mean that... Uh... Father Baines has been here doing the business, Vera. Uh, being uh, unquiet, you know. No creature of God, Mrs. Duckworth, is so deserving of our prayers as an unquiet soul. Doing the business. How do you mean? Uh, well, you can tell it better than me, Father. Uh, well, uh, people uh, use the word exorcism. Well, I don't myself. I prefer to say that we uh, intercede for the deceased and with prayers and um, other things. We release the soul from the last of its earthly ties. I know that you are aware of the reasons for this. Oh, Father, I'm so glad. I am so glad. Because that's all I've needed, you know, an helping hand to the other side. Uh, Mr Brennan put it that way himself many a time. Yes, well, you can tell. Well, I can, because I'm very sensitive, you know. I was the first one. I was the first one she appeared to, weren't I? Only you didn't believe me, but you do, don't you, Father? Well, I'm no sceptic, Mrs Duckworth. <laughs> and that's your religion speaking? Well, it was me that called it, Vera. Yeah, well, you did the right thing. Oh, I, I can tell. It's been lifted. She's gone to the right abode. Anyway, if you pop in the rovers later, there's some hot pot waiting for you. Extremely kind. Well, just a little thank you on Ivy's behalf, you know. Oh, yes. You can tell. Oh, yeah, the, the light's coming. Oh. 
Had you my old mate who fled the blinder. <laughs> Hallelujah! <laughs> On the house. Best stop for in Lancashire. Mm -hmm. Extremely kind. Well, you need it, do you? It takes a lot of energy out of your thing like that. Strictly speaking, I've been told to give it up on health grounds, but with Mr Brennan being a particular friend... Well, I feel a lot easier in my mind, and I'm sure you must do, Dan. I should have said no. Well, you can't spurn charity. That would be to deny the woman a source of grace. Somebody said they saw him doing round the door with holy water and that, you know. Well, they would do, wouldn't they? It must be exciting all off your own bat. Good for you. Do you not think I'm mad, then? <sighs> no, who thinks that? People. The laugh. Why? Because people would sooner be shot at than laughed at. They just think you're the same sort you'll chicken out. <gasps> but why do they want you to chicken out? Oh, I don't know. Probably just want company at the bottom of the heat. You see, I bet the first tadpole that tried to hop about and be a frog, I bet all the other tadpoles laugh. Tadpoles turn into frogs. The, well, that's what they do. Oh, yes. Now they know it's a good idea. I should watch it there. I happen to know she's a Catholic. Weren't we all once upon a time? Which one's that? The one you were eyeing up. They're both gorgeous. What do you say we cop off with the two of them, huh? Hell book and candle. What? Well, mind you, the candle were just for light, presumably. Uh, same as a light bulb. Only in the olden days, they'd have had a candle. I expect it was so they could read the book if it were dark. Are you the priest? Are you a Catholic priest? No, I always think a priest is a priest, like a fish is a fish. The flavour of the sauce is uh, another matter entirely. I'm just going to write that down, what you said, if you, if you don't mind. Right, come on, let's jump on, then. Here, listen, Molly, what do you reckon? You manage on your own this afternoon? What? Well, now with that lintel and sure, it's a one-man job. Yeah, for an ambidextrous contortionist. Look, there's just something I would want to do, all right? It's not this business with the missus, is it? I thought I might go down to the wine bar, just put an appearance in, just to see, all right? For what? Just to see? Jim, you're in two partnerships here. You're going the right way oh, to bust sure. up both of them. Because uh, it's a subject that Bear's going into, you know. Exorcism uh, uh, and and associated phenomena. Uh, not so what we talk about. The paranormal, uh, and I say that as someone who's entirely rational. Uh, I take a rational view. Ah uh, well, ration it to somebody who wants to know. Eh? There's very few cases where you get the full five canonical indications. Uh, th there is no phenomenon normally. Uh, just what you'd put in the category of uh, a reported phenomenon. Ninety-nine times out of a hundred. Actually, uh, point three times out of a hundred, as I said to Mr. Brennan. Although, uh, interestingly enough, the figure is significantly higher in Scotland. I I I've looked into it. Ah, well, we don't need to look into it any more, then, do we? I'm interested that you've found all the canonical indications in this case. These are matters we do not inquire into, Mr. Cropper. Do you understand me? I don't always. Be because you've got the canonical rules, haven't you? You can't have an exorcism unless the indications are present. How can I put this to you, Mr. Cropper? Before there's any question of the exorcism being carried Mr. out... Mr. Cropper, would you take your rules and your indications and when you've stuffed them in your plastic bag, I tell you where you can stick them? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I understand. I, I understand. In fact, I, I, I could write down the indications just so I've got the details in my record. Jim, you're going by me. I'm off back to the job. If you don't want to come, fair enough. Start looking for somebody else. You're a most interesting man, Mr. Cropper. We must meet again some dark night. Dark night. You're right. He's not finished his hot pot. Well, what do you want me to do? Bring your far? Oh, oh well, yes, please. Thank you. 
just don't do it. Just don't about it, all right? Just do go. <sighs> You're early. Oh, no, we're late. I haven't even had a chance to change. It was my fault. I might get in the stick for it, but don't worry. She's going to put her glad rags on the ladies' loo. <sighs> well, don't do that. Use my room, 255. Oh, no, I couldn't, really. There's two sets of towels and one of me, and I never use a shower cap. Oh, well, that, that really is very kind. Can you take the ladies' uh, bag up to 255? Of course, sir. Well, we might be as well off, eh? Who says that, then? Baldwin. It says they're completely one-sided contracts. They've got the right to crucify you, basically. And if they do break it, they just say, Suze. So it costs you a fortune with time and money. It doesn't get you anywhere. And it takes forever to get around to paying you anyway, then. Sounds like exactly what we're doing now, only in larger numbers. <sighs> oh! Does anybody know whose bag this is? I've just snagged my tights on. Flamey Norris, the juju bag. So you've been round the uh, four corners, have you? Uh, yes, and I've squared it with my friends. Ah, so you're coming in at the right angle. <coughs> um, so uh, what's your line of business then, Arthur? Flow rate calibration equipment, mainly. Oh, yes. And does that fit in with this trade? Oh, you'd be amazed. You know, they've got some of our equipment installed at Buckingham Palace. Really? I was there myself, you know, a few weeks ago. I never saw it. Now, let's sit down. Um, so what exactly is it? It's found another. Another what? Another square dealer. Why they bother with all the rigmarole? I don't know. I mean, I can spot them the minute I walk <laughs> in. Yeah, I know what you've been saying, but what I'd like to know between grown-ups is, what's your make or break period? Well, we really don't have a frame around that. Globally, yes, but it's a different question for each market. Yeah, but I'm talking about your market share a year from now. What would make you pull the plug? In the UK? Uh, we're not going to pull the plug. Uh, we're looking down the line here. We're not interested in cross ties. Why? Are you worried about what you're going to do with all those overmakes? Let me fill your glass. Excuse me. I, uh, I think I envy you. <laughs> Why's that? Well, I doubt you've ever been called a little woman. <laughs> well, I doubt it, too. They'd be dead in a ditch. <laughs> can, I, uh, can I ask you something about Stephen? Why? Why, it's just that you two seem to have so much in common. Yeah, the business, and he's good company, but I get enough of it. Still, I do know what other women see in him. <laughs> you didn't lose my key, did you? No, 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 I've got it here. Actually, it's all right. Uh, keep it. You might need it for uh, getting changed later or whatever. So, did you, uh, did you go down to that wine bar? Uh, no, not in the end. It's funny. I thought you were keen. Well, yeah, but I can't get anybody to give me a straight answer. You ring up and they say, oh, he's out. It'll be, it'll be ten minutes. So then you ring back again and you find you're saying the same thing all over again to somebody different. <laughs> so, in the end, you think, I'm making a right fool of myself here. Yeah. Yeah, well, I know how that feels. So you didn't go, then? No, I've said I didn't. <sighs> Still. Had a wee bit of luck. A little double come up. Oh. Fifteen quid. There was fifty quid in here last night. I gave it to Andy. <laughs> you gave it to Andy? He needed it for his rent, he were behind. He needed it for his rent. You gave it to Andy for his rent so he can give it to Dates? In the name of God, Liz. Here's me thinking I'll, I'll save up a few quid for an army reunion with my pals, the only muckers I had in my life, and you give the money to Andy so he can give it to your fancy man. Do you want your son owing him? 
Do you? I know how you feel. So do you want your son owing him money? That is why I took it. Oh. Would you sooner I give him a wink, eh? Off. So he'd say, never mind, Andy. Would you like that better, Jim? Would that suit you? Think about it. Just think. Yes, I am thinking and I don't like what I think. No, me! That's why I took the money! Is it this? Is that what this is all about? Keep it! Look, Des said it's OK. I can give it him when I'm straight, so... You tell Des there's his rent. Well, go on, tell him! Look, I've told you, leave it. I'll give it to Don. Odds on there's a mucky book in here. Do you know, you're sacrilegious, you are. Yeah, and you're too fond of rooting through other folks' bags, so leave it. It'll be his requisites, won't it? What requisites? Well, for doing the business, you know, the kit like, for doing all the ectoplasm and that. Just a plastic bag, a book, a flask, and one of these here things, isn't it? Look, told you, shut it up, it's not oh. to do. What have you done? You? What have you done, you mean? You've got to broke it. <sighs> I've had one of these, and it were all it's a way, and you broke it. Yeah, well, the, the bit's come off the end, hasn't it? The bit with little Jesus on oh. it. I didn't see where it went. It's gone. Oh, no, winter's only a problem in the spring. The world turns briefly to mud. Uh, winter's a lot of fun. Lots of blue skies. I wish I was seeing more of it. <laughs> I wish I was seeing more of it as well. Nothing going for a qualified nurse out there, is there? Oh, I would say. Uh, don't encourage him. Oh, why not? Yeah, why not, eh? <laughs> well, think about the kids. Hey, kids in Canada, believe me, they got the keys to the kingdom. Uh, oh. See? The taxi's in half time. Uh, cab's here. Yeah, well, my wife isn't, but that's not unusual. No, she went upstairs. Well, if she's not down in a couple of minutes, I'll go and chivvy her off. Yeah, do that. In the meantime, anyone want another? Uh, better not. Making a cup of cocoa. Feel my hands. Go on. Give feel over. Them. Give over. They're like ice. Just like the what first time. Oh, come on, V. She's here. I went up to put the blanket on and my blood went cold. I tell you, she's here. Oh, now, come on. According to you, she was at the Brennan's. Was. She was. Right. And then we had the priest in to give her the marching orders. Yes. And then you went fiddling through that bag and you brought the chain. I have done note. I don't think you know what you've done. You don't, but I'll tell you that I do. She's here! Who is it? It's me, Stephen. <laughs> I, um, had to come up and get this thing. I need a... Quick session on the laptop with Carrie. Oh, the computer. I had strange visions of you and Carrie then. <laughs> <laughs> Can I say something? Hmm? I mean, you really did a good job for us. It's appreciated. Well, it's nice to be told. Well, I, uh, I'm a very satisfied customer. Not that I think I can send much work you away from Toronto, but uh, you can quote me. Oh, don't go on. <laughs> Till next time. Oh, so you will be coming back then? Sure. Sometime. Whenever. I'm glad. Because it's been really... It's been really nice getting to know you. I mean, you're just so different from all the other people I meet around here. You know, business people that Mike knows. Well, they're all so... And you're not. Well, I'm glad it meets with your approval. <laughs> not being whatever it is I'm not. You must think I'm daft. No, I don't. It's just that, uh, well, I don't think I meet a lot of people quite like you. Till next time. And I don't think I've ever met anybody quite like you. Oh. 
up to you. <sighs> I have to say that's really taken me by surprise. <sighs> I'm not really sure what the next move is here, but uh, <laughs> I go that way, not that look, way. I know, I know. Uh, look, I just, um, I, I, look, I just, just, just don't want to. Listen, I don't no, think no, we should finish no, it please, like this. Please, please, I don't want to. Uh, Come on, this I, is a please, really bad no, way to, look, to, to look, end uh, this. Look, because look, I'm just it's... going, and you won't, you won't have to see. I'm just. <laughs> Stephen? What is it? What do you want? Uh, nothing, nothing, but... I'll see you downstairs. Yeah. I haven't thanked you, have I? What for? All your efforts on my behalf, being nice to Steve and doing all the catering, it could have been that that swung it. So, thank you. You're welcome. Do you know, there hasn't been a day go past in the last seven years I haven't regretted selling that factory. Oh, I had the time of my life running that place. Apart from marrying you, of course. Now I get the chance to do it all again. Only this time, get it right. Make some real money. Do you want a lift? Oh, I was thinking of not going in. Why? What's the matter? Well, I just don't feel 100%. I think I'm still recovering from last night. I mean, when you think what an exorcism is... Oh, fear. Well, it's a throwing out, isn't it? Can't be very nice. And that's what they've done to Ivy. They've chucked her out of her own home onto the street. Now, Luke, I thought you were all in favour of it. I thought you told me it would, they'd released her. Yeah, well... There's a bit of a difference between releasing and wanting rid. I mean, I'm not surprised Ivy would want to settle in here. Oh, come on, you're not still trying to give us that one, are you? Yes, well... I'm only telling the truth, cos Ivy's here, I'm telling you. Look, I hope you're not going to be talking like this in front of customers. I'll talk how I like. Oh, will you? And I'll tell you what they'll think, shall I? They'll think you're barmy. And who the heck wants to drink in a pub where the landlady is barmy? Morning, Betty Lowe. Good morning, love. Ah, Betty Lowe. Um, uh, shall I go and make a start in the kitchen? Yeah, and then we'll have a cup of tea when we're finished okay. dinner. Hey, and who wants to work in one, either? because you're going to be losing your staff as well as your customers. Well, it's made me see one thing different. What's that? Ivy being here. Oh, they're crying out loud. It has. I wonder what she'd think, eh? She could see me up at 7 o'clock every morning, cooking, cleaning, waiting on till 11 o'clock at night. Well, I know what she'd say. She'd say, slow down, Vera. Slow down, or else you're going to work yourself into an early... You know what? Well, that'll be all right. You'll be able to go on soon together, then, won't you? Well, we're getting a cleaner. Cleaner? Look, we've talked about it. And now I've seen it through Ivy's eyes, I know that's what we need. Of course, everything falls into place now. I mean, do you remember when we were having that photograph taken and she suddenly arrived and whisked Stephen away? It's probably been going on since he set foot in the country. If that happens, it has but got nothing to do with us, love. Look, can I remind you, please, Al, he's my son, Stephen. And Alma's my best friend. Oh, wow. Just running out of that room. And that's the that happened. Just get in. Do you think this is my to take? Oh, a couple of hours. They get a bit long-winded in Rochdale. Yeah, well, then it's straight back here. Not standing in round admiring the town hall. She ran to say she's not well and she's not coming in. Well, nothing she ate last night, I hope. Well, it's only affected her. Probably more to do with what she drank last night. You think? Oh, oh, I don't know. I'm just being nasty because I don't fancy running this place on me own all day. And when she rang, this was what? From home, was it? I mean, why would anybody in his right mind want to go with me Baldwin anyway? I don't know. Well, let's just hope it fails and bankrupts the both of them. Morning. Morning. <sighs> Stuff. Well, of course, you know what's going to be the next thing, don't you? Well, he's going to walk us out the print shop, isn't he? He's going to want the premises for himself. No. <laughs> you want a bed? Listen, I'm slipping across to the cabin. Get him to put a card in, Wendy, you know, for a cleaner. What do you think? Two hours a day? It's up to you. But don't start on about Ivy's ghost. We'll never hear the last of it. Hey, Vera, we haven't got a ghost, have we? We have. They've chased her out of number five and she's landed up in here. Oh. Be back in a minute. 
Betty, love, don't go worrying herself. It's just some idea that she's going to her head. Nay, ghosts don't bother me, lovey. They can hoop and holler all the lack. I just ignore them. So do I. But you see, not everybody is as sensible as me and you, Betty. I mean, some folks, you, you mentioned a ghost, they're off like a shot from a gun, aren't they? <laughs> hey, there's this little pub that me and Billy visited, you know, in the Peak District. They had a ghost. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, a grey lady, she was called. She's supposed to have walked through the public bar every night at ten o'clock. <laughs> she cleared it, didn't she? Hey, <laughs> filled it more like. You know, you couldn't get through them doors, people trying to get a glance at her. Give over. Every night the same, I'm telling you. Right, that's 40 pence, thanks. Look, he's not going to have any appetite for his dinner after that. This is his dinner? Oh, really? No, only joking. Oh. <laughs> there, thanks. thanks. Gets a bag of Chris for his dinner. <laughs> I think that says it, doesn't say it? I think it does, Vera. Well, I must say, I wouldn't want any child of mine being looked after day by day by some chit of a girl. Chit of a girl? Well, a young girl. I mean, she can't be more than, what, 18? A pound is there. That's right, love. I'll put it in straight away. Well, if there's any inquiries, send them straight across. I will. Chit of a girl. <gasps> Long time since I heard that. Well, wouldn't you be worried if it was your child? Well, I believe she's a qualified nursery nurse. And anyway, there's plenty of young girls her age with little kiddies. What are you going to do about them? Take them off them? Can't answer that, can you? Anybody home? Hiya. Hi. Hello, have you come to keep your mum company? Uh, no, I haven't. I've come to pay my debts. You know the one my dad threw a wobbler about the other night? Yeah, well, if that's why you're paying it back, I don't want it. In fact, I won't have it, so you're wasting your time. I am not going to be the cause of you two falling out all the time. So you are having it back, and there it is. Thank you. Anyway, yeah. Uh, how come you can afford it? Where's all this come from? Er, uh, student loan. Oh, Andy. Well, everyone else has got one. Yeah, but you're only shifting your debt from us to them. You've still got to pay it back. To a bank, yeah. Banks don't have reunions that they're saving up for, do they? And banks don't give their wives a hard time when they lend it out. And banks don't give you a hug either. <laughs> come here. <laughs> Ooh. Now, listen, have you had some dinner? Let me make you something to eat. Er, uh, no, I'm all right. Oh, come on, I'll just make you a sandwich. Salad with mayonnaise, your favourite. All right, then, go on. Great. Only, er, uh, can I use the phone? Yeah, help yourself. Excellent. Moment. Yes, in the kitchen, man. Hello, the firm is freezes. Curly. Oh, hello, Andy. Yeah. Oh, you've got your answer in the phones as well, haven't they? <laughs> Might as well. I do everything else around here. Actually, it's, um, well, it's Anne I wanted a word with. Is she around? Phone call for Miss Anne Malone. Please come to the office. So, there you are. You can put it back in your jar for next week. Must be, what, 30, 40 pints in that? Well, why in the name of God did he get a student loan in the first place, save all this bother? Well, I don't suppose he thought it'd cause a lot of bother. I suppose he thought his parents might be quite happy to help him. Hello? Hi. You're gonna get me sacked. Why? Why? He says when the manager, my immediate superior, has to call me to the office to tell me I've got a personal phone call during office hours. Well, Kelly didn't say all that, did he? Well, no, he just said he wanted to speak to me, but I knew what he was thinking. Well, it's not as if he's never had any uh, personal phone calls during working hours, is it? Well, if he does, he makes sure that not everybody else knows about it anyway. I haven't got time to talk about that now. What did you ring for? Oh, yeah. Um. <clears throat> Can I take you out tonight? Go for a meal or something. See you, son. See ya. Er, uh, yeah, all right. Gail, is Alma not here? No, she isn't. She's not well. I won't be well either if I have to do much more of this. We need to rush back after all, you see. What about Stephen? Have you seen him? He was in this morning as well, also asking after Alma. You don't know where he'd be now? No, ma'am, do you mind? I've got meals to serve. And very good it smells and all. Hey, shall we have us dinner here? Cos I'm starving. No! Alf, look, please have enough to do. If you want to help, just go somewhere else. Oh, come in. Gail, um, said you're not feeling very well. 
Uh, no, the uh, last time I felt as bad as this, I was uh, 15. I just made a fool of myself over this lad I knew. Nobody told me that he was virtually engaged to this girl with perfect white teeth in her own car. <laughs> Alma, look, I want to apologize. Oh, you want to? I didn't mean oh, to look, sound Look, if there's so... any apologising to be done, it's me. Come on. It had been a long night and we'd both been drinking, but... Oh, I know. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had the courage. <laughs> what I mean is I'm sure neither of us intended what happened. Oh, no. Well, I must admit, I did have very different intentions. And I'm sorry I reacted the way I did. The truth was I just... I wasn't prepared. Well, of course not. I mean, you could hardly have expected to be propositioned by a woman the same age as your mother. Oh, now. Whose uh, husband you're about to go into business with. <laughs> I mean, it is ludicrous, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't burst out laughing. I just wish <laughs> I'd handled it better. Oh, well, you will next time. Um, what's, uh, what's Audrey said? I haven't seen her. Because she was there, you know. Yes, I know. And she will keep on till she gets a full story. Well, she won't be getting it from me. <laughs> so then, when are you leaving? Tomorrow. And uh, I'm sure I'll be seeing you soon, but um, I hope that's not a problem for you. Oh, it won't be. Well, I hope I'll see you uh, tomorrow before I go. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Okay, well, um, bye for now. And uh, as for last night, it never happened. <sighs> bye. Hiya. Hiya. Uh, a pint of bitter, Betty, please. Okay. Better have some food while I'm at it. Like I say, Willie, there's plenty of men round here with ideas in their heads and plenty of time in their hands, and there's my wife on her own in the house. But I thought you said your only was with her. Yes, well, as a matter of fact, he is. But they're not to know that now, are they? Come on, Jim, let's get out of here before you've had me as daft as oh, you are. Yes, Jim. All right, all right. Um, I'm just going to make a phone call. Who to? That, never mind. Would you get me a gin and tonic? Uh, I'll have a hot pot, Betty, okay, please. Go. Alf, my round. Oh, no, I'm getting some food in town. Oh, you're on a hot pot you want, because I'm getting the one for Des. Yeah, I'll have the two, though. I'll, oh, I'll eat her if you want it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I have a gin and tonic and a pint of bitter, please? OK, love. You're right. Yeah, no. Oh, hello, love. Oh, sorry to disturb you. Oh, you can disturb me all you like. That's why it's called a public house. You, you know you were talking about your friend uh, returning from the other side? I bet, yeah. I just thought you might like to borrow these. This is haunted houses in northwest England, including the Isle of Man. Oh. And this is a dictionary of ghosts and poltergeists, part one. I did have part two, but it seems to have disappeared. Oh, right, what's going on in there? Look, it's not to do with you. Thanks, love. I'll have a look at these when I get a minute. Now, can I get you a drink? Oh, no, thanks. I've got me shopping to do. And there's no hurry to let me have them back. Uh, oh. I know I'm nearly off by heart. Thanks, love. ta -ra. Bye. And none of your comments, either. You're only trying to be helpful. No, no, I, I, I was just thinking, Vera. Happen you're right. Happen Ivy hasn't moved in here. Well, you've changed your tune. But yes, yes, I know. But you see, you are more sensitive to these things than I am. It takes me longer to tune in, doesn't it? Have you felt a summer? Yes, I have. Definitely. Oh, no reply. Audrey. Oh, hi, No reply from who? Oh, I'm at home, so heaven knows what that means. Well, we don't need to talk about that just now, do we? We'll have to go to Stephen's hotel. I mean, he's bound to turn up there, even if we have to wait all night. There you are, love. Well, it. thanks, Peter. Oop, that'll you don't do. want that, I love it. Well, you've got over your hangover, then. Oh, girl, I am sorry. Look, you have a break, I'll take over now. Oh, so it was a hangover. If only. Mm. Well, I won't ask. I will take a break, though. I made a pass at Stephen. What? In his hotel room last night. <sighs> and he looked that disgusted. He, he practically threw me out. Oh, get okay. when am I going to grow up? But, I mean, nothing... Oh, it happened. No, I think he'd probably jump through the window if he'd had. <sighs> oh. Well, maybe it's just as well he's going back to Canada. Hmm. Bet he's not taking your mother with him. <sighs> you two seem busy. Soldier. 
You did. Told her what? That you might be coming round. Telling us how you'll uh, be chucking us out of it. Now, why would I want to do that? Come on. Because you need the premises for your new business. My new business? Oh, yeah, it's got to go somewhere. But I see that finding alternative accommodation is going to be a problem for you. I mean, there's the expense, the inconvenience. Nah, no, nah, it's, it's, it's not fair. You stay here, I'll find somewhere else. You're joking. No. So what's the catch? There is one. Oh, except in the future when you hear someone slagging me off, you stand up for me. You say my reputation is unfounded. I've really got a heart of gold. <sighs> Look, if this is a joke. No, it's no joke. I came here to tell you you could stay. Now, do you want to? Of course we do. Good. Then stay. Enjoy. I think that's right. Thanks very much, love. Hey, you'll be coming quite a regular. Well, we go for a walk in the morning and another one in the afternoon. He likes to keep an eye on what's going on. Oh, I'll bet he does. No harm in that, is there? Two walks a day? Why ask me? Well, I thought you were our resident childcare expert. No. Oh, sorry, I got mixed up. I'll see you, love. Okay. Ta-ra. Oh. I'm not denying that she might be good at it. Oh. No, I mean, she might be very conscientious, but all I'm saying is, should she be the one doing it? Well, who else? Well, the mother or the father. The father's out at work, mother's run off. Oh, well, perhaps she should have taken the baby with her. Hello, Derry. <laughs> I finished early. Oh. Hello, Derry. Well, there's all sorts of things she should have done. I mean, like not having it in the first place. Oh, well, I'm glad you agree with me. But she did have it, so what's the point in talking about should? What matters is dealing with what is. Oh, so we're not allowed to use the word should. Everybody can do exactly what they like, can they? Is that what I just said? Uh, well, I... I didn't know you were so liberal. Well, it shan't be for much longer. Well, I thought I'd get home. Make an early start to the weekend. <laughs> I just have to wait here till he arrives. And then what? What are you going to say to him? Do you know? Yes, I'm going to say... I'm very concerned about what I witnessed last night. Yeah, and he'll say, well, you needn't, because he's got nothing to do with you. Oh, I think we have a closer relationship than that of. Anyway, I think he might be happy to confide in somebody. Mm. wonder if we can get a cup of tea. Oh, let's face it, though, it's obvious what's happened. I mean, Madam's made herself available, hasn't she? You fancy a sandwich if we can get one? No, no. I mean, you know what she's like. I mean, all three guys and butter wouldn't melt. Oh, poor lad, he wouldn't have stood a chance. They couldn't believe it. What's the catch, they said. No catch, I said. You can stay here. I'll find other premises. Oh, that was nice of you. Yeah, you see... You haven't been listening, have you? I've explained why it suits me to find new premises. Oh. I need somewhere bigger. But the new business, you get all sorts of grants, allowances. I mean, I'll save a fortune, but I haven't told them that. Oh, no. They think I'm letting them stay out the goodness of my heart. Oh, I see. Are you all right? You're not still suffering, are you? No, no, I, I, I just think I'm a bit tired, that's all. That's because you've been doing all the hard work keeping Stephen sweet. Now you can relax and leave it all to me, OK? Yeah. Oh, is he here? Stephen! Oh, come on, wake up. Hey. Stephen's what? here. Hi. You looking for me? Yes, yes, we were. Well, me, actually. Alf has just come to keep me company. Well, I hope you haven't had to wait too long. No, no, no. It doesn't matter anyway. I just thought you and me could have a little chance. Sure. You want to come up to my room? Yeah, I think that might be best. <coughs> Look, there's no need for you to come, Alfie. You can stop here. Go back to sleep. Oh, right. I'll, I'll collect the key. Easy. There you go. So what have you been doing today, then? Don't ask me about work. I didn't know I was. Not that it was all that bad, but it's not fair to you if it's all we ever talk about. What have you been doing? Oh, uh, two lectures and a seminar. Um, go on. What were the lectures about? Um. No, you saw it for yourself. I mean, she's on a very short fuse these days, is Rita. Well, you know why? There's no man in her life. Rita! Don't you think? Look, Rita can have anything she sets her mind on. She's got her freedom, she's got money, she's her own boss. <laughs> oh, she's what every woman envies. What does she want with a man? Well, just... I've no idea. Do you know, I've just been thinking there must be hundreds of folk that we could help. 
What are you on about? Ivy's ghost ending up here. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, it can't just be happening to us, can it? I mean, it must happen all the time, must not it? Spirits of old friends making a return visit. Probably does, yeah. Yeah, but then it happens to, you see, don't say now, dare they? I'll tell you why. Because they're scared. Scared of what folk might call them. Like you were calling me? Yeah, yeah, but I'm not doing this anymore, am I? You know what I was thinking, Mike? We should tell the press about Ivy. And then the story would get out, you see, and all them folk that thought they were alone with their experiences would be able to take comfort in knowing that the same thing has happened to us. When you say it press, do you make local paper? Not for starters, I. I you know what they're like. They'll just make out a big joke. No, no, they, no, they won't. No, no. Not when they know the church is involved, which it is, because you saw Father Rip Rap with your own eyes now, didn't you? That's what you've got to think about. Yes, Curly? Evening, Jack. Pint, please. Hello. All right, Curly. Evening, Mr. Watts. By the way, did you get a chance to look at my report on staff morale? <clears throat> yes, I did. And I thought it was very good. Written very, very well. Really? Yeah, there's one or two points that, uh, look, do you mind if I get my pint first? No, no, then come and sit down. Okay. You don't mind, do you? No. I think you can probably guess what this is about. Last night. Yeah, which I know is your business and you have a right to keep it private. It's just, Alma is an old friend. Look, Mum, can I just... I don't want to sound offensive, but you mustn't jump to conclusions. Well, I'm the last person to do that, Stephen. Even though circumstances make it very difficult not to. Look, Alma just came up to get her clothes. Now, she had to rush to get here, right? So she brought her clothes with her, and she used my room to get changed in. Oh. Do you know, this is very gallant of you, sweetheart. No, it isn't. Protecting the lady's honor? I'm protecting nothing. I'm just telling you the truth. Then why was Alma running away, looking all upset? And why did you practically slam the door in my face, hmm? Uh, before you answer, listen. I do know Alma. I know she can be very persistent. So I don't think I've come here to put all the blame on you, because I've not. You've come here to put the blame on Alma. Well. No. Even though I tell you the whole thing was totally innocent, so there shouldn't be talk of putting the blame on anybody. Well, it's difficult to deny the evidence of your own eyes, love. OK. You want to know what happened? If you want to. I made a pass at her. Alma was here getting her clothes. I'd been drinking. And I made a pass at her. So if you really want to blame somebody, blame me. And there's always the political angle. Political? Andy, can you get me another one of these, please? Yeah, sure. I mean, who's going to read your report and why did they ask for it? And get a drink for Mr Watts. Pint, Curly? Yes, please. Tidy, thanks. Right. I mean, I'm not telling you not to tell the truth or anything, but... Uh, two pints and a white wine and soda, please, Vera. right -o. Look, we could make it a condition that they either take it seriously or we don't even let them on the premises. How do you think Ivy's going to feel, eh? Seeing herself in pain? Oh, she'd love it. Come on, let's face it, it's better than being ignored or exercised, isn't it? But the main thing is, you see, how it's help other people. That's what you've got to think about. Yes. Pint, please, Jack, whatever these two are having. Oh, thank you. Uh, no, I'm all right, thanks, Des, no. All right, Maureen. Oh, a gin and tonic, please. Yeah, a gin and tonic, cheers, Jack. <laughs> so, how's business then, you and Jim? Good, yeah, we're doing all right, thanks. Yeah. Well, I've got to admire your mate, I'll tell you. Man who can turn his hand to anything. Me, can hardly fix a plug. Yeah, he's a very Jim. clever fellow, is Jim. I'm surprised he hasn't been a success in his own right by now. Well, he's been lucky in love, hasn't he? You know, what with Liz? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's very nice. She is, yeah. I feel as if I've been traipsing round all day. But you know, the more I think about it, just don't see how Stephen making a pass at her with another big sort of invitation. Look, you said you wanted to know what happened. Now, he's told you, so don't go twisting it into something else. No. Good evening, Vera. Evening, Alf. Uh, hang on a minute, I won't be long. Uh, go on, then, if you can. What? Tell papers. Only make sure they do it right. I will, love. I will, love. Two pounds for it. Leave it to me.
sure you want to have a cup of tea, Bill? No, thanks, love. It's a nursing home job. It's a 20-minute walk to the lav. And uh, time's running, isn't it? I no. wish it were for me. Aye. Right, you fit, Molly? I am, yeah. Look at the state of him. You haven't even washed behind your ears. Never mind, I had a shave. I'm not going for a job as a bank manager, Elizabeth. Well, yeah, but you don't want to frighten the old folk, do you? <sighs> Is that what you think of me? Come on, Tonto. Let's go. No, no, no. Hold your horses. So what are you up to today, then, hey? Down to the hairdressers, full pedicure, all that kind of stuff, eh? Is that it? Actually, I thought I might just sit here and look at wallpaper. <laughs> no, I'm waiting in for the electric man because I'm sick of these daft estimated bills. They're charging us like boys were still here. So you'll be here, then? Why? Are you planning on coming back? Hey, no, there's no chance of that. If we don't get finished today, we don't get paid. It'll be seven or eight before we're finished. <sighs> Shall I meet you in the Rovers, then? Yeah, yeah, that'll be nice. Come on, you. Hi. Hey, boss, is that paint up with you, Kev? Yeah, we'll get a move on, Tom. We'll be in for the eye jump if Baldwin catches us. Uh, never come between the woman and the slave, Kevin. I wouldn't dream of it, Jude. Look, I can manage out in the ladder if you want. Oh, OK, I'll get back to the garage. See you later. <laughs> See ya. See ya. Oh, out with the old, eh? Yeah, that's the idea. Oh, you going to have one of them fancy nail girls? Ooh, I've not really got round to that yet. Well, they're worth the expense, just in case you fancy setting up a chain of them, you know. I think I'll see if this one pays first. Oh, no, I don't do to start off without a bit of ambition. You see, even if life does sometimes disappoint, you have to have your dreams. You see, my gran always used to say, providing you've got a good pair of shoes, change of underwear and a warm winter coat and a pocket full of dreams, you can survive anything. Well, you can manage without the underwear. Yes, well, perhaps where you come from, but not where I was brought up. <coughs> good luck, Fiona. Ooh, she's a bit lardy da isn't she? She's never heard of fur coats and no knickers. Yes, gentlemen. Mr Duckworth? Aye, that's right, I'm. Charlie Figgis. This is uh, Gavin Taylor, our photographer. Oh, right, right. C -c Come in, gentlemen. It's a bit cold outside. I'll find you something to warm you up, eh? Well, thank you. Go through. And, uh, don't be worrying, cock. I'm not going to give you a cup of tea and, uh, and a biscuit. Because I've had some dealings with you gentlemen of the press before. I've been a bit of a media star myself, you know, at one time, huh? Had the Papa Watts, it's running all over me. What was that for, then? Ah, uh, Birdman of Weatherfield. Me. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> right, there you go. <laughs> oh, well. No, come on, get it down. There's no need to pretend we're me, you know. Hey, and, uh, there is a bottle of that stuff for each of you, if you manage to get it in the, uh, Weekend trade. Yeah. That's very nice, Mr. Duckworth. Jack, no, Jack, Jack. But that depends Jack. if there's a story. Yeah, very much so. Story? Probably a book and a film. Hang on, I'll go and get the missus. I'd have preferred a cup of tea. So you've painted me out then? Yeah, well, you're not here anymore, are you? No, no. Fair enough. In fact, that's why I'm here. I just wanted to see if you had any less questions or anything. Why are you leaving the country? Bran and I are going south. Right. I, I just didn't want to uh, end with any bad feelings. No, or... no, there's no bad feelings. I've, I've done all right out of this. I hope so. So, are we still friends? I don't know you anymore, Denise. I thought I did. I don't. Excuse me. Now then, what are you two up to? We're ghost hunting. Who's daft idea with that? Don't tell me. Let me guess. <laughs> so, you haven't seen this ghost that's haunting the place? Do you mean that thing that floats about doing nothing but moaning and groaning? Ah, oh, that's right. <laughs> I see that every day. Go oh, on, what's it look like oh, then? Take a photograph. It's standing in front of you. Morning, Jack. Betty. Would you like a nice cup of tea? Oh, I'd love no, one. No, no, no. That's a little bit, Betty, please. Really? Thank you. That's the wife. Be gentle with her. Very delicate subject. The whiskey's in the carrier bag. to take all day in there. Stephen will be halfway to Canada by the time we get to the airport. Oh, yeah. You wouldn't want us to wave farewell without a face on, would you, Audrey? No. I don't 
don't believe in all that rubbish, Martin. If you've treated your skin with respect, it shouldn't need half a ton of makeup on it before you set out. Oh, really? Yeah. Or the other one, Audrey. What did you say, Martin? Um, I'll have a bacon butty, please, Alma, before I put my chauffeur's hat on, eh? Right, love, it's on its way. Okay. Alma? Yeah? You're not coming to wave Stephen off? Well, I'm not family, am I? Alma, he has told me. Sorry? Look, Stephen and I haven't got any secrets. He's explained to me what happened. Has he? Oh, do you know he's terribly ashamed, but come on. It was a big night for him. I mean, business success, lots of champagne. I'm not trying to excuse him, and in no way is he trying to excuse himself. I mean, he should never have made a pass at your love. I mean, it was absolutely disgraceful, but... Well, to be honest, I mean, it is out of character for him. Is that what he told you? Yeah. You know, he's an extraordinary man, your son. He only has one flaw. He's a liar. What? Stephen didn't make a pass at me. I was the one who did that. You what? Your son acted like a gentleman, as he is doing now by trying to cover for me. You should be very proud of him, Audrey. It was like a presence, you know, like a feeling I got, like I could see her out of the corner of my eye. But you can't actually see her? Oh, I have seen her, but not close up like. Ah, you said, but you've not seen her in here, not in the pub. I don't have to see Ivy, you know to know that she's there. I've worked with her for years on machines. I didn't have to look round. I, I, I knew she was there, I could feel her. <laughs> Eight times we had in Baldwin's factory, eh? Hey, you could write down the trouble she used to have with him for a start. Hey, now, now, come on, Vera, you can't go slagging off a pain customer, love. Look, I'm only telling him what an hard life she had. So, uh, you reckon she's here to haunt folks she owes one to? Well, she could. No, yeah. no, no, no. She, she means no harm to nobody, does Ivy? No, no. Well, Ivy, practically a saint. No, you could come and have a sit in our pub with our ghost and not even a shiver up your spine. No, no. A very hospitable ghost is our Ivy. Yeah, I get that, Jack. Just a shame nobody's actually seen her. That would have made a story. What? You can't have a ghost story on an occasional shiver. That could just be down to rising damp. Back up, Gavin. Hey, no, no, hang on. You mean, you mean there's now going to be in the paper? Well, not unless you've seen her, Jack. Right, right. Well, well. You see that? I didn't want to mention this, did I? What, Jack? Well, Vera, you know me. Feet on the ground. Didn't want to lose my reputation as as, as a man of reason. What, you mean, you've seen her? Yes. Where? In the cellar. Well, what was she doing down there? Well, I don't know. She might have been wanting to know how the pumps work. Anyway, anyway there, there she was. She was she leaning over this barrel, you know. It made me jump, I can tell you. Oh, I can imagine. I thought it might be able to. Uh, did she speak to you? Speak to me? Well, no, she didn't know. Oh, well, what did she do? Well... She kind of turned, huh? so I could see. It wasn't just any ghost, it was definitely Ivy. And then she smiled. Ivy smiled at you? Aye, aye. I think she was trying to tell me that she was happy here. Do you know, that's just how I felt. That's just how I felt. <laughs> you know what? Yeah? Aye. Uh. Please, please, it's all right, please, have you come to take him away? You've got him wrapped up really well. Snug as a bug in a rug. Please. I just wanted to hold it. That'd be selfish, wouldn't it? Well, that would be a character. If 
my daddy or man then I wish I could say that you had a man like anyone else but I can't I did try Has that come in yet? No, another half hour yet, Vera. Yeah, well, you better order a few more, because there's a good sale in there tonight. Don't tell me your husband's been up on roof again. <laughs> no, not like that. How goes, Ivy? You must have heard she's moved in. Uh, just a whisper. Uh, so, has Ivy written a story for the paper, then? How can Ivy write a story? She's dead. You never heard of a ghostwriter, Vera. <laughs> You're too sophisticated for around here, Mavis. You should be playing the clubs. Yeah, call it bingo. There's no funny about me and Ivy's ghost, you know. It's not till I hurt, as you'll see when you read it. They promised me a touching tribute to our friendship across the Great Divide. Well, if I were you, I'd ask her if she could do a bit of light dusting. Cos if you're going to go around telling all and sundry that your pub's haunted, you'll never get a cleaner. Are you after a cleaner, Vera? Uh, yeah, but I want somebody with experience. Well, I want thinking of a plane myself. Oh, well, I'm glad about that. Cos I'd hate to disappoint you. Mm. Well, I've got better things to do than sweep up after the likes of her. Uh, two pound, love, please. Two Ghost nice. writer. Just wait till I tell Derek. <laughs> hey, Jim. What? She's not knocking off time oh, yet, you know. Shut up. There's a couple of hours' work left. Easy cleaning up. Yeah, well, it's not an off time for me, all right? Look, if you'd have been here in mind as well as in body, we might have finished by now. Look, Wally, what are you saying? Hey? Are you saying I'm no good to man or beast or what? What? If you want it as blunt as that, yes, that's the amount of strength of it. Well, fine, didn't need D. You don't need me here. There's no point in me being here, all right? So what are you going to go to your mum? Check up on her Shut up. I tell you, you won't like what you find. Look, I've been there, Jim, I know. You can't keep checking up on her. Bless you, love. You're an angel. Uh, I'm a penniless angel, ma'am. You've cleaned me out. I'll pay you back. When? And don't say when your boat comes in. I'm looking. For what? For some bloke with a wad in his back pocket. It's hardly a reliable source of income, is it, ma'am? You do have a poor opinion of me. I'm looking for work. I'm not ashamed of a bit of hard work. I know. But the closing factory's down before you can get in there to clean them. Soon as estrays are fully gone bankrupt. I thought that cleaning job were going to work out. But as soon as they got fitted carpet in, they were boarded up. You like cleaning, don't you? It's always given me a sense of pleasure. Putting a polish on your part of the world, making it shine. <clears throat> Not something I've managed to teach you, though, is it? Oh, take the money and treat yourself to a drink. Uh, try the Rovers and let me know if you think that's somewhere that could benefit from you and your duster. We've got a job going. Yeah, but don't mention my name. Just check it out, you know. It's a bit of a madhouse. You might not like it. Not like a pub? Well, that'd be a first. Floating seven miles above ground, it'll have to protect them from the extreme heat by day and freezing night time. Liz! Deirdre, what are you doing here? Oh, hi, Jim. We weren't expecting you. Um, I'm just waiting in for the electricity man. Oh, really? I thought that was my wife's job for the day. Well, yeah, but she just had to pop out, so... Oh, she just had to pop out, really? Oh, huh. Yes. Ah. No accident, no emergency? No, no. No? What was it, then? Well, I, I don't know. She just She said... just said she had to pop out unexpectedly? Yes. And you decided that you'd cover for her very kindly? Yes. Well, thank you very much, dearie, but if you don't mind, I'll stand guard now. After all, it's what I'm trained for. Are you sure? Well, I certainly can't go and meet my wife because we don't know where she is, do we? She's only popped out to do a bit of shopping, Jim. She's only been gone five minutes. Well, then that's fine, isn't it? I'll just wait here for her to come back. Thank you and good night, Deirdre. Well, if you're sure. Never more so. Good night. It was nothing. I wouldn't quite say that. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alma, you want to look at the paper? You say my wife's bored, Jack? No, I just thought she might find something of interest in the local paper, that's all. Selling them now, are you? No, no, it's on the house. Right, well, if you make these complimentary, then ah, I might... Ah, well, no, I wasn't thinking about going that far, Mike. Never give up, do you, Mike? What, trying to save a few pennies? No, why should I? Evening. Oh, ah, oh, Alma, yeah. Mike. Stephen, get away, all right? Mike? Yeah, yeah, just about. Mind you, we had to drag Audrey from round his neck, otherwise he'd still be here. Women. I bet mean, he sighed with relief when those doors closed. Hey, <laughs> listen, he's very fond of his mum. Absence makes the heart grow fonder. He might risk another visit in ten years' time. I've right. done something about his glasses. Ah, oh, Kevin. Oh, Marcy, yeah. let you out, has she? Yeah, well, I've earned a few brownie points these last couple of weeks while she's been whining and dining with the jet set. No, don't spend them all at once. Take some earning brownie points, don't you? <laughs> so what's this, then? Oh, I think they've done her a bit proud. Mm. Give her a lot of dignity, you know. Talking about her life and how she's moved in here with her friends. Yeah, it's really moving. That bit about you being such old friends and comrades in arms over at sewing machines. What if they brings a lump to your throat, do not it? Yeah, they've, uh, they've done it really nice. But you don't really believe she's moved in here, do you? What do you mean, believe it? She's practically had a conversation with our Jack. Oh, come on, you're not serious. But I'm not telling Jack. Yeah, she's always grinning at him every time he changes the barrel. Not every time, Vera. <laughs> Don't it bother you then sleeping with, well, with her around? I mean, I know she was a good friend, but to be honest, it gives me the shivers, you know, watching you when you. Yeah. No. When we what? Well, you know. No, I don't. And I'll tell you this: Ivy were never one to poke her nose in other folks' business. Wasn't no. she? No, she wasn't. Steady on, Vera. Oh, sorry, love. Can I help you? Uh, just a gin and lemon. I'll just be having a look at that, love, while you're waiting. Take no notice. She can be a bit sensitive when it comes to Ivy, you know. Oh, so can we all, Jack? I'm digging up all this stuff about how she died and everything. Isn't going to help nobody. Well, that's friendly, isn't it? Giving you a paper to read. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a bit special, that edition, you see. Can't you tell? Front photo. Hey, hello. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, it's her, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. They're busy tonight, isn't it? Yeah, well, they've all come ghost-busting. You are? Sit down, read this, and I'll get you a drink. Oh, what have I done to deserve royal treatment? Just then? read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <coughs> wait a minute, mate. We've got to keep hey. the spirit of things, haven't we? I'll get these. I haven't paid you for today's work yet. Hey, oh. not too loud. The real boss is set over there. <laughs> He's not your real boss. I am. Oh, oh hey, right. they give themselves airs and graces, these modern women, don't they? I'm not saying anything. Uh, do you want another drink, Matt? Uh, no, I'm all right, thanks. I mean, I'd like one, but I'd better get back. Don't want to push me luck, eh, hey, Kev? No, he phoned. He always phones me if he's gone to be late. He's ever so thoughtful like that, girl. Always a way you might have something in the oven. So I just said I'd meet him if and when he... Yeah, yeah, same with me. Well, you have to get out now and again, don't you? Hmm. I don't think Jim appreciates that. So, they've got a ghost, have they? Yeah, so they say. Well, they won't make it up, would they? Oh, never. Not in a million years. <laughs> oh, it's nice, isn't it? I mean, it adds a bit of colour. Yeah, well, the place could well do with a bit of colour. <laughs> do you live round here? Gable Street. Oh, that's not a stone's throw, is it? Which end up end at Danbert Gasworks? Gasworks end. Oh, nice. Well, it's a matter of opinion. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's really. <laughs> Hiya. Gives a pint a bit of her, will you? On its way, love. So, uh, where's the man? Oh, I thought you might tell me that. What? Well, he left me carrying the can a couple of hours ago. Look, Liz, I don't want to interfere between a man and his wife. It's none of my business, right? But by the same token, I don't see why it should affect my business either. He left me right in the proverbial tonight. I want him back there tomorrow. Definitely, in the morning, make amends. Excuse me, Bill. Oh. What are we going to do, Don? Vera believes all this, you know, and it's our doing. That daft exorcist business. It's not going to go away, you know. She's going to turn this place into a shrine. She'll have Jack giving guided tours. And then, just like the papers, everybody will be asking why she died and why she feels she has to stay around haunting folk. This is not going to go away, Don. Unless we do something about it. Herds have been fragmented and disorientated by their attackers. They're lost and dispirited. 
almost as if they've accepted their fate. Jim, what are you doing here? I live here. I've been waiting for you in the Rovers. Have you now? I'm terribly sorry. You see, the thing is, Liz, somebody had to be here for the man from the electricity board, seeing as you were otherwise engaged. Do you know he never showed up? Men are so unreliable. Unlike women, of course. So, where have you been? I've told you in the Rovers. Ah! Well, now, that's not what Deirdre says. Deirdre says you've been shopping. I did, yeah. Ah, oh, I see. The truth's gonna come out now, is it, eh? What truth? Well, what did you buy when you went shopping? Oh, don't tell me. I'm sure it's a surprise, is it? Eh? Actually, it is, yeah. Well, I wouldn't want a pry. Jim, what are you going on about? Oh, come on, Liz. You think I can't tell when your best mate's covering up for you? She had guilty secret written all across her face. And by the way, do try and come up with something a bit more original than popping out to the shops. It shows a distinct lack of imagination. Oh. Jim, what the hell are you talking about? Mind you, you're probably saving up your imagination for lover boy, aren't you? Because you'll have plenty of time to explore that avenue when I'm out there working my fingers to the bone. Is that what you really imagine? I wonder who it is. Eh? Could it be Desi? Could it be wee Desi, eh? No. I don't think so. I don't think Desmond has time to play games with you all day. Well, who else is it, Liz? Who is it? Is it one of my friends down the rover, somebody I lean against the bar with down there, share a joke, only this time the joke's on me? Oh, there's no joke, Jim! Oh, is there not? Well, I think there is. But I'll tell you one thing. I am not laughing, and neither will he be when I find out who he is. And what's this? My secret shopping. Oh, I see. Eh? Going on a trip, are we? Taking him on a wee trip, are we? Or is it a one-way ticket? Is this the payoff, Liz? Well, it's a damn good idea, let me say that, eh? Far better than the dear John. Oh, yes. This way you get to see my reaction, don't you? Look at him, please, Jim. Look at him. Would I take another bloke to see your mum? I thought we needed a little holiday together. It was meant to be a surprise. Some surprise. I try, Jim. I try. I really try. What else can I do? Oh, God. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Liz. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Oh, God. Oh, look, I... I get these thoughts in my head. I can't get them out of my head. I'm sorry. It's because I love you, Liz. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, Liz. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Does that mean you want to come with me? Oh, Liz. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, up, buddy. Come on, I'll give you a hand with that. Oh, thanks, Bill. You're hey. a gentleman. Must be a bit, of a bit of a job running this place with Reggie, eh? Oh, you can say that again. I need a man about the place. <laughs> That's monkey, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Oh, Alright, Jim. How's it going? I bet you. Hey, let's me and your dad worked through the weekend, so we did. Oh, it's not like you. Not know about the old fella, like. No, I'll tell you the truth, I owed him. No, I'd let him down a few times recently. And Liz and I are going to Belfast this weekend, so we thought we'd better get the job clear, you know. Oh, good on you. I'll see you anyway. Have a nice weekend. Yeah, cheerio now. You know I'm staying in Wigan tonight, don't you? I do indeed, mate, yes. And uh, seeing as I've got the place to myself, I have plans for the occasion. I suppose there's a girl involved. Well, don't do anything I wouldn't. I'll see you. Yeah. Morning, Dad. Ah, oh, what about you, Andrew? Uh, listen, uh, you could do me a wee favour. All right. 
Well, you know that's Army Reunion in Macclesfield your mother and I are going to Wednesday night? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, uh, I couldn't lend your motor, I could have. Wednesday night? Aye. Uh, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Uh, just a minute. Army Reunions? They tend to be a bit liquid, as I recall. You don't want to be driving, mate, if you're going to be on the booze. Oh, absolutely. I couldn't agree more with you. But you see, I intend to drive there completely sober and then get blocked. <laughs> right? Well, your mother's drinking orange juice and then she can drive us back. Oh, yeah. And does she know about that? No, not yet, but I shall seize my moment. Probably when we're about halfway there. Oh, God. What you don't know about manipulating women, eh? Uh, well, no, it's an art form, son, let me tell you that. Right, looks like my up over there's finished limbering up, shall we say. Right, oh, I'll see you later. OK, mate. Yeah, I found it. You had it somewhere. Oh, what's that? A list of my old employees, complete with their home addresses from Baldwin's Casuals. Oh, what do you want that for? You got rid of that place years ago. Yeah, seven years in September. I mean, most of this lot will be past it, but I'll do the rounds, see if they want to work for me again. Is anybody that desperate? <laughs> if I didn't know that you were madly in love with me, I'd take offence at that remark. Oh, come on, just get me to work, eh? There, you see, women like to work. They will be delighted when they see me standing on their doorsteps. Oh, look, I go to work, Mike. It doesn't mean to say I like it. Same with my workforce. Clever fingers. That's what I want, and that's what your Canadian mate will be paying for. Now, come on. It's them, Rita, love, and I might as well pay it papers. Right. Well, uh, Don, that's just one week, and with them, that makes it 4.48, love. Hey, what about this ghost nonsense? Yeah, I'm glad you said nonsense, cos that's what it is. Well, I know that, but I don't think Vera Duckworth does. And I'll tell you somebody else who doesn't. Your little granddaughter, Sarah Louise. I've heard her prattling on about it. Yeah, I know, it worries me, frankly, but... Mm. Ah, well, what can you do? See ya. See ya. Bye, Bye Don. Oh, oh, sorry, honey. Good morning, Rita. Oh, I'm sorry to ask, but could you let me have some change? How are we fixed, maybe? Yeah, we're all right. Mm. Oh, well, if you could let me have some pound coins, some silver. Lord knows when I'm going to get to the bank. Hey, have you got a minute? Oh, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, sure. You see what Trisha's after. <laughs> have you been in Lois Soft all weekend? I drove back this morning. It feels like the middle of the night, more like. It's this card here. Oh, the cleaner wanted at the Rovers. Yeah, how long's it been up in your window? Oh. Not long, just a day or two. Oh, well, politeness costs nothing. Ooh. Hey, did you hear that? What? I thought I heard Ivy singing. No, it went room. Do you know? That was the impression I got too. Mind you, she didn't do much singing on this side, did she? Unless she'd had a few. But Ivy didn't have much to sing about anyway, did she, poor old Ivy? Ah, well, there you go. You see, if she's singing now, it's because she's happy. I mean, she likes it here. She's with her old pal, isn't she? Yeah. <laughs> hey, do you know, I'm sick of this muffin. Right, well, you go and have a break and make a cup of tea. All right. <laughs> 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 I have you singing, I don't know where she gets them from. Sorry, love, we're shut. Come back this cleaning job. Mm. Where's Vera? Uh, she's gone out. Be out all day, don't know what time she's coming back. Jack, I can't do it, you know. I used to do it for bed, didn't I? Oh, wouldn't you like having me about the place? Come on, I'm not having your fella coming in here thumping me. Oh, we finished, me and him. Anyway, it's miles away. I'd be ever so grateful, Jack. You're not frightened of Carl, are you? I am frightened of no one, lovey. But in the pub business, you can't have hooligans coming in, thumping folk, hurting them, breaking furniture and bones. Jack, you'd not regret it. Look, love, if, if, if it was up to me, but that, that's, that's how Vera's cleaning that side of the business, you see. Yeah, but you can fix it, though, can't you? Well, look, I'll put a word in for you. I can say no better. Well, if you ask me, we didn't have a cat and else chance with that uh, Canadian deal. Maybe, maybe not. Still, there is one thing we've learnt from this. <sighs> What's that then? It's a tough world out there. <sighs> yeah, well, I already knew that, didn't I? Still, 
Didn't stop you making it any tougher for yourself, did it? What's that supposed to mean? You know exactly what it means. Now then, Kitty Winks, I've come to put a little bit of work your way. I want a T-shirt. Oh. Oh, brilliant. Just uh, the one, Mr Duckworth? No, 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 no. A couple of dozen or so. Ooh, wow. Hey, Sunshine, don't you be sarky with me. Because if this works out, there could be some repeat orders, lad, and if you're not interested... No, no, we are definitely interested. Right. You get me a piece of paper and a pencil and I'll uh, show you exactly what I want. Okay. Is our Jack not back yet? Oh, no. Said he were going on an errand. Book is more like. Uh, excuse me. I'm looking for Mrs Duckworth. Oh, you found her? All oh, right. Well, hello. I've come about the advert in paper shop window for a cleaner. Uh, it, the job's not gone, has it? No. No, but there's a few after it, mind. Uh, interested, are you? Oh, yeah, very. That's why I'm here. Well, you better come through to the bar. Hello. A medium show for Mrs. Bishop. We'll have a bit, please. John Newton's letter, something. Please, yes. yes. <laughs> so we're them two over there. Oh, it's all this newspaper rubbish, you know, about us having a ghost. <laughs> the tourists, you see. Tourists? You mean foreigners? Well, no, not proper foreigners. Congleton, I think they said. And they've travelled all this way in the hope of seeing a ghost. Soft in the head, Mrs. Bishop. There's a lot of it about. Hey, mm. see what you've done now, don't you? You've got ghosts on some strips in here. Hey? Oh, smashing. Uh, excuse me, pal, did you want a photograph and the landlord? Oh. I'll put my arm around your wife. Oh, great. It's all cadology, this, you know, just to get a bob or two. That's the tour of this country today. Anything's for sale, including the truth. No problem. See, I was only saying to the wife this morning. Where is she, by the way? Skyving again, is she? No, she's interviewing somebody from a back cleaning post. Not, uh, not Tricia, is it? Oh, no. No, I don't know who she is. No, she a nice young woman, is she? Good looking? Well, young compared to you, Jack, but then again, most women are. You've got a very cruel tongue, you, when you want. <clears throat> you see, if I'm having a cleaner, I want someone that's going to do a proper job. <laughs> I could do it myself if I wanted a muck heap. Oh, no, no, you want it thorough. Oh, yes, nothing left in corners. All right, if you don't look too close. Oh, no, you want a proper job. Good bottoming. I understand. Are you local? Uh, quite local. Gable Street. Oh, Gable Street. Well, that's not too far, is it? But then again, it's not too close. <laughs> I'd hate that. I'd never have anybody from this street. <laughs> you see, being a cleaner, well, you see things. You might hear me and my husband talking business-like, and I'd hate it repeating, I would. Oh, no, no, it's a position of trust, a cleaner. Oh, it is. And they're nosy enough in this street. Oh, yes, without them knowing what I had for my tea, and who said what to who and when, and they're getting funny, you know. A young couple moved in our old house, and... How's your nerves? Fine. Good. <laughs> it's just that we've, um, we've got a spirit, you know, from the other side. A ghost, like. Oh, yeah, I read about it in the paper. It doesn't bother me. Well, it shouldn't. She was a friend of mine. A good soul. In fact, she was the best friend I've ever had. It's always the best that get taken. It is. It is. Oh, uh, this is my husband. He's all right once you get to know him. Pleased to meet you. Uh, come for the job, have you? Hey, when can you start? Uh, tomorrow, if you want. Uh, yes. uh, hang on a minute. Not settled yet. Unless Mrs... Um, Smedley. Mrs Smedley won't say. Oh, yeah, yeah, I do. Welcome aboard, lovey. <laughs> So you can let yourself in, I got a that straight in your face. Come in for a drink. I've got some news for you. I got that job at the pub. Oh, terrific. Isn't that great, Gary? Magical. Hey, so we'll be seeing more of you, will we? Turn. Yeah. Get kettle on. Good. You're gonna sit on that bike all night? You got something stuck or what? Well, if you're having a natter with your mum, I'm going for a burn-up. You're pretty sure she's got that job, aren't you? Yeah. 
if you earn some money, she might not catch your bus so much. Oh, buzz off. Right, I'm off to the shop. A few bits I want. Oh, come on, Vera, why don't you do that when we're short? I mean, I'm on my own, we might get a rush on. Oh, stop moaning. Raquel will be here in a minute. Right. Hey, look at this floor, Jack. I've mopped this for the last time. Mm. Getting a cleaner, who'd have thought it? Do you know it's made me feel somebody? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, are you, John? Oh. I'll come visiting your Ivy, have you? <laughs> <laughs> bit early doors done, lad. What's going to do for you? No, I've been for a drink later, so I just wanted a quiet word before you get busy about uh, Ivy's so called ghost. Oh, God bless her. She's done more for me dead than she ever did alive. Look, mate, uh, how can I put this? Uh... <laughs> Oh, Beckerick. Uh, that exorcism we told you about, it was a load of baloney. I know. Yeah, and the so called priest. Eh? Well, it's all baloney, isn't it? All this ghost stuff, but I like it. It's bringing trade in, kid. Oh. Well, I'm glad you feel like that. There you are. The trouble is that Vera believes it, doesn't she? Yeah. She thinks that Ivy's ghost has somehow, not that it ever existed, has somehow got from our house to here. <laughs> yeah. And, well, me and Josie, it bothers us. I mean, we're supposed to be friends. Doesn't bother me, and I'm her husband. Vera! Oh, hiya, Trisha. <sighs> hey, you like a stranger? I was just on my way to see you at the Rovers. So what do you think, then? What about? About me working for you. Cleaning for you at Rovers. Were you interested? I wish I'd have known. Well, I told Jack about it, didn't he tell you? Never said a word. And I've set somebody on now. I interviewed her this afternoon. She starts tomorrow. Oh, oh never mind, love. You'll get some at you'll see. Hey, Amen. You rat! Hey? You said you'd put a word in for me, didn't you? But you didn't, though, did you? Ah, well, you, you see, she's a very awkward woman, our Vera. I, I was, you, you've got a box clever with you, see, so I wasn't going to mention it till tonight. I'm going to write to Carl and tell him you've been pestering me. Oh, hey. You wait till he hey. gets out. Hey, now, now, come on, come on, bit of be fair. Oh! What have you been doing to her? Nothing, and I will swear to that. Did I... I'm going to get lumbered. There's no dealing with some women, you know. You women just do not understand what us men go through. No wonder we die first. There you go. Told you we'd have them by this evening. Right, yeah. let's have a look. Is what you wanted, Jack? Take a look at the back as well. Hey, that's knockout, that. I thought that would poke my own head, you know. Will you wear one of these, won't you, love? Well, I suppose I could do. Well, I'll be wearing one, so you'll be in good company. Do you know, before I've done, this haunted pub of mine is going to be world famous. Well, you know what Jack's like. All he cares about is bringing a bit of trade in. Yeah, I know, but is he going to tell Vera? Well, I don't know. I doubt it. He said he wasn't bothered what she believed. But I'm worried about her. She's convinced herself Ivy's ghost in that pub. If we don't put her straight, she's going to go round the twist. Oh, well, she ain't got as far to go as some folk. <laughs> she's always been halfway there, if you ask me. Well, I suppose if her and Jack want to crack on the place as haunted, it's up to them, fair enough. As long as she knows the truth. As long as she knows that we've told her. Otherwise, it would always be on my conscience. It would always be there to... to... Aren't you? Oh, you! <laughs> <laughs> so you reckon people want to buy them, then? Of course they will. We'll do a burst of love. I'm not going to wear this day in, day out, you know, I'm just now. No, 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 no not, not all the time, no. Tell you what, Vera, she looks well in it, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. They do say that they look even even better, T-shirts, when they're wet. And that you can put right out of your mind. Yes, you can. <coughs> Hi. 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 Oh, hello. You've uh, met Anne, haven't you, Mum? Uh, yes, mm. yes, we have met. What are you drinking? No, 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 it's, uh, it's all right, Mum, I'll get these. We've done a good deal today, haven't we, Jack? Yeah. Uh, same again, and... Uh, Pipe for Andy. Yeah. Anne? A glass of white wine, please. So, uh, are you two out for the evening, then? Well, that was the idea, wasn't it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Right. I'll tell you what, why don't you come round to our house for supper? Steve and Vicky are coming, and we'd like you to be there as well. Oh, well, won't it be a lot of trouble for you? No trouble at all. My husband's peeling the potatoes as we speak. <laughs> Good, uh, he's trying hard, isn't he? He is, and I'm making the most of it. It's nothing special, just Irish stew, British Army style. But you're more than welcome. I'd like to. Thanks very much. Right. 
no, 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 Vic, that, that, it was all a joke, that wet T-shirt Yeah, well, I know your jokes. What worries me is how's Ivy going to take it? Eh? Well, what's she going to think, eh? Uh, what will she say? Well, I'll tell you what. If she comes through and manifests herself and starts complaining about the T-shirts, I'll get rid. Does that sound fair enough to you, look? Fancy going for a drink? Oh, do you know what? I'm not in the mood. No, I've noticed. Thought it might cheer you up a bit. I doubt it. Oh, Gail. What a fool I made of myself over Stephen. Everybody makes a fool of themselves once in a while, you know. I know, but I should have more sense, shouldn't I? I mean, am I mature or am I mature, for want of a plainer word? No age limit, as far as I'm aware. Well, thank God it ended where it did. If it had gone any further, it'd have been even worse. At least Mike never tumbled to what was going on. I mean, you can thank God for that. Do you know, as a matter of fact, I was... I was wondering if I should tell him. You know, just get it out in the open, get it off my chest, talk about it, and then, well, start again. Thelma, do you want to keep your marriage going? Well, of course I do. Never start loving Mike, you know. Even though you might find that a bit hard to believe. No, <laughs> I believe it. How come those who get loved and never win prizes in Sunday school, eh? <laughs> you take my advice, though, Alma. If Mike doesn't know what went on, then you just leave it like that. You think? I'm sure. What he doesn't know won't hurt him. Or you. There you are, my son. Great, thanks. Have a much. Ah, uh, give us a pint, Jack and uh, Josie. Uh, I'll have half a lager. I'll just have a word with you. Hey, Don, Don. Have you seen the T-shirt? It's all three already. Good old Ivy. Yeah. Listen, have you told Vera about the phony exes? Have I, Eckers? Like, you don't tell Vera the truth. I'd better tell you then. Josie is putting us straight right now. Oh, what do you mean, a fake? It wasn't a real exorcism. Yeah. There is such a thing. Here we are. I saw the priest. No, no priest, Vera. Just an old pal of mine having a bit of fun. Not that it started this one, I mean, we just wanted to put your mind at rest. Did you know about this? No, no, no. But when you say no, I mean, do we know anything for sure? I mean, we all have our own beliefs, don't we? And, lovey, if you want to believe that Ivy is here with us in spirit... Well, you then... try, pound. Well, it's done us no harm. We got that bit in the paper. It's brought us a lot of business, hasn't it? Look, you are my friend, don't you understand that? All you're interested in is selling more ale and them silly t-shirts. They're not silly. Fear of love. It's... Don't you fear of love me. So she's not here, then? No, that's what we're telling you. So you've no need to worry about the place being haunted. I weren't worried. I liked having her here. And you told me you'd seen her. Glimpsed. Glimpsed, I think I said, and I must have been wrong. You Sorry. said you heard her singing this morning. Oh. Well, uh, you plonker. What in a T-shirt wet did you? Here, you've got one now. Mine. Uh. Hey, listen, is there no more beer in the fridge? Ah, not to worry. I know where there's a bottle of whiskey. Uh, not for us, Dad, thanks. You're all right. Well, don't worry. For it. Look, listen, I'm going to Belfast the weekend. We'll bring you back a bottle of Irish now. There's none finer. I don't think I've tasted that. Now, well, don't you worry your head. We can soon remedy that, can't we? We can. Right, come on, Steve. You and I are going to do the washing up. Are we? Yes, we are. Come on. Can I help? Uh, no, you can't, because you've got to go, haven't you? Uh, Anne's got an early start in the morning. Executive stress. Oh, your executive stress. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm delighted to meet you, honest to God. And I admire anyone who's got the courage to go out to the sun of mine, let me tell you. <laughs> thanks to take after him, you see. <laughs> well, thanks very much for everything. Oh, we enjoyed having you, are you? Hope we'll see you again. Hi. Yeah. I'll uh, see you home, mate. Come on. Sure you now. See ya. Bye. You're not going to be wearing that uniform from now on, I hope. What, this T-shirt, you mean? No. I told him I'll wear it now and again. Well, I hope you also told him that you are not, and I repeat not, drifting back into working regular evenings in here. I'm not. I'm just helping Vera out when she's stuck, that's all. I'd far sooner be at home with you. Would you? Yeah, of course I won't. Yes, well, you shouldn't have done it. It's not right. The thing is, Vera, we just got fed up of people treating my place like like the haunted house or something. Yeah, it was upsetting me. I mean, I just wanted to stop it. But you didn't, though, did you? You just shifted it in here. Yes, but that was good for us. I mean, the point is, this pub now is on the map. We are the haunted pub. We haven't got a ghost. It doesn't matter. The punters flocking here, they enjoy themselves, and we earn a few bob. What's wrong with that? 
I suppose so. Hey, but if that exorcism were all codology, that means you're still there, Ivy, in your house. Oh, oh dear. Let it drop, Vera. What was all that about me having an early start and so on? Well, I just thought you'd had quite enough of my family. I enjoyed it. And anyway, I uh, thought we could adjourn over the road. My landlord's away for the evening and, uh, well, I thought we could get comfy. Sounds to me as if you've been doing quite a lot of thinking. Well, it's not as if you have got to go home, is it? I don't have to, no, but that's where I'm going. Hang on. What's up? You're taking too much for granted. But I thought you liked me. I do, but you were right when you said I had to make an early start tomorrow. If and when I get to know you a lot better than I do now, I might think about not going home. Anne? The key words there, Andy, being if and when. Blaming little out. Do you know I'd birch the lot of them? I know. Isn't it? Oh, do you know, Reg told a lad off the other day for throwing a cigarette packet out of the car window and he gave him a oh, rattle. All right, Vera, right. Hey, now listen, don't forget the polish because we've run out and I've got that Mrs. What's her name coming soon. Right, well, why didn't she go then? Because I'm paying her to clean, not to the shopping, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you'll be laughing on the other side of your gobs soon. Leave it, Vera. Vera, how many times do you have to be told? Well, you might poke fun at me, but you can't mop the spirit world. Nobody was poking fun at you. Let's just drop it, shall we? The old daft thing's got well out of hand. Oh, daft is it? Let's see who's daft, eh? You, an up-along flaming taxi driver living over the brush, or me, a respectable married woman with her own pub. Am I a bit early? Oh, hello. <laughs> now, I like my staff to be prompt at all times. Come along. Oh, yeah. Turned her into a landlady, turned her into a split personality and all. Vera. Oh. One minute she's screeching at Don and Josie in her usual dulcet tone. She's out doing Annie Walker with poshness. It's that ghost business, you see. Jack and Vera had a right barney over it last night. Well, I find it all very creepy myself. Mm -hmm. There is no ghost. They're having her own. Well, it's not wise to meddle with the forces of darkness. There are more things in heaven and earth, the ratio. Hi. Hello. Uh, have you got any shiny, sheer black tights? Uh, that I dreamt of in your philosophy. Who's a ratio? It's a pal of Lizzie's. She's got a hot date with him for tonight. That's why she wants the tights. Sorry? <laughs> no, I am wearing them for Jim's army reunion. Oh, oh then it's a stockings and suspender job, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> why do men go so mad for suspenders? Though? You want to ask Reggie, he's the expert. Well, I don't like them myself. I think they're dead uncomfy in all them little bumps this year. You better have them lace top on, <laughs> Oh, I'm always frightened those will fall down. <laughs> I've worn them. I'm not Nora Batty. <laughs> Nora Batty stockings. that would give a bunch of old soldiers yeah. a thrill. <laughs> lady sport, is it? Laughing at old soldiers. Well, we weren't, Mr Sutton. Actually, we were discussing ladies' mm. underpinnings. Stockings and suspenders, Percy. Do you remember? I was intending to buy a quarter of mint humbugs, but I'll take my custom elsewhere. No fault with respect these days, there isn't. Not at all. Well, nobody's ever found fault. Well, not everybody's got the same high standards as what I've got, dear. Passes muster, then, does it? Well, for the first day. Anyway, if you'd like to make a start in the ladies' powder room. The what? Toilets. And think on, I'm very fussy about my lavatory seats. Right, you're shopping to the kitchen. Oh, right, I have you unloaded them, then? No, 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 done my beast of burden bit for the day. Oh, give us some, Jack. And then I'll make us a pot of tea. A pot of Earl Grey tea. And then we can have a little chat, you know, like you used to do with that Gilroy. Sorry, personal errand. I'm entitled to some private life. <laughs> Book is more like. Morning, yeah, well, I'm just glad to get back to making bacon butties after all the excitement. I'll miss him, though. Me too. 
But I am OK after my temporary bout of insanity. Listen, you're no different to any woman who lacks a bit of magic in her life. Oh, gay. I've been acting like a besotted schoolgirl. Mm. Well, I was worse with Ian. Hey, you know. Cousin O'Brien's came over from Australia. We must be kinky for colonials in this place. Well, when was that back? Mm. It was about ten years ago, before you were around. And it went a lot further than a harmless crush. Our marriage was going through a bad time. Then you kept all this secret? Yeah, well, I... I don't like remembering the awful time I went through afterwards. Especially when Sarah Lou was born. Was she his? No. But I thought for a time she might have been. Oh, okay, that must have been a nightmare. I mean, did Brian know? Yeah. It's all in the past. I'm only telling you now so that you'll know I understand. Gail Platt, you never cease to surprise me. <laughs> I surprised myself then, and all. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's back to reality for me. My life's with Mike, and I've just got to stop moaning and give it my best shot. Right, kid? Right. <laughs> Mrs. Smedley, have you got a minute? Queen could park a bum on them loose seats now. Although I draw the line at turning them little corners down on the edge of the loo rolls. <laughs> we usually have our elevenses about this time. Oh, I won't say no. <laughs> Chocolate digestives. My weakness. A moment in the mouth and a lifetime on the ipsy cock. <laughs> uh, milk or lemon? What are you doing here? Come to keep you company. Must be dead boring looking after a kid all day. You felt like a nosy, you mean? I thought he'd live somewhere posher than this. You can't come in. Well, what do you think we're going to do? Wreck the joint. We brought chips. Seems ages since I last got dolled up. Oh, well, I shall keep my eye out tonight for any likely unattached blokes. Deirdre, I'm sorry. It's OK. Actually, I wouldn't say no to the odd date occasionally. Let me know I'm still a woman. Oh, well, so oh, I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to this too tonight. See all the old lads going about grand, so it is. I wonder if Macclesfield knows what's going to hit it. <laughs> so, what does he like to work for, then? Do you have to call him Mr Barley? Or Sir? Or Kenneth? Right, nerd his name, Mark Kenneth. And Actually, he's very nice and I'm glad to have a job. It's one you've got. And he's a hairdresser. Why did she dump him, as he said? wanted to advertise the presence of departed souls. The only departed souls round here, if she says that cock, it'll be mine and yours. Oh, it's right then, what they say about this place being on. No, it's not, so shut it, you, if you want to keep your job. Vera, I've just come in to say how truly sorry I am about what happened. We were only trying to put your mind at rest, but obviously I went about it in completely the wrong way. <laughs> Fake flaming priests. Hey, don't go to her if you're poorly. I bet they're all flaming fake doctors and all. That's a bit strong, Vera. Oh, is it? They've no respect for no and nobody, them. Making a mockery of folks' religion. You're not religious, Vera. No, but Ivy was. God rest her soul. Well, I can only say again how terribly sorry I am. And, uh, uh Well, I can understand it if you can't forgive us. But Don and I sincerely hope that you will. Hey, come on, V. Lass can't be fairer than that now. <sighs> Spark out the minute I put him down. I've got to go. I wasn't pleased to come home and find people poking into my private life, especially ex-pupils. 
I'm really sorry, Mr Barlow. I never asked him. No, well, if I know Sandra Buckley, she doesn't need asking. It won't happen again, honest. Look, I don't mind you having the odd friend in, Kelly, but in future, I prefer not to have the house turned into an extension of Jackson's chippy. You mean you're not sacking me? I gave you this job because I trusted you. But, no. All right. And I still do. But I'd like to think that you use a little bit of discretion about who comes in here when I'm not here, OK? I mean, in future, check with me first. You're all right, you. Don't know if she could have done what she did, that Denise. Walking out on Daniel and all when he's such a pet. She must have been a right monster. Yeah, you know, well, she got her own ideas about how to live her life. But we're doing fine. With your help. Well, it shouldn't be me they should be asking forgiveness from. It should be her. God rest her soul. Only she's not, is she, at rest? I I'd be more than happy to offer my services in that direction. No, thank you. We've had enough amateur meddlers as it is without upsetting the spirit world anymore. Oh. I'm going for a lie down, Jack. Do you, see, do, you see, do you see what you've done now? Me? Oh, Roy, you don't learn, do you? Bet you've had loads of boyfriends. You mean I've been around a bit? Oh, no, no. Just, you're so pretty. Oh, boy. With a lovely figure in that type of girl men go for. Wrong sort of man. Not your husband? Oh, no, no, not Curly, but... Uh, I've met a few slime balls in my time. Thing is, how do you tell the right sort from the slime balls? Well, with some you get an inkling when they try to rip your frock off, and with others you don't find out till it's your heart they've torn into. You meet a lad, he seems nice, next thing he's trying to get you into bed before you've even had a chance to get to know him proper. Well, then you say no. Oh, I do, but they lose interest after that. Then they're not worth bothering with. If you don't respect yourself, you can't expect a fella to. Is that what you've always done? Oh, no. No. But it's why I know what I'm flaming talking about. Oh, thank you. Just on my way back from the wholesalers. I had this sudden craving for a custard tart. I'll be right oh. with you. And remember, no proper lights, just candles. What, to hide your wrinkles? <laughs> to put him in the mood. No, I'm not trying to seduce my own husband, you know. Why not? Why not, indeed? <laughs> Have they had a fallout? <sighs> He's not. She has. Well, I do. Well, you do. I'll be the envy of every man jack in a place. You, uh, you don't look so bad yourself, James. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Give over, you'll smudge my makeup. Anyway, we should be going. Right. Well, I shall have my wicked, wicked way with you when we return. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, go blimey, I thought it was Hilda Ogden. You said you wouldn't be back till half past eight. Cool chat, have I? All set for a nice little tete tape with your lover, eh? I, ju I just didn't want you to catch me in my rubber gloves, that's all. Oh, I'm kinky for rubber gloves. Yeah, it's not an anniversary or anything like that I've missed, is it? No. Nothing special. Oh, good. So you brought your hair in then, son? Anne was at a loose end, so we decided we'd invite her for a drink. Uh, Emily, I know she had friends round. Uh, yes, I saw them. Ex pupils, cheeky but not bad kids. The point is, <laughs> I trust Kelly. And if you do, so must I. And Mr. Sugden and anybody else who puts a couple of She's doing a good job and I don't want to undermine. Ah, what can I get you? Well, I'm rather tempted to sulk, but uh, a sweet sherry would be nice. Sweet right. sherry and a pipe, please, Jack. And a pipe, please. Oh, yeah, you're brave coming in here, aren't you? Uh, yeah, I think that's all sorted now, I hope. Uh, not quite. She thinks Abby's back with us, remember? You don't really think she is hovering? Well, there are more things in heaven and earth. Mavis, give Horace a rest, will you? So, what was it you wanted to see me about? Um, just a few matters that I really didn't want to discuss at work. You know, too many ears flapping about. Mm. It's just that young well, Dawn Chadwick, she's spending too much time with Jason, you know, in the loading oh, bay and... Oh, girlie, will you tell her the truth? I think you 
going Andy want your heads banging together? I mean, I know I said there were a lot of slime balls about, but he's not one of... Andy, come here for a minute. Uh, <clears throat> same again, is it? Me and Kearney want you and Andy make up. You're embarrassing them. I don't care if it gets them to the senses. Now, what do you say? No, but it was a long time ago, you know. It was, well, when I was with 4-2, you know what I mean? Here, all your horses, isn't it? Oi! Johnny Johnson, eh? Hey, you don't look a long time, hey. though, Sue. So, yeah, the last thing I heard about you, you've been deported to the colonies, eh? Oh, I did try it down under when I jacked in the army. I missed me jelly deals. Right here, let's let's come here. Look who's here, eh? Nice to see you, Johnny. Hello, uh, Liz. You're looking gorgeous as ever. Ah, oh, isn't you just? Listen, when's the last time we saw this fellow, eh? Uh, he came for a visit not long after we'd moved into the house. Well, I wanted to see it with me own eyes. Jimbo settled down on Civvy Street. Oh, you're now, I have to tell you, I wasn't settled, no, not me. Matter of fact, I was thinking I joined the army again, so it was, you know? Well, there's no regrets now, though, eh? You ask. Prosperous citizen, if ever I saw one. Oh, yeah. So, uh, what's you up to these days? He's a, a partner in a building firm. Yeah, well, I wouldn't exactly call it a building firm, you know, it's not my calpens, you know what I mean? But uh, it's me and a mucker like doing up property, stuff like that, you know? As long as you're making a bob or two, eh? And what about those lads of yours? What are they doing? Well, Andy's at university and Steve's got his own business. Oh, I'm sure he's married as well. Oh, I see Bonnie Wee Girl, so she has a load of dollars as well. That little imp Steve? Married? Get away. Not so little anymore. <laughs> so, uh, how about you? What have you been up to? Uh, this and that. Hey, sweetheart. Come here. Come here. Want you to meet a couple of old mates of mine? Liz and Jim McDonald. Hello. Oh, very pleased to meet you. Hi. This is Lucy. My little souvenir from us, huh? Well, I'll tell you what, you always had an eye for the girls, the Johnny, eh? Eh? Well, you've excelled yourself this time, so you have. Oh, that's why I made this one my wife. Well, Steve's not the only one tied the knot since we last met. You cook meals like that, the calf. Monsieur Michelin to give you a star. No danger. Mike, hmm? do you love me? What sort of a question is that? What? Silly one that women need to ask from time to time. Well, I'd have thought the answer was obvious. Yeah, but it still needs saying, though, doesn't it? Oh, I get it. What? What all this is about. You think I'm playing away from home? Look, can't we just have a cosy evening without there being an ulterior motive? Not guilty, Governor. I haven't got the energy these days. Look, we live together, eat together, sleep together, but... You know, sometimes I feel that we're not really a couple. We're busy people, darling. Well, well, maybe that's what's wrong. Maybe, maybe we need to work at being together more. Otherwise, we... We might wind up in trouble. Nonsense. Life's never been better. Even more so now we've got this Canadian deal sorted out. I'll tell you this. That Stephen, very smart operator. Yeah. Hard to think that. With a dumbo like Audrey as a mother. Look, you, can't <laughs> we forget about business for five minutes? Yeah, sure. Tell you what, tonight you look very, very sexy, Mrs. Baldwin. Still find me attractive then, do you? Well, I'll put it this way. I'd rather snog with you than Phyllis Pierce. <laughs> so you finally took the plunge then? Well, you wouldn't have me, so what was a bloke to do? That was never an option. It was for me. Oh, Oi, come here, you. How in the name of God do you end up with a wee girl like that, eh? <laughs> Johnny always was a charmer. No, eh? I'll tell you what, mate, she's a wee gem, so she is. I'm very young. But your wife's jealous, Jim. Don't be ridiculous. Well, here, I'll tell you what. She's got to look about you, so she has, eh? Really, I haven't noticed. My type, you see. Always was a sucker for redheads. You including my wife in that? All the lads envy you, mate. Oh, aye. Pin up girl of the barracks, I, Liz. Lucy's sweet, I, uh, 
I hope you'll be happy together. Come on, Jim, I'm tired. No, I need no. to go home. No, no, just wait a minute here. No, come on, please. What's he up to now? Oh, take the notice, he's a nutter. I think there might be a resonance. I, 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 I can feel something. Look, there never was a ghost, and there isn't a ghost. No, it was just a cruel oak. Bits old. Ivy's still at number five. Well, who said anything about Ivy? Hers may not be the only unquiet spirit roaming these parts. Well, it was nice of Jack to let you off early. Well, the poor bloke didn't have a lot of choice, did he, after you started batting your eyelashes at him? Well, I just mentioned that as the pub was quiet, we were thinking of going for a curry. Yeah, I can already smell that beef madras. <laughs> Unless you two prefer to be on your own. Curly, mate, will you do me a favour and tell your missus to stop matchmaking? Well, you tell her. I mean, it's your love life she's meddling in. Well, I just like people to be happy. Right, well, it's up to you, Anne. I mean, we can do whatever you want. I think we do need to have a quiet chat. Right, well, um, we'll got me mum and dad then. Thanks, Curly, and thanks for the drinks, okay? Yeah. You know, thanks. see you. Be good. I'll see you in the morning. Right, see you in the morning. And I did say chat, remember? How could I forget? See? Mm -hmm. So, why did JJ say that you were just his type? Johnny always talks nonsense when it's smashed. Yeah, well, it's not so much nonsense now, is it, eh? I mean, she does look like you. You do look like her, you know what I'm saying? Thousands of women look like me, Jim. I'm not unique. Well, why in the name of God would he say that you're, you, you, you would be jealous? I mean, why would you be jealous of his bit of stuff? Men always think that women are jealous of somebody a bit younger. No, 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 sorry. There's more to it than that. Jim. I'm worn Let's... Please, let's just get home and have a cup of tea. Something happened between you two, didn't it? Oh, you're flaming paranoid. No, I'm not paranoid! I'm not, it's obvious. It's even obvious to me, you thick mech. He, uh, He did make a pass at me once, after a few drinks, but it was nothing. You're an awful bad liar, Liz, after all these years of practice. Oh, for God's sake, Jim! Is this how it's going to be for the rest of our lives? Yes, it is! As long as I feel I can't trust you. All right! All right. We did have a brief fling. It didn't mean anything. You were always away. Or always out drinking with your mates. I was always on my own with two small babies. He was my best friend, Liz! I'm sorry. It was a long time ago. <laughs> Well, what about the Barnes brothers, for God's sake? I mean, you didn't have two wee babies then. And all the other times. There weren't any other times. Oh, I. <laughs> oh, the pin up and the barracks, my God. Out the barracks. No! Get out of that car. I think I'm just a long string of men. No! I'm looking like a bloody fool.